Hey guys, this is Ruben Langdon, a.k.a. Dante from Devil May Cry, a.k.a. Ken Masters from Street Fighter, and also Chris Redfield from the Resident Evil series. And you are listening to the Casanova Podcast, the number one podcast in Hawaii. Jackpot. and welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova, and I'm coming at you with another phenomenal interview with another fellow content creator from Hawaii that is doing monumental things in the gaming and tech industry. She's the co-host of one of the premier podcasts in the world that you need to go right now and subscribe to on all podcasting outlets. And her name is Miss DJM, a.k.a. Danny, of the show Radio Podcast. Make sure you go and subscribe to their podcast because it's some of the greatest content that I have ever heard. And this episode today is full of so much information that if you're a content creator looking at how to you know get in the industry or how to work with the industry things you can do how to improve you know this episode has something for you for just about everyone and it's a long one people this is a five-hour podcast episode but i'm telling you right now you'll be glued to your seat listening to every word that's coming out of our mouths because this episode is just that damn good so if you're ready to do it, I'm ready to do it. Let's go ahead and welcome Miss DJM onto the show. So three, no, wait, this one. Yeah, it's four. <laughs> it's four. <laughs> four. <laughs> I can't count right now. Three, two, one. Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova, and I have with me the phenomenal, the amazing, the person I have been spending the last, has it been an hour, half an hour? I don't know. We've been just chopping it up for the longest. Anyway, she is Danny of the show Radio Podcast. Danny, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Danny. Um, I'm one of two of the co-hosts um, for the show Radio. We are a gaming and tech podcast that um, started 2009, but I've been on the show since about 2016, so about three years, almost three, three years. I can't count. See, now you're counting. <laughs> <up my comments. laughs> I've been on there for some odd time over there. <laughs> also based out in Hawaii, just a different island. And you know that's 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 me. I also am a an consistently inconsistent affiliate streamer on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be consistent in something. So you can find me on Twitch and Twitter, Miss DJM. And yeah, that's me. Oh, actually, there's a lot more to me. But yeah, we'll just go over those things. I'm just like <laughs> winging it here. Like I feel like <laughs> I feel oh. like you're like my best friend now. <laughs> I mean, people, we have basically been covering the gamut of topics. We just were like, man, we should have recorded that. No, we should have recorded that. No, we should have recorded that. Like, we're just, we've just been talking for, I feel like it's been an hour, but it's only been, what, 35 minutes? <laughs> yeah, That's something just... like that. <laughs> and we covered, like, we covered, like, kids, your relationships. <laughs> Living in Hawaii, how hot and muggy it is, or desperation. Buying, you know, buying ice and throwing it in a tub to cool off because it was hot, people. People, I, I don't think you guys understand. When it gets hot out here, it is hot. It is. It is. And it's like, it's not even, I'm trying to, to be, debate what is worse because I've been to Yuma, Arizona during the oh, summer, oh, and God. that is like a dry heat. Yeah. Like opening up my hotel door was like opening up the oven, but it was weird because I wasn't really sweating, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Okay, this is this is pretty bad." Here, it's like you're sweating in a cold ice tub. <laughs> 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 That's what it is. It's like terrible. 
it, it's so bad you could take a polar bear like okay and, and people this is not tmi i'm just gonna tell you straight i took a polar bear shower and i was sweating that's how <laughs> hot it was i'm over here like is that water or sweat no it's sweat oh damn <laughs> And it's like it's not even being dramatic. It's just hot and humid and sticky. It's miserable. Like I, I see um the west side. I think the west side on all the islands are just hot, no matter what. It's just hot. God. And mm. then like I, there's uh there's this couple that walks there. They're huskies, mm. and like their huskies have really thick coats. And I'm like, put that dog back in the house. <laughs> put him in the tub. I feel bad for that poor guy because it is. Hot out here, and you're bringing him for a walk. No, no, like, give me your here. dog. <laughs> <laughs> I will take care of him because he doesn't deserve <laughs> this. That's crazy. I actually had to go to the west, I had to go out to Kapole, uh, beginning of the week because, um, we, we were opening a new clinic or medical center, and like I got out, it, like it was hot where I'm at because you know, I'm close to Waikiki. And when I got the couple laid, I'm like, I had the AC on, and I'm like, <laughs> 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 what's that, that 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 movie with the rock where he's like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm dying. It's so fucking hot. <laughs> it's oh no God. joke. It's no joke. Like I feel bad. I hate. I like. I don't mind working outside at work, but when I gotta be out there. And I'm just standing there in the shade, sweating, and I'm like, I didn't even do anything yet, and now I gotta do something. This is this is bad. It this is, is bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yes, people. Um, Hawaii's paradise, but it's 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 hot when it's hot, and when it's cold, like it's weird because I feel like the weather here is so bipolar. It's like when it's hot, it's fucking hot. But then when it gets cold, you're like, like okay, so 60s for us is cold, people. Cold. I know you guys might be thinking, what? That's, that's shorts weather. No, it's cold for us. We're wearing sweatshirts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the thing about people in Hawaii, though. It's like, I, I don't, I don't, okay. It's cold. You're all bundled up. You're layered. You still wear slippers. Right, right. I don't I'm, wear I don't wear I don't wear slippers, <laughs> but like I I cover up my feet, but it's just amazing because it's like somehow your feet's not cold. The rest of you is, but you're okay wearing slippers. It's it's amazing. It's so backwards. It is so backwards. And people, I'm guilty of it myself. Um, when it was, I think it was like 60, 65, 64 degrees, and I'm like wearing a sweater. I'm wearing sweatpants. I got like my hoodie on and I'm wearing slippers. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been to New York? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um you ever been there during the the winter? I went there once. I packed uh surf shorts and tanks and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to wear this during the day and I'm just going to wear jeans and a a V-neck during the day. No. <laughs> so like like my son one of his birthday wishes was like he wanted to see snow mm -hmm. my best friend was um living and going to school in new york so i'm like okay sure we're gonna go over there and his birthday's in december we went there like i think after christmas or something that around new year's mm -hmm. and i knew it was going to be cold so mm -hmm. i packed all the stuff to layer and keep him warm do all these things him being an island boy and being like six I think he was seven years old. Mm -hmm. And the concept of layers, like having to put a jacket on him over his shirt. He didn't have any long drawings on yet. It was bothering him. Like just to have like all of these layers. Like he's just used to a shirt, surf shorts, slippers. That's it. Nothing else. So it's here. And we went to New York City. I think it was like 23 degrees. Mm -hmm. And he was miserable because he had like four layers of clothes on to keep him warm. At any time we went into any building, any building, it's like he stripped down and he was like, oh, this feels better. Like he was like, oh, playing. So we go through the store. I'm like, okay. And then it's like, all right, you got to put your clothes back on. He's like, no, I don't want to do this. Oh. So he was like putting on this pipe and like he runs outside 
And it's like, okay, you have to put this on. It's going to be cold. I'm fine. I don't want to wear it. People thought I was trying to kidnap my son. What? Because he was putting up this fight to put clothes on. It was like me, my best friend, and her husband. And these people were like, what are you doing to that boy? His lips are turning blue. He is shivering. I'm trying to put clothes on my son. That's all I'm trying to do is put clothes on him. And the, here, here's, the, here's the thing. So I am Tam, Filipino Chinese. My best friend's Japanese, Portuguese, and her husband's Caucasian. My son is Papa. It's half, mm -hmm. half Asian, half Caucasian, but he pulls a Caucasian side. He does not look like any one of us. So <laughs> they were just so convinced we were kidnapping this kid off the side of the road. I'm like, I'm, I just want to dress my kid. That's all. <laughs> that is all. It was like such a bizarre thing. It was, it was a very interesting two weeks because anytime he saw snow, he just wanted to take off his clothes and just dive into it. I'm like, you know what? Go. Just, just, just go. Do it. <laughs> go right ahead. You're going you're gonna to hate yourself after. I don't know what to tell you anymore. And anytime he did it, anytime he did it, he would just like cry because it was like cold burning pain. <laughs> and like even, even ice skating, he was like he had a conniption because even people thought we were trying to torture him ice skating. Mm. But the concept like it, this is what this is what I love about kids and drives me insane about kids is how memories get stored into their head. Because mm -hmm. every single time after every one of those moments, immediately after, once we get into the car, that was a lot of fun. What? <laughs> Were you there? Like, Did we have the same experience? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how many times I, I almost had the cop call on me because of you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, and it, 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 and they re, it's like, I'm, gl I'm glad that in your head, it was a great experience. You had so much fun. Did you see me make that snowball? Did you see me skate? No, because you cried the whole time. But okay, if that's what you think happened and that's what you believe, we're going to stick with those memories. Because to me, it was a disaster. <laughs> like, I have the pictures. But that's what you remember? All right. All right. As long as you know <laughs> that you had a great vacation. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you know what? And that's the funny thing, too. Like, I, it, it, I, I'm guilty of it because I remember doing a lot of dumb shit as a kid when I was living in Samoa. I'm, I'm originally from Samoa. And I used to do a lot of stupid shit. And my mother would be like, like, are you, how did you not die? Like, before that became a meme. <laughs> and I'm like, like, what? I have fun. She's like, at what point? The beginning, when you were fucking up, or after? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing, though. It's like, in the process, it's, it's, it's really, like, it really screws with your parents, because they're, they have that cautionary, like, mindset, because, they know something could go wrong, but you're just like in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like even me, like there's pictures of, of me doing some really stupid stuff with my friends. And I'm like, how did I not die? Like, <laughs> what were we thinking? Why? Like looking back at all of them and like, we are going to hide all of this from my son. He will right. never know and he can never use it against me. <laughs> so many things, so many things that I'm like. What was I thinking? Like I, I like it. Dry, it, like it makes me nervous to think. Like we have a beach on the south side here, shipwrecks. Mm -hmm. So you can go diving off of the cliff, and it's really great. The problem is, is that you there's there's reef, there's rocks on the bottom. So you have to jump at the perfect time that the waves are coming up, so mm -hmm. that there's enough there so you don't hit the rocks. Mm -hmm. You think nothing of it. I look at that now and my son's like, can I jump in there? No. No. Because I don't even know how I timed it right. <laughs> Especially like times where my, my, I would go there with my stepbrother and sometimes you just uh, throw me off and it was like, okay. What? Like there was no timing. There's just like, he'll just throw me off. And it was like all fun and games. And I'm like, how? What happened? 
You're not doing it. You can jump off of this one. I know there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, that's where, like, if I have kids, I'm, and if they ever try to pull anything, they're going to be like, but, Dad, you you had this on your social media. No, I didn't. You saw nothing. I mean, it's going to be one of my B moments. Like, no, you didn't see anything. <laughs> Well, like I, I had this one experience because, so, okay, so I don't drink anymore. I'm straight edge. But on my 23rd birthday, I do not remember that whole week. That's and my 21st. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like on my 23rd birthday, I, I came back to Hawaii. I was because I had left Hawaii when I was 22. I went up to. Um, to uh, Washington because I was working for Microsoft at the Microsoft Game Studios and I came back for my birthday and everyone was so super hyped they're like man you're back let's go out and party and we went to Zanzibar and um they decided we're gonna get you fucked up and I'm like okay but I don't really drink like that anymore so you remember the song Shots yeah. <laughs> okay. So they had the bartender lined up. The I forget how many times Lil John says shots from start to finish. So the entire bar, I had shots of 151, shots of Patron, shots of Cavassier, <laughs> shots of Jose. And I'm also Dominican, so me and Jose don't get along. So, <laughs> so we're two Hispanics who don't like each other. Anyway, so I had that. And um yeah. So I I remember getting to my 10th shot, and I do not remember anything after that. All I know is I woke up a week later on the North Shore naked with my phone in my hand and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Like, if people come up to me today, they're like, man, you remember your 23rd birthday? That was hype, yo. And I'm like, what happened? Oh, it's on YouTube. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's, your 20s is interesting. Like, now that we're promoting unsafe drinking. But you can tell, like, you can tell people the blue in their face, like, it's not safe. It's a, And it's true. It's not safe. But when you're in your 20s, it's kind of like, you know, like we were talking earlier about teenagers pushing the limits with their parents. Mm -hmm. Except in, in your 20s, it's trying to find your limits as an adult. You're finding your limits about, like, your friends and your environment. And you're just going to try stuff. If it turns yeah. out great awesome if it turns out bad but still awesome like yeah we're never doing that again like you're never gonna repeat your 23rd birthday ever again but you wouldn't have known that until you tried yeah, it's our connection <laughs> <laughs> and like that's like I, okay i don't remember the 21st birthday but that was just one day <laughs> just one day and the uh, thing is like even then i was still safe like i had a designated driver that mm -hmm was like they dedicated my entire birthday is they were going to be the sober one and they were also going to be the deciding factor of some of the things that you know party dj wanted to do <laughs> whatever that alter ego was and i then i had a friend of like you know what i'm going to match you one for one deal and <laughs> Apparently, I was I, I ended up being better because my friend he uh, he lost his phone, he lost his camera, he lost some clothes. Yeah, oh <laughs> and the thing is, is like there's pictures that's documenting this with like obviously my sober friend and the friends that we had over there, and then perfect strangers that I happened to meet. <laughs> you know, and it's it, it's definitely interesting. I would never do that again, I, and, and I didn't because I I did blackout. I I don't. I don't remember. I remember it being very early on because I think we started around seven in the evening. So and I remember, I remember coming home about eight o'clock in the morning to my stepmom. And she also went partying out the, the night before. And then my stepsister, who also went partying. So we all had this hangover. And I just remember going to Jamba Juice is like, we're going to take shots of wheatgrass and purge our systems. <laughs> <laughs> 
was a bonding experience. Um, <laughs> but like, it's never, it's never going to happen again. And, uh, but it was fun. It was this. Nothing, nothing bad happened. It's and most people can't be lucky about that, but I was still smart about it. I still had precautions to make sure that I was going to be safe. Yeah. And it's like you're pushing <clears throat> your limits, but then you have somebody who is probably going to be a better sound in mind. <laughs> to help like... you out with that. <laughs> the, like the only other time, and now, now I just drink at home. Now I just drink at home. We're not going anywhere. I'm not driving anywhere. And let me tell you, if anybody tells you, let's make a drinking game out of Mad Max, say no. Oh God, why? So like, do I, I want to know? <laughs> Okay, so Mad Max, I like this one, the one with Charlize Theron. Yeah. So, like, they have things like, um, anytime you see a waterfall, um, you're going to continue drinking until you don't see the waterfall on the screen anymore. And you don't think, like, they don't do that so long. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, oh, that was a terrible idea because we weren't drinking beer. It was just vodka and rum. That was, oh, God. That was bad. And I, I forget what the other rules are. It's like, oh, take a shot anytime. They say water, or anytime you see one of the, I, I forgot the main in's name. All I know is, is that I blacked out, and it wasn't even halfway through the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this is never happening again. This is terrible. Who's, whose idea was this? <laughs> never again. And again, this is where you come back, is you gotta find your limits. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 is it safe to say that while our 20s were a great time of experimentation, as we have gotten older and wiser, we would never condone anyone doing what we did? In our no, 20s. it's terrible. <laughs> and, and again, I'm going to refer this back to like having teenagers. Like, you can tell people, and we're going to have that disclaimer. It's like, don't, don't do these things. We can tell you it's terrible. It's terrible from experience. How many times as a teenager did you listen to your parents when they told you something was bad? Yet alone from another adult or a stranger that you don't know. Yeah. And they're always going to be like, that's not going to be me. That won't happen to me. I'm smarter than that. And then next thing you know, you know, you should have listened. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know until you try. And that's like, that's the fun thing about, about life in general. Like 20s, 20s is that first time where you're like, you're out of your parents' reach. You can yeah. make your decisions. You can see what it is that you're capable of. And there are some really smart 20-year-olds, like 20-somethings, that make really great decisions, and they're off to a great start, and they have a good head on their shoulders. That I was wasn't one of those. See? <laughs> 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 and we it took us a while so now we make up for that in our 30s right <laughs> so you could be so much further in life if you just didn't do those things in your 20s right, um, right. but there's, there's there's a lot of things that you can do that's for fun that doesn't re require those things and i love i love traveling and i love um you know meeting new people i just wish i did more of that in my 20s i feel like i'm making up for that now in my 30s I, you know what? And I feel the same way. I feel like I'm doing a lot of that now. And I'll tell you this. I wish I had the stamina and energy that I had when I was in my twenties, because going to E3, I was worn out after the first day. I'm like, yo, my feet hurt. My ankles feel so <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm like, I feel like I went to the gym and all I did was walk. Like, <laughs> but people but don't it realize feels good. It, it does, it does, but it's like walking from West Hall to South Hall is it's a trek. It, it is, trek. it really is. So <laughs> this is this was my third E3, and I was ready. The last two E3, I was ready for it. My first E3, yeah, I felt like that. I felt like that, even with my co-host, because I think he's been to like eight or nine of them now. Oh he tried goodness. to tell me. He tried to tell me, and again, those listening skills. Um, <laughs> He, he did. He really did try to tell me and warn me. I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. I, I do a lot of physical labor at work. I'm always on my feet. I'll be fine. Oh, that first day, I'm like, kill me. Just leave me, just leave me here. 
<laughs> Leave me here. <laughs> Go on without me. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, you'll make it just leave me here <laughs> remember, me, remember me like John Lennon <laughs> <laughs> so I know so dramatic right, right. <laughs> but that's how it felt because I was exhausted I was hungry I was exhausted <laughs> and like you said, my feet felt like water, but they're swollen. I'm like, no, I can't do this. <laughs> I mean, I, I I pushed through it too. And and the thing is, during that first E3, I was also trying to like when I wasn't there, and every time I came back, um, I was helping my boyfriend pack so he can move down here with me. So I was like a lot of stuff like nonstop. Mm -hmm. And I learned Dr. Schultz is your best friend. Um, I pack snack bars because here, here's the thing. It's like, first of all, convention food, any convention is expensive. Yeah, it is expensive. It's ridiculous. Um, so we packed um, Laura bars mm -hmm. and or protein bars, whatever it is. And they're small and compact enough to throw inside your bag and doesn't weigh you down. So mm -hmm. I, I had that and I snacked through that. So I had to eat a, a pretty decent, um, a light breakfast in the morning mm -hmm. and then i just had the lower bars and then the appointments that i had i made sure i was like do you guys got snacks <laughs> <laughs> and most of them do they, they all do they have water they had they had snacks they had stuff to get you through the you know continue on and it's free and i'm like oh perfect mm. <laughs> i appreciate you for thinking of us because <laughs> um if like if you schedule it and you have like all of these things going on um, you just gotta get grab a quick bite. So most days I was only really eating one meal a day, which was my dinner. I that mistake too. <laughs> so like that's that's why the like having the snacks is is super great. And I prepared for like the four or five months before E three to change my eating habits. Okay. <laughs> So, I, like, I wanted to lose weight, and I still want to lose weight. But, like, I, I do intermittent fasting, so I'm only really actually eating one meal a day. High so five. I only eat. What is that? High five. Oh, high five. I thought you were... <laughs> no, no, you eat. <laughs> like... Bad DJ. <laughs> I thought you were gonna shame me for intermittent fasting. <laughs> no, I, I do it myself, and a lot of people are like, "Why are you starving yourself?" I'm not. I'm fasting. Why are you yeah. starving yourself? Oh, <laughs> and that's what I that's what I did. And it, and it, you know what? Like at first, it's hard. Yeah. But you train your body to get used to it, and then like if you really, really, really need something, there's really good snacks that will hold you over and gives you that feeling, and that's not high in calories. But that's what I did leading up to it because I know during this entire week, the only meal I'm going to eat is dinner. Yeah. And, um, and, it, and it was really big dinner. So I was so happy. <laughs> <just eating. laughs> but it, it, it is so much. I wish I had a pedometer or something to keep track of how much there was walking. It's, it's insane. It and is. I just remember, it's like, really? Do you have to be on that side? Why did I book it on this day? I'm running back and forth. Oh my goodness! Um, but this was this was your first E3, so I, I watched your video. But I, I want to hear from you. Like, like, what did you think? How did you feel about it? What do you feel like you could have done better or do, will do better for next year? Okay. <clears throat> well, yeah, it was my first E3. Um, I. It was actually a very interesting experience because the first day, I actually did not get to go until like five o'clock at night um yeah uh so i had got sent to e3 by uh pdp gaming or vit you know they do like the vitrix uh headsets which you know i have these here mm -hmm. and um you know they gave me a um exhibitor pass and so I had that, and then Lehua had her regular gamer pass, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. 
I didn't realize until after I got my pass because we flew in that morning. That was the crappy part. So that was <laughs> error number one. <laughs> that, was, that was the first problem. So we, we flew in, we got there at um seven in the morning. We we touched down at seven ten in the morning. Then we got to our hotel, then we couldn't check into our hotel until three. But then they were like, oh, yeah, you can come back at one. You can check in. But if you want, you can leave your bags here. So we left our bags there. We were by the LAX. And then we took a a lift to, because I was supposed to be there to get my badge at like, I want to say like 8.30, 9.30. Oh, no, 9.30. And we took a lift. And that lift took a fucking hour from, (laughs) from, from the La Quinta at LAX all the way to the convention center, which should not take that long. The LA traffic is a bitch. So, mm-hmm. so by the time we got there, then we're like, you know, the the guy from Bitrix was telling me like, hey, you know, you need to be at South Hall. I'm like, what? what which one is South Hall? Oh, it's the one by the um, the Staples Center. I'm like, where's that? He's like, it's right there. And I'm like, everything's big. I don't know what where it is. So I go and meet him, and then I meet him at South Hall, and then we had to go back to West Hall. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I'm wearing, I did not have Dr. Scholl's. I did not have sneakers. I brought loafers. <laughs> yeah. Mistake number two. <laughs> so, so, so we end up going. So I meet him. We're walking back, and then. Uh, we run to Lehua, and then Lehua's like, where do I get my badge? I'm like, I don't know. Like, where do you... <laughs> like, we don't... Cause, and then we didn't know anyone there, and then I ended up running to other YouTubers I know, like Gamer Thumb, TV, Your Player 2, and Tesla Chad and others. And then, you know, we she links up with them and goes and gets her badge. I go into the exhibit, or, you know, the press exhibitor pat- pathway. I get my badge and everything. And then they're like, okay, cool. Uh, we'll see you later on today. And I'm like, where do I go? They're like, oh, you can do whatever you want. I'm like, I don't know where anything is. So like basically, and not to throw shade at PDP, but they kind of left me. <laughs> I didn't try. I had no idea where to go. So I go back out and I meet up with Lehua and I meet up with the other YouTubers. And we walk. They're like, oh, yeah, there's this breakfast place uh, about a block, a couple blocks up. And yeah, a couple blocks is like nine blocks. So I'm walking. <laughs> Past Staples Center in my loafers, my feet are hurting, and we get to the breakfast place. There's a super long crowd. We get in, we eat, and then they're like, "Oh, we're gonna wait till twelve to get in," because I think yeah, standard people could get in at is it twelve or something. But if you had exhibitor or press, you could get in earlier. Mm-hmm. And so, I think it was like eleven thirty, and we're like, "Oh, well, we'll go and take." the uber and get back to our hotel and we'll check in because they they call and say yeah you can check in at one so we figure okay if it took an hour to get here it's gonna take an hour to get back so they take an uber and um yeah it took an hour to get back to la quinta and then by the time we get there it's like 12 58 we're like okay we'll stay in line and check in then they're like yeah you can't check in until three <laughs> i'm over here like bruh this is a certified bro moment. So I'm I'm super pissed off, but I'm like, I'm not about to go back to E3 and back here. I'll wait. So we wait till three. And then uh, we go to get in line. There's like 30 people to check in. So we don't check in until like four. I think 345 or four. And so by the time we check in, we get changed. And then we catch an Uber back to E3, and we get there at 5, and then as Lehua and I are going in, then she gets stopped <laughs> going in, and they're like, because uh, she, you know, she had her gamer pass thing, but her name badge and her scannable wasn't in there. So they're like, oh, you don't have your badge, you can't come in. I turn around, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, where, where's your badge? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, is it in your purse? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, is it the hotel? She's like, yeah, I, cha- I possibly I changed my shirt. And I'm like, fucking blue hell. 
you did not leave it there. She's like, I think I did. I'm like, yo, fuck this. I want to go back to Hawaii. I'm over to town. <laughs> oh my God. So she takes the Uber back to the hotel. She finds her badge. And I'm there by myself. And I'm just like, I'm so, I'm pissed. Like the entire day pissed me off. Like the badge thing, the hotel, the loafers. <laughs> like I, I'm just like super salty. And then uh, one of my friends, he's a YouTuber, a political YouTuber, um, Amazing Lucas. He walks up and he's like, yo, Mikhail, and that's because we've been friends for like a year, but we never met in person. So that's the first time we met. And then as I'm talking to him, then my other friend, uh, Ruben Langdon, he's the voice of Ken from Street Fighter and Dante from Double May Cry. He walks up and I'm like, oh, cool. Hey, Ruben. And I introduce them because, you know, uh, they're fans of each other. And then... Uh, another YouTuber, um, Sphere Hunter, she comes up and I'm like, holy shit, this is Sphere Hunter. Holy fuck, you're taller than I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're taller than me. God damn, I'm 6'1". How tall are you? Seven feet? Anyway, so <laughs> um, so then like they, they're like, oh, we're going to go to this vegan place. We're going to go eat. Do you guys want to go? I'm like, Ruben, I haven't even been inside yet. So <laughs> so Ruben's like, no, go ahead and go in because they, they close at 6. I was like, fuck so uh, lucas and i we go in and then i get a text from lehua she's like oh i found my badge is here and then she catches an uber to come back and it's another hour and then lucas and i the only thing we get to do is uh play mortal Kombat, which is there and then we're leaving to meet uh lehua and i run into harris heller and then we run into her and then we're like Man, this day sucked. Harris, <laughs> Harris is like, hey, did you guys get to do this, this, and this? And I'm like, no, I just got here at five. He's like, the hell? Yeah. So first day was shitty. Small kind, shitty. Um, <laughs> but um, second day was a lot better. Uh, we got to E3 early. I went, you know, I didn't go in early because I, I didn't want to leave Lehua by herself. And um we waited and then the other YouTubers came we all kind of went as a group and then we went around and we did our thing. I, I didn't really get to play a lot of the games because my biggest thing was I wanted to network with people. And, um, I didn't, I, I network with a lot of companies. Uh, I got a lot of contacts and I think it's, especially as a content creator, I think E3 is pivotal for not really playing the games, but more so the networking aspect of it and building connections. So I did a lot of that. Um, I wanted to do interviews, but I didn't know if I could bring my camera or not because I asked PDP, well, I asked uh, David from Bitrix. I'm like, can I bring my camera? Can I bring my mic set up? And he'd never get back to me. So the answer is yes. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. You well, know? I'm telling you now. The answer is yes. Like, <laughs> so never all leave I without it. All I brought was my phone, and I and I didn't have my lavalier mic. I didn't have anything. I'm like, man, this is gonna be a pain in the ass to try and record anything. So I I I was screwed with that. And so all I did was just get people's contacts, and then I only brought like a hundred business cards that went out within like an an hour or two. So I was like, okay, so I'm out of business cards. I'm just getting people's cards, telling them who I am. And uh, I was actually surprised. A lot of people had already heard of me. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know you knew who I was. <laughs> like, um, uh, whatchamacallit, Max, Max dude or Max Million, um, one of his best friends, Unruly, uh, actually heard of me before. And I was like, you and Max know who I am? But I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's the thing. You're physically in Hawaii, but your content is online for everybody it doesn't matter yeah. where you're located yeah but you know uh, with you know second day was good third day was a lot of fun and then after e3 that's when a lot of the fun started happening because then we started um uh we started hanging out with more of the voice actors like the voice of leon from the resident evil 2 remake uh he's a good friend of mine nick apostolitas we hung out with him had breakfast with him um the voice of M. bison from street fighter uh general c rivers we had dinner with him, slept over at his house, kicked it with him, got to see his recording studio, and then got to go see a play out in the valley 
uh, that he does, right. and he does a uh, Moby Dick. He's really good. He he plays uh, Captain Ahab. That was super cool. Uh, we got to hang out with uh, some more voice actors from Street Fighter and from Devil May Cry, and it's like it, a lot. These people are super cool, super tight. And then I had a lot of people from like the FGC that wanted me to go to uh, Wednesday Night Fights and to go to like Barcode and all these other places, and I'm like. Dude, that's far. That's like an hour. Like from... Wednesday night fights is amazing, though. I know, I know. But it, and the thing that kind of annoyed me was a lot of the FGC folks that I know that were at E3. They're asking me like, "Oh, are you gonna go?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's far by Uber. Are you going?" They're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Can I can I catch a ride with you? I'll pay you." They're like, "No, I'll see you there though." So a lot of people kept doing that, and I'm like. And maybe it's the small enemy. I'm not too sure, but they kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So I'm like, oh, fuck that. I'm not going to go all the way out there and, and you have room to take me. You know me. You know I'm not going to, like, kidnap you or anything. Okay, whatever. So it, it rubbed me the wrong way. And um, I just didn't go. And I think some of the FGC folks kind of feel annoyed with me for not going to the Wednesday Night Fights. And I'm like, it's not that I didn't want to go, but I'm catching an Uber from LAX to there. That's over an hour. You know, it's like actually it probably could have been more due to traffic. So that late at night. So Wednesday night fights doesn't really start start till I want to say like nine. Mm -hmm. And by that time, LA traffic is really not that bad. But here's here's the here's the other side of that. Okay. It go it can go until like two, three o'clock in the morning. That so if you a... really want to stay that entire time, you're cutting into that time of like, okay, I also have to go back home, probably shower, get whatever sleep, and then be fresh and ready a few hours later for like, you know, the following day, which would yeah. be like the last day of E3. Yeah. That's, that's, and, and that was one of the things too, like, I, I didn't want to, to deal with that. And yeah, I, I have a lot of people in the FTC there annoyed with me. And then a lot of the players, too, like, I met two types of players, two types of professional players at E3. I met the ones that are super chill, super approachable, and then I met the ones that have the Hollywood egos. And I'm like, oh, okay, I put you in the jackass category that I won't talk to. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that offline, because Wednesday Night Fights is actually my boyfriend's old stomping grounds. Okay. Like I'm curious, but we don't. We're not, we're not gonna. We're not gonna put any names out there. No. And yeah, I mean, I guess I got. I got to see it from the other side. So I, I asked my boyfriend if he wanted to go to Wednesday night fights, and it mm -hmm. really depended on what their schedule is and what we had planned because I think the full body Catherine party was Wednesday night. Um, but I think so. Um. Because it is so late and all the time we're going to be considering it, we just kind of like, we didn't go this year, although I, I kind of regret because Hawaii doesn't really have like a fight scene, yet alone Hawaii really has no fight scene. I know that Oahu, you guys are uh, like, you started, you have like PC gamers um, over there that's trying to put that competitive scene, but there's nothing really that's consistent and really big. And especially like for us to have to go and flying over there because fighting yeah. games is my boyfriend's thing. Um, he he competed professionally for a long time in mm -hmm. Killer Instincts and Street Fighter V. And to go from having that as his career and doing that and competing to pretty much nothing, it's hard. It's a hard yeah. transition. Because um, you're, you're essentially, your career, you just drop it almost. Yeah. Because it, like even the Neko, like if you wanted to do Street Fighter and you wanted to practice or evo like mm -hmm. the netcode and the connection is terrible for hawaii and then on top of that street fighter 5 really isn't one of the prime games that hawaii players like so yeah. he has to find a pool of players from all other parts of the world who have terrible connection and always like this is not good practice for him so i was yeah. like oh we'll go we we ended up not going but we saw a lot of his friends and a lot of them are co commentators which I think that was like the longest I most ever got to talk to T Tasty Steve. And I'm like, you're shorter than I thought. 
Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you're awesome. He was like super energetic. I hung out yeah. with him. There's a Lucid Sounds party. I forget what day that was, but I got to see Snoop Dogg. <laughs> DJ, that was like the best thing of my life. I'm like, I got to see Keanu Reeves and I got to see Snoop Dogg in my life. I can die now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I am good. <laughs> but um, I would if you, if you go to E3 um, next year and you can put that time out. I would really suggest going over there and checking out. Um, Alex is, is great. He puts on a really great tournament. The atmosphere is awesome. You get to see all the local players and a lot of them, what they're pre- prepping for. And like, even if some of them rubbed you the wrong way, I mean, I get, I get that whole mentality of like, you know, you guys fought, drive me. I also think that's kind of like our Hawaii mentality. Yeah. You know, if a yeah. friend needs a help, oh yeah, I can do that. Whereas Mela mentality, they, they aren't as open to helping you out. Even if it makes sense to just yeah. go and do this. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't want to wait around on somebody. They don't want to be held down by somebody because like, if I drive you there, does that mean I got to drive you back to wherever you're at? Cause I don't really want to do that. I don't want that commitment. And yeah. I, I got, for me, I got to remember that mentality sometimes. And it's really hard. Yeah. And it, it blows my mind. And I'm not saying that all main, mainland people are disrespectful in that sense. But when somebody like, when you hold a door for somebody and they're like looking at you, like, what are you doing? All right, I'll slap it in your face. It makes you feel better. <laughs> like, holding the door for you. You're welcome. Right. All you have to do is walk through it. <laughs> you know? So it, it's, it's, it's such a, it's a weird thing yeah. to, to have to do that. And you have to fight through it and continue to just be nice. I mean, you don't have to continue working with them. But when it comes to like, you're saying you're, you're amazed that these people know like who you are and your name. It's like, as big as the industry is it's actually really small yeah Yeah. because everybody knows everybody so it's like it does it better for you to just be nice even if it kills you sometimes yeah because there's a lot of gatekeepers like there's really big names and they have a lot of throw but really the the gatekeepers of a lot of things are people that you don't even know their name like the pr people that's a small group of people and they all talk. Yeah. So if you rub one person the wrong way or you're mm-hmm. disrespectful, you're pretty much blacklisted. Like just stop. Yeah. You're done. They're going to talk to their, their colleagues and they're gonna be like, yeah, this person did this, this and this, or even if it's just something else, like just one thing, they're going to, they're pretty much going to talk about you. They're like, yeah. this is what he does. This is, you know, this is the content that they make and this is what happened. No. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things like I tell um, smaller creators, because I, I, I work with a lot of smaller YouTubers and, and content creators. And a lot of them like, oh, I just want to be able to say whatever I want to say. If I want if a game is trash, I want to bash it. And I'm like, do not do that. You hmm. can be critical and respectful. Yeah. And a lot of them don't understand how to do that. So they'll just go and they'll get a, like, there's some people I know that get a, they'll get free yin codes that I've helped, you know, get these codes. And then I'm like, okay, where's your review for? Oh, I didn't like the game. Well, where's your review? Oh, it's trash. I, and all I did is I tweeted about it. I said how horrible it is. I tagged the company and the PR person and, yeah i'm like that's stupid why the fuck would you do that it 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 is and it's something that it it sucks because it's a learning process right you don't know better at that time but that works against you so much in the long run because you don't know that knowledge of proper it's social etiquette but it's more just business etiquette yeah um, to just don't do those things. It's not smart because you're you instantly that first impression that you're you're leaving, even if it's not direct, it's an indirect thing. It's going to sit for a very long time, and you're going to be digging yourself out of that hole for a yeah. long time. And yeah. people don't know that straight off the bat. Those are one of the advice that you really do need to listen to somebody who has done the content creation for a long time and take the advice that they're giving to you and like remember it and stick to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
And it's hard. It's just one of those life, life lessons that, yeah, listen, I know better. Been there, done that. Just skip that skip and then just be here. And, and but even, even for like smaller content creators. So on the show radio, we are very huge about sharing information and getting people to, you know, make, make events or get that press badge. Because for... For us, for me, for me, especially. So my first year, um, I was just new to the show. So I didn't get approved for the press badge. I had okay. a gamer badge, but I had a co-host who had that media badge. And I kind of, for that year, just followed along with him. And it was mm-hmm. nice that he knew enough people to be like, oh, she's with me. You know, I'm going to bring her along with me into this, this appointment, to this interview, to these areas that generally Gamer Pass will not get you into. Right. So I was lucky on that front. And I I got a my media pass for this year and last year. But I believe that the process to get it is actually really easy. It sounds yeah. really hard. Um it looks really hard by numbers. But if you are if you are putting for like I believe that if you're putting good content out, content that you're proud of, whatever it doesn't matter what the standard of what other people think is good. But you're doing something that you love and you're passionate about it. And you have the credentials. Like, I, I think all I had to really submit is three bylines. So three articles that I wrote that have my name on it. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, on our, on our website, like, one article was a personal piece. It was, mm-hmm. it, was, it was like a review of Resident Evil 7. But it was a personal piece in regards of why I almost didn't even want to play it. And the thing is, that wasn't a review code. I actually bought it because I wanted to play the game. But I almost didn't want to play it because I had personal ties that you know, I had some personal things with my dad that I didn't play it and they accepted it. Mm-hmm. It was about video games and I, I did two other like game review pieces. Um, I submitted that and my business card and and that was it. Mm-hmm. And I got it is and you know, they they look at your numbers and your analytics and here's my here's my podcast. Uh, but they'll look at your Twitter and our Twitter on on for the show radio. It's like only 372. We, we post a lot more on our personal things but i i do treat it as you know as also a business account a brand account for my personal mm-hmm. twitter and they'll look at those things too and i got a media pass and while walking the showroom floor we will take the time out whether regardless if we're together me and my kodos or we're separate if we hear mm-hmm. somebody is like oh you know i wish i got this i wish i wish i could get the media pass i wish all of that other stuff i was all like I will, I will take the time to stop. doesn't matter if I'm going to an appointment or I'm a little bit late. I will take the time to stop and talk to them. And it's like, hey, you got a phone? Record with it. Start putting together content because you have, even though you don't have access to the meeting rooms, you mm-hmm. have access to all of these developers on the showroom floor. Yep. And you know what? Like I, I don't I don't like the concept where people think like, oh, it's a developer. You know, they don't want to talk to a lowly peon. Majority of them want to talk about their game so bad. They spent the last three, four years under an NDA, unable to talk to anybody about it. Now they can. They want to shout it out to the world. And they will take the time. If you're respectful and you go up to them like, hey, this is who I am. This is what, you know, I would love to talk to you about, to you about this. They'll do it. Even if you're only in the Indiecade. You know what? Yep. They had a lot of good games in there. I stopped in there. I didn't have an appointment with it. I saw Neocab. I saw Neocab last year and I wanted to play this game. He was finally there and I'm like, yo, I want to, I really want to talk to you about this game. Can I record this interview with you? And he was like, yeah, sure. And he just like, he's like, let me set up these two guys on this demo. It's going to take them 30 minutes for this demo and then we're, we're good. We're going to, we can chat. Mm-hmm. And we did. And you can do that. And the thing is that what was awesome is that also in the Indicate area, there was three gentlemen. I don't know who they were. I didn't stop them because they, they were in the middle of their hustle. Mm-hmm. They had three gamer badges on them. You can tell them by that bright neon color. Three gamer <laughs> badges on them. But they had camera. They had their equipment. They had their mics. They were hustling and making content and interviews right there on the showroom floor. Having a gamer pass did not stop them from still being able to create content for their platform. Right. And I don't feel that should that should stop anybody. I mean, if you want to be there as a gamer, be there as a gamer, enjoy yourself. But 
just because you're an up and coming content creator, podcaster, whatever you may be, just because you have a gamer patch shouldn't be that limiting factor to you. You still have a lot of resources. I'm a huge believer in leveraging what you already have. Yeah. And taking advantage of it because um, I did a couple of uh, interviews, which honestly, okay, my experience with it, I was actually in pain the entire week of E3. I, I could not turn right. Like really? I couldn't look right. I could barely move my right arm. I had, I had a very painful, stiff neck and shoulders. Like I flew in Saturday. I flew in a day earlier because I got the Microsoft invite. So my very first time, like I've been trying to get in the last couple of years, I finally got the presser invite to Microsoft. And I was originally supposed to come in on Sunday. And my boyfriend's like, you're going. He actually paid for me to have a flight earlier. And my Airbnb let me come in a day earlier Mm. just so I can be there. And I was perfectly fine there. I think jumping up and down and screaming for Keanu Reeves, I hurt myself. (laughs) (laughs) Because from that evening on, I was waking Mm. up every morning crying in pain. It was really hard. It hurt. I would have to, like, my boyfriend would leave without me because I'd have to spend my morning with a heat pad, an Mm. electric pulse thing, tiger bomb, and like a hot shower to, like, loosen up my muscles enough in my right side so I Mm. could get ready. But um, I was just, I, I still try to hustle. I just fought through the pain and uh, I wanted to do more interviews, but I, I realized in some of my conversations, um, I wanted to talk to these people. Mm-hmm. But, and I was like really happy about it. But then I would move in a certain way and I would wince in pain to the point where they thought I was hating what they were doing. Are you serious? I was giving that mixed message. And I was like, no, I promise it's not, you it's not you i'm like my entire right side is stiff it's short it's sore Mm. um it's like it it just hurts and i I, because i would get a pain down the back of my right arm yeah i would like temporarily lose like be able to lose the feeling in my right hand so i would just like drop whatever i was holding Mm -hmm. it was it was bad so i didn't do as many video interviews i did some audio ones but our our equipment is light and um we we aren't like everybody else with the the dslr cameras and all the huge tripods and this is like what i mean by leveraging what i have all of my video interviews were done on my phone oh wow because the most expensive piece of equipment that you have is your phone and you have that already and if you're using the backside camera most of the cameras have amazing amazing video quality like they can shoot in 1080 with 30 frames or they can shoot in 720 with 60 frames and it looks amazing my xlr mic straight to my phone yeah so wow. it's like there is a uh, ceremonic is a company that has um the auxiliary cable to an xlr adapter mm-hmm. it's like 40 dollars. then i have a uh, xlr splitter to two six foot xlr cables to mm-hmm. a twenty dollar XLR mic that I'm using now. Wow! And so that entire setup, um, I, even the XLR cables, I think the six foot cable is ten dollars. Uh, the splitter is eight dollars, and then the most expensive piece, other than my phone, um, which is the adapter, the XLR adapter from Ceremonic, is forty dollars. Wow! And I carry that all in a side pack that I have. And it's like, it's like, I'm not having to lug around a huge backpack. I'm not having to lug around, um, you know, a, a camera and all of those extra things, which is nice. I'm not saying it's, it, it's, they, they aren't nice quality, but you know, when you're on a budget and you want to start doing these things, you don't have to break the bank to make it happen. Mm-hmm. You don't have to buy all those things at one, at one time. You can start off with that and, and just work into your schedule because what really matters is the content and the conversations that you're having. Mm-hmm. That's what people want to hear about. And that's what I love about podcasting is like video is like a new thing that's turning, that's coming and being integrated into a podcast. But a podcast, the number one thing is always the audio. The audio sounds good and that message is coming across. You're golden. Yeah. Video is just an extra bonus on top of it. 
yeah. the, uh, my co-host, I really wanted to be in the camera. I'm glad I got a few of my questions in, but for Cyberpunk 2077, we sat down and we were talking with the lead quest developer. Mm-hmm. And that, that entire interview, my co-host has the same exact setup as I do. We currently, according to um, CD's um, Project Red and Reddit and so many other people in the comments we've gotten, that interview is so far the best interview to come out for, uh, for Cyberpunk uh, 2077 for E3. And that was filmed on a phone. Wow. So it's just like, use what you have at your advantage yeah you can make you can make the most out of it and that's that's awesome and like i have pictures to prove like this was recorded on a galaxy s9 (laughs) 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 with you know super affordable super cheap mics you know Mm -hmm. and i i just think that people don't have to see like you want to get to that point where you have those expensive items but it shouldn't stop your dreams to think like, oh, okay, I got to save up for this. You can make content now. And, and even not, there's like, even if you don't want to go with the XLR mic, there's mm-hmm. a really a lot of great non XLR mics that you can use on your phone that has amazing quality. Yeah. So I'm just, it, it's just there. And, and the, what, the, what I thought was great is the interviews I got to do. And I was like setting up you like they're they're watching you set up the developers are just sitting there or the pr person's like oh what is that i was like oh this this that's like that is really cool and super convenient <laughs> and i was like yeah and just like and it's super quick too <laughs> <laughs> plug, 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 i'm done let's have this conversation because they they have so many interviews to do they usually give you like a 30 minute slot mm-hmm. and most times people spend like the first 10 15 minutes trying to set up and, you're and then, done like, in minutes. gives you 15, 20 minutes to, like, you know, ask your questions, do whatever you can. But then you have to quickly break down because the person that comes in 30 minutes later is already there. Yeah. So you even have less than that 15, 20 minutes. So I'm like, I'm, I'm all about quick and efficient. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think we found actually... We found something that I'm going to test out before I, I, I take it to anywhere else that actually simplifies this setup because there is one that um, there's a wireless RF wireless. It doesn't use um, Bluetooth. I was avoiding that um, setup t- adapter so that you can attach it to your phone. You, it uses RF frequencies to have a mic so that it eliminates me having the cables. And if there's I, one that, uh, I know Best Buy has something like that. It's like Hundred something, but uh, 150, 160 bucks. I was, I was contemplating that. I wasn't too sure if that's good. Well, the one I found was sixty dollars. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm, I'm a budget per buyer. Okay, I wow. can't. I don't have money to just be spending left and right. I mean, some people do, and if it offers the quality, that's why I want to test it first. I'm not gonna say go ahead and go and buy this. The setup mm-hmm. I have now, yes, I will like praise it. But like I, that's why I want to test it. I want to see it. And sixty dollars, I'm like, it's not breaking the bank. Um, I can go and see how it works and what it does. So far, I love the quality of it and everything that I I saw in it so far. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. And if it works, great. I'm still gonna have like my wired setup as a backup, but just quick and efficient. That's all yeah. I want. Oh, and that's good. I, I like that you 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 know you you gave us that advice for like you know, using what you have because, and, and that is one thing, you know, with content creators, I know that I've dealt with and it's always the waiting to, or saving up to get this, this and that. And it's like, no, just use what you have. And I, I tell them the same thing too, when it comes to reaching out to companies, because they're like, oh, this company's going to talk to me because I'm so small. I'm like, you would be surprised. You would really be surprised if you just reached out to a company. And it's, you know, I have a working relationship with iBuyPower, I have a working relationship with Razer. I use a lot of their products. I'm a Razer fanboy. Yes, people don't at me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I have a lot of working relationships with a lot of companies. I mean, even PDP, like how I got to go out to E3 is I reach out to companies. Like, 
And I guess one way you could look at it is I, I relate reaching out to companies as I did when I was single, reach, you know, trying to ask girls out. It's a numbers game. Who's going to say yes? That's a fucked up way to put it. But, <laughs> but it's the same analogy. It's like, okay, okay, you may say no. Okay, you'll say no now. I may come back around later. When it, when it comes to the companies, not when it comes to women, people don't get that the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's like, I'll reach out to a company. I reach out to Sega or Microsoft or Nintendo or whoever. You know, big and small. I don't just go exclusively for bigger companies, but I'll reach out. I'll say who I am, what I do, you know, my podcast, my YouTube channel, my website where I write reviews. And, you know, from there, if I hear back, cool. If I don't, maybe I'll try again later. But I'm not afraid of no. And I've noticed a lot of people are terrified of that. So... With a lot of the smaller content creators I've worked with, and they're like, man, I need to, maybe I need to get like a thousand subs or 500 subs, or maybe I need to have so many followers on Twitch before this company will reach out to me. And I'm like, why don't you just start a blog or a channel and with what you have, just reach out and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm growing. Because in essence, that's as content creators, our goal is to grow, you know, and I, I would think a company would like to work with someone who is growing and establishing themselves just as much as they would want to be with someone who is established. You know, who wouldn't want to be along for that journey? But it's just one of the things that it sometimes it frustrates me, the mentality of I'm not good enough. It's like, no, yeah, you are. Just tweak some things and go with it, you know? I get that. And I also get the frustration of like, I want, I want, I want. Yes. Yeah. I want, I want them to give me something. I'm like, that's not how you start off with. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like if you're starting, you're starting your game review, whether it be a website, your YouTube channel, Twitch, whatever it may be. Review games that you already have in your library. Yeah. Start off with that. See, um, see what you know you got because like i have a, a little bit of backlog of stuff um that i do i'm going to do some reviews on but you know what, what's great about that is that you're even though it's an older title you're also regenerating interest mm -hmm. um i was watching a friend who was playing rocket league rocket league's been out for a very long time he still got viewers in there it's like what's rocket league it, you know it's like you think like you, you everybody should know what it is they don't yeah. know what it is and they're like oh wow this looks really cool this is like a lot of fun i'm gonna go and try this mm -hmm. you would think that you know the entire world knows knows what rocket league is but there's still a lot who don't just like they don't know what minecraft is and that's mind-boggling to me too right um you're still gonna have that opportunity to tap into an audience that doesn't know about something and for companies to you know bring in interest again to revitalize one of their order titles helps them out they like to see those things still um people forget about services like key mailer uh terminals where if you're a content creator you can link your your channel to them and you can request keys yourself and it takes a way of having to email them and putting forth your numbers and in that fear of rejection is either you get it or you don't there's uh move it as well yeah move it um, yeah. Ichio, there's there's a lot um, that that's out there, and it's amazing that content creators still don't know, you know, that they can use these services. And the great thing is, is that you have the PR person that receives these in their inbox. They see it. Okay. You you start using utilizing that service because it allows you to um, link your vods, your YouTube channel, your articles that you write. They go and review it. They check it out. It also has um, you don't get to see the analytics. But it also gets to see your consistency of providing um, information. And it's amazing when you go to these events because that PR person is sometimes actually there. Yeah. And they'll see your name, even though you don't have direct conversations with them. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I like that you did this. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, sure. Come on in. It, and it, it works in, in ways that you don't necessarily have to understand. But so how you're using the tools that's there. Terminals. Mm -hmm. All those are all those websites. They're free. Yeah, they're free to sign up and create your account. 
you just got to make sure that you stick to, you know, submitting your links for like, this is how I covered it. Mm -hmm. Same way that if you email the company directly requesting this, that you got to email them directly like here, this is the coverage I did. Same exact thing. Same way to build it. It just takes away the intimidation factor of having to ask them directly. Yeah. And, you know, one of the cool things, too, when I was at E3, because uh, I work a lot with NIS America, um, actually, a couple of the games in the background um, that I reviewed for them from Ease to, you know, upcoming Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3 and more. And, you know, every time they sent me a game, I bang out the review. I play the game all the way through. I do a review. I tell people how much I like it. Although some people give me criticism because they're like, you always like the games you play. I'm like, well, I typically only reach out for games that I'm interested in. You know, yes, I have a bias, but I like what I like. <laughs> but, you know, and I got to meet uh, the PR person that I've been talking to and working with for the last year and she's super amazing i was like oh wait i finally get to meet you and i get to put a face to the name and you know and it's it's one of those things that's one of the beauties of working or getting to go to e3 too like you know going to a convention you get to see these people or you know maybe you know maybe you may not remember them but yeah you know the consistency of putting out the content quality which i strongly always emphasize put a lot of quality Put your best foot forward when you're making your content. And, you know, people are watching. You may not realize it, but people are watching. <laughs> mm -hmm. They are. And it's the reach that a person has is, is quite amazing. Um, and never, ever. Here, here's another thing that I think is actually a really bad habit for people that need to change is. Those gatekeepers I talk about that you don't know their names, I don't like it when I see somebody who mistreats those people. Oh, yeah. Because, like, yeah, okay, so you got to talk with Rod Ferguson. That's great. But guess what? The person that books an appointments and all that stuff, are you the demo the game to make appointments with them? You're going you're gonna to mistreat that person? They can all of a sudden be like, sorry, we're booked up. Mm-hmm. We don't have any room for you. Oh, I don't know if I can fit you in. And it doesn't matter what, what Rod says. Because he's not the one. He's like, yeah, 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 sure. You don't have room. You don't have room. That's it. You don't have to see their books. But yep. you mistreat them? Wrong. And like, what, what, <laughs> what blows my mind is so our, our um, mentality going into this E3 is we only had actually beforehand two appointments um, scheduled. Uh, one was for Cyberpunk, and the other one was for Dying Light 2. Ooh. And everything else, we're like, we're going to go on the fly. Because mm -hmm. we want those personal conversations. And we're going to make appointments, which every single one of the days, we had appointments from beginning to end. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Techland uh, for Dying Light, I actually had to miss Tuesday. Yeah, that was our first one, first thing in the morning. Um, because my shoulder was killing me and I felt bad and I went back over there. She's like, and the thing is, is like, I was amazed that this woman, Ola, she remembered me from last year, even though she knows my co-host really, really well. I'm still amazed that anybody wants to remember me. Um, she's like, I was supposed to see you this morning. I'm like, I know I was in pain. <laughs> You're going to come back. I got you. Um, I was like, I thought you guys were all booked up. Yes, but you're going to come back. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And she's like, I got you in on Thursday. You're going to see our game and we're going to chat and all this other stuff. By the way, they had the best one because they actually had a bar in their thing. No other appointments had a bar. I'm like, you guys got a bar. I can have a bar. You know? <laughs> like, okay. I'm not going to complain. And they also had a really nice statue. Um, but Squares, a Square Enix. Mm -hmm. I wanted to check out Final Fantasy so much. Um, I don't know why I didn't email them. Yeah, I did. I got to play it too. I got to. I do. Um, so I went. Sorry. I went over there. I went over there, and the girl that was like working it, she looked like really tired and exhausted. It was also like Wednesday, and I was asking for like a last minute thing. There was usually when they have openings, their desk is crowded. Yeah. Once once they're like book their book, it's like hardly anybody's in front of there. People will walk up. 
before you even say anything, the first thing out of their mouth is, we don't have any openings. Mm -hmm. And I walked over there, I looked at her, and I'm like, maybe? And I was like, I was super nice to her. I wasn't kissing her ass. I honestly was like, is there any way? And she's like, I'll look. And um, my co-host was with me, and he knew I wanted to go and check it out. Mm -hmm. He was like, uh, Final Fantasy, I don't think it's so much his cup of tea, but he knew I really, really wanted to. And he was sitting there and he was like, look at this girl. And she, he's like, you used to work at EA. And she's like, yeah, I did. And he's like, oh, and you did this and this. He's like, yeah, you remembered. And she, he's like, yeah, I did. And this was like several years ago. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know, I thought you looked familiar. And next thing I know, she's like, all right, you can come in at 3.30. When the people in front of me and everybody else is like, they didn't have any room. She managed to ask to like, hey, can I fit one more? Yeah. And this is like what I mean. It's just like being nice, remembering the people that you come across. So shout outs to Monica at Square Enix. (laughs) 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 Um, Making this happen. And, you know, she, she had a. She had to fit me in. And it's just remembering those small details, being respectful to those people who are making these appointments mm-hmm. and knowing that they're not they're not just some peon. Yeah. They are the gatekeepers of whether you get to do something, enjoy something, or are you gonna go and stand in that three hour line right now? Because that was her first thing to me was like, if you follow the Twitter, you can get a little ticket to come stand in line. To try out Final Fantasy Seven, I was like, okay, and I was gonna accept that answer. I really mm-hmm. was, and I did. I was very polite. I was very ass. It's like, is there anybody that is in the current slot right now um, that missed their appointment? Um, I will jump in late. And she—that's what she was originally kind of like looking for to see if there's anybody who just didn't show up mm-hmm. until my co-host remembered who she was and what she did prior and this is what i mean the pool is small because you have people that are jumping in from companies to companies Mm -hmm. they're not they don't it's not a common thing for them to stay one two three years they're they're moving around and i think even i think i had a contact who uh, i met her i I think the game of the game was giant um Mm -hmm. and she was working as a pr marketing person there and then she was a marketing person for Razor. And I think now she works in Gen G. And this is in like a three year time period. <laughs> you know? So it, 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 it's good to just network, even if it is small conversations. You don't have to get something out of it, but people remember you. Mm-hmm. And especially when they are hounded by hundreds of people who have like, I want this, I want this, I want to make this happen. And they're stressing you out. The amount of time it te- it takes for you to say thank you or, you know, I appreciate you looking goes an incredibly long way. Yeah. It really does. It, it, it really does. And it takes no effort to say thank you. Exactly. It really doesn't. And, um, and it, it's, it sucks because you would think common courtesy should be common. It should be just like ingrained in you. But there's people who get to that point where they feel so self-entitled yeah. that they, they feel like they're above that and they don't need to do that. Like, you should know who I am. I deserve this. I want this. I don't care if you have 2 million followers on YouTube or on Twitch or on Mixer. It does not give you the right to be a jerk. Exactly. Exactly. So it's just, I, I, I love those opportunities. And I know you said you're like, you, you wanted to network more. And I, I find that interesting on in our, our two, two different ways of how we experienced D3. Because you, you didn't take, I actually got to play a lot of games. And it was all based off of appointments. Like Borderlands, yeah. Borderlands, that line was insane. That was, did you stand in line in that? That looks like, that's the look of, I stood in line to play Borderlands. I stood in line to, as I thought, play Avengers. (laughs) Yeah, Square Enix, I'm still salty about that. (laughs) I haven't even taken, actually, wait, 
I have it here. I have not cleaned out my E3 bag. I have my dossier. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's all I got for three hours in the Avengers line. <laughs> Highly suggest make appointments for those. See, I didn't even know. See, and, and, and that's the thing is like I had no idea what to expect. I did not know about what I could do, you know, with the press or exhibitor badge. I didn't know any of that because I didn't know anyone that had it. Everyone I knew had gamer passes and then PDP didn't tell me what I could or couldn't do. So I'm like, okay. Push those <laughs> now, boundaries. See, see, this is where Mikel of like a month ago should have been friends with me. <laughs> right. Right. Make appointments. Anybody, anybody listening, go make appointments. It will save you time. Granted, um, it is oh, it's kind of a lottery for it, especially beforehand. Um, but it never hurts to on the showroom floor. Borderlands, I went to the showroom floor. I didn't do it in in advance. I went up to them and I was like, "You got any appointments? <laughs> you have any time slots? I would like to check out your game." And at that time, I didn't think it was to play. Like I never. I never overassume. I just hope. Mm -hmm. And that's like, whatever they give me, I'll take. Because if I get to check out a game that I'm interested in, or if I get to talk with somebody, whatever time frame, I will make it work for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make them go out of their way to do something that, because like, oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted mm -hmm. to sit down and talk about this. Uh, no, there's like, yeah, we have this. You can check out the demo. And, um, you know, and then it's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll just check. I'll just check it out. I just want to hear the story. I didn't think I was going to play. And they're like, do you want to capture? Capture what? I was like, is it an interview? I was like, oh, we don't have time for interviews. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. It's like, do you want gameplay? Yes. See, I didn't even know what that term meant. A couple of them asked me that. Like, oh, you want to capture? And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, is like, I, like sometimes I'll actually bring my capture card. I do have a uh, um, Aver Media capture card, so I can record it in like PC free mode, mm -hmm. and it just saves to a micro SD. I didn't bring that, so I'm like, ah, I don't, I don't have my stuff. Oh no, we'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, they started doing that, so a lot of them will either give you a thumb drive. Mm -hmm. Or they'll email it to you. They'll, they'll drop box it to you, essentially. And so I was like, yeah, if you got, you know, if you got time, sure. It's like, yeah, we can totally do that for you. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, so it's like I got to play it like everybody's standing in their PC stations. And I'm like, we're going to bring you back to this little room. And it's like, sit there. And I was like, do I have a time limit? No, whatever you want. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I just got a capture. It was amazing because they had um, eight computers in that room. Mm -hmm. And I, when I first went in, I was by myself. So I was just playing and just trying it out. I was amazed that they actually had people come in there and they didn't want to capture the game. There was like, there's these two friends that went in there. It's like, oh, I'm going to beat this faster than you can. I'm like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> like, why do you want to fi finish it as fast as you possibly can? Why wouldn't you want to have game capture to bring home with you? Mm -hmm. Like, that is free content. And you're given free time to check out this level in as much detail as you possibly want. And you can ask every question you can possibly think of right now. What is wrong with you? See, that goes back to not knowing how to turn off the I'm here as a gamer versus I can make content and game. Like that switch just, it, it didn't happen. I saw yeah, it. it blew my mind. I wasn't going to sit there and be like, you should do this. And I'm gonna, like, no, like, that's what you want to do. And that's how you want to spend your time. That's okay. But for me, I also feel that's disrespectful for the people who not only would love to have that time frame and that time slot, I would take mm -hmm. advantage of it. 
but it's also disrespectful to the studio and the developer who want their content to be presented, to be put out there, to be appreciated, because that's what you're that's what you're there for. That's why they have these things. Hello. Hi. Let me say hi. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Hello! How are you doing today? Good. I just finished streaming around 12.30 and now I'm on my way to work. Oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> you know, that retail life. <laughs> yeah, wow. we're just talking about E3. And oh, nice. A lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've gone... We've gone the whole spectrum of personal life to work life, back to personal life. And like, now I know he takes parallel bear showers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. I'm excited to see this podcast. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> the, the first 30 minutes is just lost moments. It's gone. He should have started recording then and he did it. <laughs> no, but it was good. We'll get that back next time. <laughs> yeah, blame him. He didn't record it. <laughs> well, I will catch you guys later. I gotta go. Have a good day at work. Thanks. You have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. I'm... Talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> So, so there's a, this is one thing you should know about this podcast. Typically, I have people run in, like she, she's in this one. Um, the voice actor for Cody from Street Fighter 4 and 5, typically on most of my podcasts, he'll just pop up because I'd be like, hey, call me. You want to make a guest appearance? So I've actually had my fan base for the, the podcast. They've been like badgering me on social media, like, Nikel, when's Cole me going to show up again? I'm like... I don't know <laughs> when he does, right? It's gotta be a special, you know, a special occurrence for him to just show up. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> that's completely random. There are no rules here on the Cast Number Podcast. We kind of just talk and random things happen. I have no control over my show. Anyway, it's it is fun. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're having fun. Yeah. Having fun. Am I boring you? I no, there's a lot of good topics. There's a lot of good information and a lot of things to talk about especially especially content creation but it's just what was i saying oh disrespect yes the people yes. who take advantage of those things is just that there's a lot of people who would love to have that opportunity and it's yeah. being wasted on somebody who doesn't know how to appreciate it and then the yeah. studios who are taking the time to like look this with you and present this game to you and you're just like this is how you're spending their time your time yeah, I that that drives drives me crazy. It drives me batty. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and critique every single person, but I mean, time is valuable, and use use as much of it to your advantage as possible. Make the most of it. I mean, if you want to be there as a gamer, okay, that's how you want to spend it. And enjoy it. You're there as you know media. You you're there to provide content for your audience because they can't be there you know think about them as well too like they want to enjoy this they want to see this they want, they, they can't go to e3 they can't go to pax so they want to see your experience and be able to enjoy that and, and see what they can expect offer that to them yeah that's that's just me well and that's the other thing too i wanted to get your opinion on um have you like because i've noticed this especially when it comes to youtubers and when it comes to like youtubers who don't attend these events and they just go off of whatever stream is put up or press release and the same thing with the gamers who follow these content creators or follow these events like i've been in discord groups where people are saying oh man this e3 was horrible blah 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 blah, blah. man i wouldn't have paid to go there and i i tell people it may not have been the best E3 compared to like last year or whatever, but there is a clear difference between physically being there and watching a recap. 
and I don't think a lot of people understand the dynamics of those two. Huge difference. Huge. Like before I could start attending E3, yeah, I would I would do co streams and watch events and the announcements and you know, get excited about it and be stoked or watch the videos of like IGN walking the showroom floor. Um but those storylines, those well not, I use storylines very loosely, but what is presented to you is mm -hmm. tailored in a very certain way for you to enjoy it in a specific way. Mm -hmm. Like IGN's gonna show the best of the best of everything because you know it's IGN. Yeah. They are somewhat paid in a way to shine a bright light on top of these things and pay attention to very specific things that these companies and brands want you to see. Yeah. Um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you're getting this much out of this. Mm -hmm. And a lot goes ignored and uh, or not seen or people don't know what's happening. And then what drives me insane about content creators is they'll they'll take this, whatever is shown that they can see and capture online, and it's not it's kind of blown up out of proportion in some ways. I was gonna be like, you don't have to be politically correct here. <laughs> I feel I do. I mean yeah. it's still it's like it's your it's your show, yeah. I can. But yeah. I don't I don't know, because even well, I'll touch on that after. I'll touch on okay. that after about my mindset on that one. Okay. Um, I feel like a lot of it gets blown out of proportions. Like YouTubers, and I'm glad that you don't do this. I think, I, okay, I'm gonna I'm be straight up honest with you. Okay. I watch your videos. I'm gonna watch your your videos. But if you are the type of YouTubers of like, hey guys, Michael Casanova over here, and we're gonna be talking about this. I hate that personality. I hate that YouTube <laughs> personality. I really do. It drives me insane. Like, nope, X done. <laughs> Um, it's that that's it's that fake YouTube personality of taking this content content from whatever other channel, rehashing it and thinking making it or trying to make it your own. And um, then the it's like it's like Yeah, it's that recreditation. And it's also like playing you ever play the game telephone? Yep. And it's like how mes messages get changed along the lines as it goes through person through person through person. That's how I feel it is. And that's what I think about you know, watching that content, unless you can get it firsthand straight off of like live and you're watching the pressers live and what they have there. And then yeah. you create your content off of that. Great. But if you're taking it off of another source, who took it off another source, took up another source, like how much of it is true? How much of that is accurate? How much is that your personal opinion? Yeah. Um, while attending, like Microsoft was the only one I got. <laughs> Um, I could have gone to the Bethesda one. Didn't go to the Bethesda one, but like the Microsoft, I've not the biggest Microsoft fan. Mm -hmm. Um, only because I like I have an Xbox, but their exclusives suck. <laughs> That's it. My Xbox um, is a glorified Netflix player. It it pretty much is because anything <laughs> that comes out on Xbox, I can get it on something else, or I can get it on PC. Yeah, and um. Going there was definitely a surreal different moment. Like the Microsoft theater was huge. And I'm like, oh my God. I didn't even like, go. That was, it was amazing. Like I, I was in awe. And then to, to not only like, yeah, a lot of them were, you know, press or media or exhibitors. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, deep down, we're all gamers. And to, like, um, it, was, it was a little bit nervous because I was going there by myself, but I had other podcasters. Like, so you're all about meeting other YouTubers. Me, I get excited meeting other podcasters. Um, so um, Gamertag Radio. Meet, I would love to meet other podcasters. I just didn't know who's there. Okay, so now, now, Gamer now I know. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Gamertag Radio, um, Danny Pena, Paris Lilly, um, Peter Toledo, they were there. And they have been my 
idols, my podcast idols for so long. So when I got to meet them for the first year, first time three years ago, I was like so excited. I kind of fangirled. Um, they've done a lot for the podcast community, the com- um, their local communities, the gamer communities. They've done so much. And I'm here like a little stalker. I, I got to get my I gotta get my badge from Microsoft. But this line is so intimidating. And it didn't help that when I showed up, all the Xbox Fan Fest people like just started stampeding in. I'm like, this is so much people. I'm here by myself. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I'm on Twitter and I see Danny Pena post his thing. It's like, oh, going to the Xbox presser. <gasps> DM'd him. Where are you? <laughs> 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 this is really intimidating. I don't know what to do. And he did, he wasn't responding fast enough or whatever it is. Like, I don't know what to do. This is so long. And I, I brought up the map. There's other interests. Okay, I'm going to go in through here. And uh, he finally got back to me. I already had my badge and I was stuck on one side of the theater outside. And he's like, I'm over here on this side. I'm like, I can't leave. I don't want to sit by myself. Mm-hmm. And he's like, we're saving seats. We're on this side. I had to like clear cut across the entire theater once I got inside to to find him. Mm-hmm. And I got to sit around all of these podcasters, um, a couple of Facebook partners. One being, I was like, I was... I was an idiot with that face partner. He's a really nice guy, though. But, um, well, quick story into that is like uh, <laughs> my boyfriend is a Twitch and a Facebook partner. Mm-hmm. So, uh, on fa- his Facebook is his primary platform. He's uh, he's made friend with this other Facebook partner, uh, Good Game Bro, mm-hmm. and they play and they have their Alpha Squad and Apex, all this stuff. Um, he he actually knew my friend. Danny from Gamertag Radio, and he comes up and he, he had it. One of the seats was being saved for him. I see him. I'm like, I know that guy. And the thing is, he's never seen me. He just mm-hmm. knows that, you know, his partner, his gaming partner, Gunner Magic, has a girlfriend. That's kind of it. Doesn't know my name, doesn't know what I look like. I tap on him. I was like, Did you be? And he's like, And I was like, Oh, Gutter's girlfriend. Oh, I didn't even say my name. <laughs> like, I introduced myself as Gutter Magic's girlfriend. Oh, wait. And I realized, like, 20 minutes later, I'm like, I didn't even tell the dude my name. <laughs> like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> but, you know, we took a picture, and my boyfriend, he was flying in on Sunday since I was the original day, and, um, He's like, where is he? He's like, oh, he's still back home. He flies in, you know, he flies in later tonight. He's like, mm-hmm. he's on the Apple squad, posted a picture and everything like that to let him know. It's like, you're off the team. He said that you're off the team and you're in betrayal. <laughs> is this because you're not here? Kind of thing. And it, I, I don't think I told him what my name was until the following day. Like, we mm-hmm. even stopped and talked after the conference and still didn't even say my name. I, felt, I don't even know what was wrong with me. It's like communication <laughs> went completely out the door. <laughs> <laughs> but just even even enjoying that moment um just watching it live with just like people friends with fellow colleagues and streamers it was like a live stream cannot capture that no like no matter like your excitement whatever you have at home for seeing these announcements does not compare to being able to see it live and in person yeah or to even be walking the showroom floor and if you're a Monster Hunter fan and you're waiting for that DLC, the Iceborne, I think it's called, uh, that giant dragon, dragon that they <laughs> had and everything that they have for you to check out does not compare. Like you can see the pictures like, oh, that's really cool. But to see it in person, to touch it, to like experience it, nothing, there's nothing of the sort. I, I like if all you can get is the gamer pass worth like if you really want to like you are a hardcore gamer i wouldn't suggest like if you're a casual gamer and you just play here and there and there's only a couple titles that you really play like if you're a fifa fan and all you play is fifa because i know there's people like that that exists that's, like FIFA, the man, that's like the man <laughs> only people <laughs> um i wouldn't suggest it but if you know you love video games you have like even if it's a specific genre, if you're only, you know, only like shooters, I and you're just diehard about, you know, first person shooters or just shooters in general, Gamer Pass for E3 is still worth it. Just to experience just once. It's amazing. 
and then create content of that that is genuine, your feelings, your excitement, your opinions, way better content overall. Yeah. It's like I was talking to a lot of uh, people out here that they were asking me about E3. Like, oh, they're like, well, how do you go to E3? Because that's not open to the public. And I'm like, like what are you talking about? I'm like, just get her gamer pass. And the person was like, well, how much does that cost? I'm like, it's like 250 They're like, oh, that's so expensive. I'm like, but you just pay for a, tick to go, a ticket to go to Korea, which I'm certain that plus hotel plus travel plus expenses costs five, six times more than going to E3. And it's, it's just funny. It's like, yeah. And, and then it's the other thing, like, too, with the... I just call them regurgitation channels because I don't feel like there is. Yes, I'm throwing shade. Anyway, so I, don't... <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not feel like there's any authentic news from it because it's like you're taking a piece that Kotaku or IGN, someone else who actually had to sit and, well, I mean, Kotaku is debatable, but whoever had to. <laughs> to is that actually... more shade? <laughs> that, that's, you know, just pinch more of shade but <laughs> but you know someone else who actually had to go and talk to the companies or get you know sit through press events and you're taking their content slapping your face and logo and whatnot in front of it and just regurgitating things that anyone else could just go to their platform and watch which that's the other thing about youtubers and a lot of them that i'm personally friends with do this as well where they'll restream like ea or or you know whoever is doing e3 or pax or tokyo game show and i'm thinking why would i go to your channel and watch it when i can just go to the official channel or just be there at the event i don't understand that logic and then they'll get hit with the you know the copyright or like a lot of people restream like with Thez or something they'll get hit with the copyright and then they'll be mad and they'll vent on twitter about well this is this is fair use i'm like how is it fair use if you're making money off of something that they're using like come on now it's i have a lot of gripes for youtubers if you haven't picked up on that just a little bit it's well see i'm so i'm okay with the co-streaming stuff so you're watching it live as it's happening um but that's more for community building so yeah. so like on Twitch we had that I had that set up with um the members of Girl Streamers where you know several of our members were live on our channel um to co-stream it. And it's more of like there's people who want to talk about the games that are being announced. And if you watch it on, you know, the local Microsoft EA Bethesda's channel, chat is just going. And most of the time chat is toxic as it's, yeah, yeah, just yeah. it's just toxic. Yeah. Period. And so as a fan, you can't really talk and discuss yeah. or, you know, if you do it with your community, you got to talk about those, those moments and, and make jokes together and, you know, enjoy it together in that sense. So it's kind of like being able to watch it on the couch at home with friends. See, I'm okay with that. It's the ones who don't say anything. And just okay, that's a problem. Like what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you're not adding anything to it at that point. Yeah, but no, I go go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted. So like those things I'm okay with. But yeah, the whole regurgitation of just like ah, like do it yourself. Bring something new to it. Bring yeah. something new to it. Don't just say what somebody else said. That's pretty much plagiar plagiarism. Yeah. Yeah. So what really if you're not is. writing it verbatim, but you know what? <laughs> you're plagiarism copyrights just do your own thing um and there's nothing wrong with that because even if you think that there isn't an audience for the content you make there's always an audience for it's all sorts of different content yeah there always is i mean there's a reason why rule 34 exists okay because there's an <laughs> audience for that you didn't think there was but there is right and it, it's it's funny um earlier this week my, my co-host was on another show and um, he made this statement that it can be misconstrued in, in different ways, but I understand the message that he was saying it in. Um, nobody cares about your content until they do. 
but that's factual. Yeah, it is. And it's like you, you, you're creating. Yeah, you want it. You want it to be shown to an audience. You want people to enjoy the stuff you want, but they're not going to care about it. And so one day they do. When you make that right video, or you know, you find your voice. There's going to be a lot of trial and error, but you don't know what that that voice is that you have. And so you just try out what works for you and what doesn't. And what works for one person will not always work for you. Exactly. And that is something I have a problem with, with streamers. Talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) Because everybody sees what these streamers do and try to imitate it and replicate it. But it's just like, that's not your personality. It works for them because that's who they are. That's the character that they created. That's the persona that they made. Or maybe that's really just who they are and they're amplifying it. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that's who you are. Um, and it works. Like I've <laughs> consistently inconsistent. So when I started streaming, it was in 2011. And um, I was on Justin TV from like 2009, I believe it was. And a lot of a lot of the the streams is when you could have your your channel be private, and it'd be password protected. So it was a lot of it was used for um, game scrims, and we can analyze each other. And most I didn't compete professionally. I was always like a fill in case somebody had to be missing. Mm-hmm. And and it was it was always for the purposes. And really early on, when Twitch came and. You know, Justin TV introduced Twitch because a lot of people were using it for video games. Um, you know, a lot of my friends who didn't have a kid, who just had themselves, not blaming them, not blaming them. That was that was my life choice. Um, they they took a chance. They saw what Twitch could be, mm-hmm. and went all in on streaming. They're all partners. They all have a huge audience and a lot of them was like you know i can just do this for you i'm like i don't want to write your coattails i want to do this because it's my content i don't want to be that one partner that has two thousand followers and everybody's wondering like why did you get partners well because of somebody i knew like that does that's not satisfying to me it feels weird it feels off it feels unfair mm-hmm. but that's just me a lot of people would be really quick to jump on that like yeah i want that um but they, they all made really big names on themselves, and I'm super proud and happy for them. But that was super early on where everybody could just, you know, be themselves, make content mm-hmm. they're happy with. And then you started going through the years where people make these really weird personas and get-ups and really, really, really trying hard for those attention. Like... Really? Okay. I mean, I understand it's getting oversaturated. It's getting harder to be discovered. It's harder to pull in an audience that you have to have a get up. And you have people who are copying other people and replicating, trying to replicate their success and they're failing at it. Mm -hmm. But they keep pushing it and keep doing it. I'm like, figure out who you want to be. If you feel like you have to have a character to be able to be noticed, Make it something that's genuine to you if you absolutely have to. But don't be mad and pissed off when people get to meet you at TwitchCon and you have to maintain that character, that persona at a con and you can't be yourself because yourself is so polar opposite of who you're putting online. And then people are disappointed of like, what happened to being this energetic and bodily person that's all about this and positivity? And then in person, you're just like more yeah. boring than a stale piece of bread, you know? Like you can't you can't be mad about that. You put yourself in that corner. You put yourself into this, and you can't be mad because like, oh, so and so did this and made this happen, and you know they have a hundred thousand followers and they get like two thousand viewers plus every day. Why isn't this working for me? Because you're not them. Exactly. That's why. You're, and it's like, well, all they do is stream all day because they made it their full time job. They they work that out. They didn't copy anybody else. They made their own template of who they wanted to be and what they wanted to do. They didn't copy anybody else's. That is their brand. And they have the privilege 
to go and stream all day and do all these fun things and be invited for this stuff because they put that work in. And it doesn't matter if you're making content on YouTube, Mixer, whatever it is. All of these big names, whether it be Ninja, whether it be anybody from FaZe, they didn't start off with the best equipment. Exactly. They started off with whatever they could afford at that time. And if you look back at it, some of it is really crappy. <laughs> but their content was enjoyable. They were fun content creators. They had a fun personality. They had good gameplay. And that trumped having a crappy ass 360 frame, whatever it is, resolution, webcam, and, you know, using the mic off of the webcam. I remember those struggles of those days, okay? <laughs> but you remember, you remember the pack in headphones that used to come with the 360 in the uh, PS3? Yeah. Some of them started off their streams that way, using yeah. those things. Yeah. And then they grew piece by piece, you know, upgrading. And then when they finally got to that point where they could be sponsored, then you have people, you know, here, use our products. Yeah. Advertise our products. Here, here's this PC. Here's this. Here's that, you know. Um, if people just want it straight off the bat and then they just, they get mad about it. I, that's, I don't understand. I feel that, I feel I see that because I guess I don't know as much YouTubers. I see that a lot with streamers on a lot of platforms, that privilege that they feel like they deserve because I put in this, this much work, I deserve this. I'm like, well, the people who came before you put in a whole lot more work and they still put in a lot of work now to get this. Yeah. You got to pay your dues. Oh, it's the same with YouTube. I see the same thing with YouTube. Uh, I also see it with some podcasting too. So I know a lot of uh, I've I've experienced this because I, I've tried to help a lot of up and coming YouTubers, and they'll go out and they'll buy the most expensive camera, the mo you know like what is it the Logitech Brio webcam, or they'll get a DSLR and then the Cam Link 4K, or they'll get the most expensive microphone and this expensive computer monitor and then they'll be making content banging out videos constantly or copying some other bigger youtuber that they're looking up to as an idol and then if they don't grow then they get in this depression and it's like a lot of them and then the other thing i see is a lot of people having that oh i'm gonna have a patreon you gotta give me five dollars to join my my discord and i'm like who the fuck are you no <laughs> Like, seriously? But, you know, and, and it's that entitlement mentality. And, and I, I tell people, a lot of people, because I have smaller YouTubers that look up to me, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm a nobody. Like, I, I remember two years of making content nobody watched. And I never made the content because I felt entitled. I made it because, hey, for me, YouTube and content creation and even podcasting is my outlet to de-stress me from my daytime job. It's what I enjoy doing. I have a passion for it. I don't care if nobody watches or listens. But I see a lot of people that approach me and they're like, man, I wish I could do what you're doing, but you, you have it so easy. You get codes all the time. You do all these interviews with these people. And then they try and go, and especially when it comes to podcasting, I have so much shade to throw at people that have started podcasts to rip off of what I'm doing. And I know people that are like, man, I want to do a, 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 a podcast where I'm talking to professional fighting game players and the voice actors and the dev teams. And they do that after they're on my show. Yes, some of my former guests, I'm throwing shade at you guys. But, <laughs> you know... And they'll do it. They'll put out two, three episodes. I think one did two episodes. And they drop it. Because it does not take off the way they thought it would. And they're like, well, I'm not getting paid for it. I'm not doing this. And, you know, there's it's, it's a lot of work. And I'm like, what did you think? You have to pay your dues. You know? 
pod, especially with podcasting and with anything content creation, you got to pay your dues. You got to have a passion for doing this, even if people aren't watching. Is You do it because you enjoy it. And so many people that I see get into YouTube just want the money. They're like, oh, this big YouTuber is getting all these donations. They're getting sponsorships. They're getting these, these super chats. They're getting this. I want that too because I could, you know, I, I, I can make all this money. And then they do it and then they don't get that immediate. And I think it's because of this instant gratification. Yep, that I was going to say. That we're, you know, we're dealing with now. And they don't get that. And then now they're like, man, that, that just doesn't work for me. And I've helped so many people start podcasts and YouTube channels. Like I helped this one guy. I'm not going to name his name, but I'm throwing shade at him. He started a YouTube channel. And he's a game collector. And um, he wasn't getting any codes, wasn't able to talk to companies. I introduced him to NIS and a lot of other bigger uh, gaming companies. Personally introduced him via email and whatnot and Twitter. And um, he would not review games that he didn't like. He would request games that he didn't care for just because he was getting them for free and he would bash them. And then when he wasn't getting codes, he was wondering like, Oh, why, aren't, why am I not getting it? And I'm like, dude, look at the content you put out. And he was just like, well, I, they should keep giving me codes. I'm like, why, why would any company, any business work with you? if You're doing nothing but bashing their brand. It's illogical. And then I would promote him and help him go from a hundred subs to over a thousand. And then because he didn't grow, I stopped promoting him. Other people I know stopped promoting him because he's kind of toxic. Then he was like, man, I'm just going to quit YouTube. It's pointless. I'm like, dude, you realize it is not easy to go from zero to a hundred subs. Hell, it's not even going easy to go from zero to 10 subs, let alone you have over a thousand. Why are you not grateful for that? And that's another aspect is a lack of gratitude. And it's just, it's, when I see a lot of people with that entitled mentality, I don't know if it's just mental keto or whatever. I just try to just sidestep it. I have learned my lesson. I do not want to help everyone. I cannot be Captain Save a content creator. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, it's 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 good. So I, you're right. You can't help everybody. You can't change a mindset. You can put the information out there and say these are the facts. Yeah. You either believe it or you don't. You don't. Not my problem. Yeah. Um. So at, at Girl Streamers, we have over 1,200 members. All all content creators, all female content creators. And you know. It's an amazing community, and they all have different styles, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and it, we we want to be supportive of everybody's adventure and and journey and whatever that process may be. And we can tell, you know, we can tell the girls and women there, it's like, you know, uh, this is this is where you're lacking. Like some of them, there's a, there's an option to to ask to critique and to look at their channel to look at you know their videos you know and tell them from a personal perspective what you know visually like i don't i don't like this maybe you can change that up consideration mm-hmm. and what it can prove and some of it can be a visual thing some of them can be like well your graphics it's hard to read um it's uh, like you can't tell what's happening your audio levels sound weird or you know you're a little you're you're not as interactive uh, maybe change that up. And sometimes they, they're really great on taking that advice, making those changes and see see that it improves. See that they're getting, you know, you know, going back in that positive side. And some of them, you know, they just like, well, I like it this way. Well, this is this is what I thought. If you like it this way and you're happy with it, that's great. But if you have multiple people telling you these things, then obviously it's got to be something that got to change or you can adapt. Like if your font is like hard to read, make it bigger, make it clearer, choose a different style. Um, if your audio like 
audio is really painful to listen to or it's really too soft and they don't know what's going on or what you're saying, sorry, you got to change it. But a lot of them also don't want to take the time. And it's not just not just the women in Girl Streamers. It's a, it's a lot of people. Like I have a lot of other content creators um, outside of Girl Streamers. Um, and it's more common for me outside of the women outside of Girl Streamers because I can actually send it with a Discord chat with them and bring up a phone call and do a screen share and I can show them what they can do. Most times if it's on Twitter and somebody's asking me, they're like, oh, but that's so hard to figure out. Well, if you're not going to take the time to invest into yourself, don't expect anybody else to take the time to invest their time into your content. Yeah. If you're not willing to take the time to go and figure out something, don't be amazed if your content is crap. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. Um, but I, I learned to just not not spend more time on it than I need to because at one point I really was and it's also a very painful thing. I'm not asking anybody to praise me. I'm not asking anybody to give me a shout out or say oh so and so Jenny did this for me and she's awesome blah 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 but if like if I'm watching you, watching your content and somebody makes you know makes comments like oh this looks great now don't make it seem like you did it all by yourself like don't, don't make it seem like you're just like this all knowing that just like put in all this work and did it all your own when you know you didn't do it by yourself and I'm right here. I'm not saying <laughs> you, you know, I'm not saying you have to tell them it was me, but like, you know, be a little bit humble. It's like, yeah, I got some help on it, got it all figured out. It was awesome. But don't be like, you're just this God streamer now. Like, come on. <laughs> And it's like it, it kind of it kind of sucks, and 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 then it's just kind of like once uh, once I help them, it's like I didn't I didn't exist anymore. It's like they got something from me, and then they're done with me. Yeah, I I run into that a lot. I think you're better at dealing with it than I am because for me, it just makes me not want to help people. And it goes that goes against my personality type because I'm you know Captain Save a ca uh, content creator. <laughs> Captain, <laughs> wait 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 where is it? Here's Do you have piece. a cape for that too? Oh my goodness! Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean younger younger me. If somebody if someone did me wrong, I'd be mad at everybody, even if that, that somebody didn't do anything for me. And I learned as as I got older, and I'm saying like you know telling people to be nice to others um i can't treat everybody like that and, and it puts a lot of like for me there's like hate on my heart that doesn't need to be there yeah and even if one person does that to me then only that one person deserves to be like okay i'm done you're you're like you, that's how you're gonna act that's cool i can drop you like that no problem no hard feelings to me because there's no hard feelings to you that you treat me this way yeah um and I can do that it's just for one person. It doesn't stop me from wanting to help another person because not everybody is like that. Um, yeah, like I was saying, like younger me would have been like, yeah, screw everybody else. But I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like that heavy feeling on my heart, on my mind that, you know, I have that opportunity to help somebody, but I'm not going to do it because, you know, Dick Jane over there just wants to be a dick, <laughs> you know? But but, but what, okay, so do you ever have the instances where back to back to back to back people they come at you, you help them, they screw you over? Because that's my experience. Yes. And it's also, I'm seeing it too when a lot of people approach me. I'm like, you have an agenda and you're not good at hiding it. So then it makes me do some self reflection. You know, I need to go and pray and be like, okay. So we need to have a coming to self like talk. I'd be like, self, yes, self. Okay, self. I need to know, is it something I'm doing that's bringing these people to me? I don't know, self. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> back and forth conversation. Yes, I do. I do have those back to back moments in which it's just like one person after the other that's coming to me. But I've also grown to know almost pretty quick those type of personalities already. Mm-hmm. And like, if that's, if I get that already, 
I just pretend I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how to help you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it's necessary pretending. I just feel like, yeah, that's that sucks, man. <laughs> like i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna waste my time but there are people where i can tell and usually if somebody starts opening up to me um like they need help or they need advice or they need something if it's a content creator i'll go look at their past content mm -hmm. i will i will go look at their content and see what they did over you know a span of time to try to improve or to to watch it and see like okay this person is obviously really trying to like fix problems that I have or trying out different things to find out what works for them they mm -hmm. are putting in that work on their own and, and they got to a point where they need to have outside help or advice mm -hmm. I will take the time I will go and look and and you know give give my advice and and I won't be anything really big initially offhand like it'll be something small like a little 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 thing over there and see how they take it mm. if they make those just adjustments or they take it to you know take into consideration um and they're they're listening yeah i'll take more time i'll invest more time into them but for everybody else that's like yeah you you're in it all for you and you don't care who you heard it screw over in process that's really for me it's really easy for me to spot it now mm -hmm. and i was like I won't I won't be rude to them, I won't be mean to them, but I'm not gonna go out of my way for them. I'm not gonna offer them anything. Yeah. Sometimes if there's somebody else that does something like me <laughs> sometimes like I have a friend, I have several friends who do that. I was like, Oh, did you go talk to so and so? <laughs> and then I got this like, why did you do that? I don't know, you're a nicer person than me. <laughs> and it'll just all be fun and game kind of thing, but yeah, you know, like you're more patient maybe you <laughs> stuff but uh, i don't think it, it is naturally within me anymore to not want to help in in some way mm -hmm. um and you know a lot of people's like oh you you help all these streamers you get people to these levels and you do these things for them but you don't do it for yourself and for me like Streaming is fun, and I still keep that in a sense as a hobby, more of a hobby than a career. If I can, you know, make that milestone of getting partner, great. But I've gotten so many opportunities without having that, um, that I, I, I get through other work that I am satisfied with. And, and some people think, like, you have to have that check mark next to your name for people to take you seriously. Like I have three sponsors and I'm the, uh, probably in my in three sponsors, I don't have really a partnership, but the work that I do is good content. The personality that I have, what I can offer them is far more valuable, obviously, because <laughs> they're sponsoring me. They're my partners. Um, and I, I help other women get to that partnership level or whatever it, it may be by improving their content and I don't have it for myself and people always ask me that. And for me, it's like, it's so much more rewarding to know that I help somebody else that it might not be necessarily my dream, but it's their dream and they're accomplishing it. They're on their way to it. Mm -hmm. That feels good. That, and like, to me, I like just to be so politically and like philosophical and spiritual about this stuff, putting, I guess it's kind of like paying it forward, but being able to be nice to be helpful to help other people it also brews that passion within that person of like you know i had somebody behind on my uh, like behind me and helping me out i can pay for it to do something else uh, or somebody else or to show that right away to make content that displays that and to have that other people watch and to be inspired from that just because i started off with just helping out this one person mm -hmm. That is how I feel like this is how we make the gaming community, the streaming community, the YouTube community, whatever community better. Yeah. Like actions will always speak louder than words. And that means way more to me than a check mark. You want my cape? <laughs> <laughs> I got a cape. I got a St. Jude cape. Okay. I got to say, GK, but I participated. I, I made, I think I raised like over $2,500 for nice. St. Jude. I had to eat, I had to eat two tarantulas, but you know. Are you serious? 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, two really? zebra tarantulas. That was the worst moment of my life. But you know what's even worse? Uh, bean boozles. I will oh. eat more tarantulas in my life than I will ever have to eat another bean boozle in my life. Um, oh. Which is charity is the reason why I started streaming was to raise money. Mm -hmm. um, if it wasn't for G4 TV, I would have never gotten into streaming myself. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, okay, so let's talk about that, like your career in streaming or how so, you got into it. So, like I was, like I said, like um, I didn't stream, but my friends did for the whole gaming stuff and mm -hmm. and scrims. But and I, I just had account just to watch. Mm -hmm. But I was also a fan of Attack of the Show and X Play on G4 TV before they disappeared. I was a huge fan, mm -hmm. and like one day, I don't even know how this happened. But one day I get an email. This was March of 2011. Mm -hmm. I get an email. A wonderful marketing agent, Deb Blues, who worked for G4. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, we're going to raise money for Extra Life. Would you like to stream for us? I was like, what is Extra Life? Who are you? And how legitimate is this? And I was like, I was like in disbelief. I'm like, what kind of phishing scam is this? This is weird. Mm -hmm. She calls me. Like, I, she's like, if you don't believe me, I'll give you a call. I'm like, all right, here's my number. She calls me. She's like, oh, yeah, so Extra Life. I'm like, what is Extra Life? She's like, it's this, um, it's this charity. Um, it goes for the Children's Miracle, uh, Miracle Network. And um, you just stream on Twitch. On your channel, we will mm -hmm. we'll give you all the prizes. We'll mail them out for you. You just do all this stuff, raise money under our team name. And that's it. And I was like, it's for charity. Uh, and I told her, I was like, okay, let me do some research into this. And I'll give you my answer. Okay. So I, I looked into Extra Life. And I was like, okay, this is a legitimate thing. Um, I don't know how to stream. But I know that it was like in November. I didn't know what I needed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I have like eight months to set up for this. Sure. And um, I, I, I emailed her back. She's like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. She's like, awesome. So here's all the prizes that you can give away. And it was like a lot. It was like bundles and packages of like products and games and all of these other things. And wow. she's like, yeah, we'll mail them out. Just give us a name and we'll mail them out for you. And I, I didn't even know what the appropriate number was to put. I was like, a hundred dollars, because I nobody watch I don't stream, nobody watches me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't even know how to ask people. Like this feels weird. And um I, I bought this stuff over over time. I like my friends that who did stream, I asked them, like, okay, what do you need? What do I what do I need to get? Tell me. Mm -hmm. And they, they told me everything. Now this is back when like 480p was, was like amazing and that <laughs> people didn't like if you streamed with a cam but if you had a cam like that was like the most pixelated blurry ass cam ever that you had up and nobody had professional mic things everybody was either using their headset mic or they're using their webcam mic <laughs> and you know i have a help hodge which i still have it i still have my help hodge oh my god really yeah i do because I also oh. do stream occasionally um, retro games. Okay. Um, so that's the only reason why I kept it. But yeah, I would have like little spot streams to test and figure things out. Mm -hmm. And just having those, I would, I was picking up followers. I don't know why. I don't know how. Because I was just like 99% of the time trying to test and figure things out. <laughs> and I would play occasional games here and there and try to and make sure that everything was good because like G4 TV asked me to do something and I was like so excited as a fan. Um, I've been on their viewer army and I used to like participate in all their off stream stuff, which was like actually a lot that nobody really, I guess apparently didn't know about. Mm -hmm. um, they <laughs> also asked me to cover KawaiCon on Oahu. I think sometimes we're there for Attack of the Show. Oh, wow. So, yeah, huge fan. Really <laughs> well when they were gone. But, um, 
yeah, I, I, I did that. I participated in my very first extra live stream in 2011 and I raised almost a thousand dollars for like being my first thing having like, I think I had like a hundred and two followers then. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you guys just met me and you're going to give me money for charity. Like, this is cool. This is awesome. And, um, Extra Life, uh, all the money for that goes to Kapiolani. Mm -hmm. So, oh, and I'm like, yeah, I was like, this is awesome. And he still gets to go to a Hawaii hospital here. Like, this is great. And I even got like a letter and a phone call from Kapiolani. He's like, wow, thank you. Like, we didn't know this, that this was a thing. I'm like, you don't even know. I'm like, okay, well, here, here's the money. <laughs> and I did it again in 2012. G4 asked the same thing. And I raised more money that time. Mm -hmm. And I, it was never meant to be anything serious. It it just, it felt good. Like I'm doing something I love to help other people. Mm -hmm. And, and like, I still have like one of my mods, Tiger. I got to meet him at TwitchCon first time a couple years ago. He is my first mod and one of my very first viewers to my stream and he still follows me and we still talk and everything like that and he he always mentions when i'm when i can stick to being a consistent schedule he's like i miss inconsistent dj <laughs> it's too stressful to try to be here every single time when you're consistent <laughs> 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 and um like a lot of them remember like you know how crickets can be so loud yeah yeah that's how that's how sensitive my mic was. Like it would pick up the crickets. Like they thought it was in <laughs> their homes because they heard it so well. And mm -hmm. there were my crickets that were just like outside my window. And they're they're <laughs> like, now that I got a better mic, it has better noise uh rejection and everything <laughs> like that. We're like, we miss those crickets. <laughs> like, you for real? Like, what is wrong with you guys? You miss these crickets. But like charity, charity is like the number one driving factor if i can if i can do it every year i will it depends on my work schedule what i can work work out but mm -hmm. that that's amazing to me and and saint jude was my very first time this year and i was just like blown away like i i had a full schedule of things i was going to do work cut into that so what i had planned for the second half of may i didn't get to make happen i didn't get a stream nearly as much mm -hmm. um but the first two weeks it was like twenty five hundred dollars and I was like, here I was thinking, like, I didn't, I didn't even think I was going to make the thousand because, like, I didn't get it. I get it. Okay, sure. And I actually made, like, the first thousand on the very first day. Wow. And I was like, oh, all right. So it's going to be like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it's just, that's, like, the, the biggest reason. Like, I never, I never, that got into it for the money and that concept that a lot of people get into content creation for the money for the free stuff is a notion that is completely lost to me i'm not a saint but i don't go into things thinking it's like a get rich quick scheme if that's why you get into content creation Oh, buddy, there's a better job. Go work at 7-Eleven or something or go work at McDonald's because you're going to get a payback in return on that faster than you are going to be on content creation. Yep. It's just, it doesn't work that way. No. It and doesn't. your your very first reason that you get into content creation, whatever, whatever it may be, it can't be money. Yeah. Can't be money, can't be free stuff. It has to be personal satisfaction. Because you're going to get a lot of like nothing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being, it's like starting a new relationship almost where you can't expect. Okay, we're not going to go that way. We're not in an after dark part. <laughs> <laughs> But you can't expect, you know, the whole shebang straight off of the first day. You gotta build up to that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but there is other content creation on other websites. 
that does have that type of payback since we're on the subject. It's just, right. you know, requires less clothing. <laughs> and your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> We we can't we can't we can't leave out all content creation because that's still content. <laughs> <laughs> We're equal opportunity. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> yes, we went there. And now we, we're here. <laughs> we completely went there. Oh God. It- does it feel like it's been two hours? No. <laughs> it doesn't, right? Oh, my God. How long are your shows typically? <laughs> That's the thing. There's, like, no average. It can be anywhere from, like, 10 minutes to I've had some shows, like, three, four hours long. And it just surprises me that people will either watch or listen for that long. I'm like... I guess you guys really enjoyed the show. <laughs> and so that gets to that gets me to another point. So, okay, yeah, like you have the video. We're doing a video format here. We're recording, and mm. like if you have three, four hours it, you, that you're amazed that people listen to, this is why audio is important. This is as a podcaster, I feel audio is like the most important thing. Is a lot of people put it on as a background. They'll be doing other work. They'll be cleaning the house, but they still want to listen. Yeah. They can't hear what you're saying about you can't hear the conversation. They're not gonna they're not gonna be interested. They're really like, yeah, I'll find something else. Yeah. So yeah. audio. Audio everything. I mean, video is always nice. But like, you know, it's not it's not to put shade onto your content. It's just it's more of like who really has three, four hours to watch. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And so uh, that's why like like I it, it, it kind of interests me because like I'll take Typically, like when I do an interview, I always record the video typically either through Skype, Discord, or well, Discord's been giving me issues lately, or through uh, Google Hangouts. Like, here, I'll do this type of recording and then I'll do all the editing. And the first thing I'll do is instead of converting it into a video first, I do audio first. Mm -hmm. I'll upload that to, you know, well, I just moved over to the podcast platform um, or the hosting site. Launchpad DM by Podcast One, and I'll upload it there, which will shoot out to Google Play, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and the like. So it'll shoot out to all this outlets there, and then I'll upload to YouTube. And it just it surprises me because when I first started doing podcasts, doing the video format, I would be lucky if I got like fifty views. And this is like a year ago. Like my my video versions of my podcast did not start taking off until this year, or rather the like December of last year, um, which one of my first FGC interviews with with uh, Chris Tatarian or Chris T. Mm-hmm. So that one took off, and then you know I had James Chin after, then Justin Wong, and then uh, you know it. Then I started getting voice actors on. Well, actually, I've had voice actors on for the last year and a half. But, you know, when I started getting more bigger names and then like people were just watching the video, even if it's just like a like a a picture (laughs) and just the audio playing, because a lot of voice actors don't want to do video. That's why they're voice actors. (laughs) Right. Right. And so, like, I'm shocked that people would actually go like and watch the video like the most recent one i did with like marine that one in less than an hour or less than two hours it got over eleven thousand views and i'm just looking at it like what the like really i've never like i've i'm used to them blowing up well to me that's blowing up i know a lot of people are like oh man that's nothing you need a hundred thousand views I've never hit that. And, you know, if I hit it, fine. If I don't, fine. But for me, my own personal standard, that's a lot. And it just shocks me that people would actually sit and watch a video. 
Because I'm the same way. I'll easily put on a podcast and just do stuff around the house or do stuff at work. And it's just it's shocking to me to see how people will watch. And I, I guess people are engaged with it. They really enjoy watching them. It works. I, don't question. Don't question the process of why. But you're making content that people aren't enjoying. They're taking it in. You have your voice. You have your brand that's you and then people are enjoying what you're doing don't question it just accept <laughs> it but um you know i actually wanted to go into this too i know there's two other topics i really want to touch on with you well technically we'll, we'll make it two. we I had wanted, topics we mind did. you mind you everybody that's watching and listening i messaged him it's like is there any questions that you like is there a format is there something that you want to touch on he's like no it's gonna be organic i'm like okay well, I have. I, have I knew where I was going. I'm like, okay, we're just we're gonna talk about this. We, like, we are. We're both. We're like. The, here's the thing. This is how I knew beforehand. It's like we're both two people from Hawaii. We're gonna valahau, and we're just gonna go off because that's just mm -hmm. that's just what happens. I was like, all right, I'm ready. My <laughs> afternoon is cleared. <laughs> Yeah, right. it, it, it's just gonna go. It's just that's just how it is. That's, that's how how it is out here in Hawaii, people. Um, okay. And I just realized something. Neither one of us sound like we're from Hawaii. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. True story. I, I'm not sure if I said this on the podcast before. I did not learn English until I was seven. And then when I picked up English. Is when we left Western Samoa and we went to Memphis, Tennessee, because I'm a military brat. My dad's ex-military. So when we lived there and I had my Ialava and my long hair <laughs> and all I spoke was Samoan and I got picked on constantly. So I was like, okay, I need to learn English. And it's funny because at home, either my mother spoke Samoan exclusively, it was very rare she spoke English. Or my dad only spoke in Spanish. And it's like when I was there in the neighborhood I was living in, and if we were down the block from where the Elvis Presley mansion is. So it was a suburb that became a ghetto eventually. That's one of the reasons why I left Memphis. Um, I had to learn English because it's either white or black, and nobody spoke my two languages so i'm like okay i need to learn it so when i as i learn english i learned the very southern thick drawl <laughs> <laughs> I, it was so thick that when i learned it when i came out here to hawaii which i want to say i was 16 when i came out here um my english southern excellent accent which I still struggle with. It was so thick, people could not understand me. Wow. And it, it was so, like, backwater bumfuck thick. <laughs> and I, over the last, because I'm in my 30s now, so the last 15 years or so, 15, 16, 17 years, I have spent trying to neutralize my English to not sound like that. So. I have to say, I wouldn't have noticed. I wouldn't have known that you had a Southern drawl to you at all. <laughs> <laughs> or that English is your third language. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I gotta ask you one personal question. You don't have to go into like deep stories. Okay, so if your mom sure. only spoke Samoan and your dad is Dominican and only spoke Spanish, how did your parents meet? <laughs> yeah. So my mother is Samoan Hawaiian Tongan. My dad is Dominican Cherokee and what was he? Italian. For whatever reason, I'm not sure how, but they met in the mainland. I'm not sure they never specified how or why, but they met. And then then you're there. <laughs> I okay. Exist. I was just wondering. It, it's, me, it's, it's so for, rare because people would be like, that doesn't, how does that? <laughs> <you know?" laughs> 
It just was. I am here. I will not question it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, um, I, yeah, the whole pigeon thing. And I think Kauai has the thickest pigeon accent. Oh, so God. I've been told. So I've been told. Um, yeah, like pigeon, which a lot of people don't know, is a now a recognized language. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to when I was a kid and I was living here. Um, I had a thick pigeon accent. I didn't know. You don't notice the accents you have when it's like you're around yeah. it all the time. Yeah. Um, my grandparents spoke fluent, um, like Filipino and in and, and Chinese, but they never pass it on to my parents. We never pass it on to us. Like they don't. They don't. We don't. No natural tongue of any of motherlands whatsoever. Yeah. I'm the worst Filipino. Like you have no idea how disappointed. All of them are when they find out you're Filipino and you can't even talk. I'm like, I don't know. I'm what? sorry. I'm what? basically an Oreo. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm an Oreo Twinkie. I'm sorry. Oreo um, Twinkie. <laughs> yeah, because they start like, oh, you're Filipino. Yes, oh. yes. And they start going off. Not that kind of Filipino. So and they're no. like lost. <laughs> They were like so lost and so disappointed and disgusted in me. I'm like, don't be mad at me. Go talk to my elders over there who just like didn't teach me anything. But when I moved to California in the fourth grade, I found out how thick my accent was when I moved there. And literally everybody thought I was speaking a whole other language. And it was like so embarrassing. Like they almost put me into ESL. And to me, I'm like, I am speaking English. I got put in that. <laughs> <laughs> like, they wanted to put me into ESL because they didn't think I was speaking English. And to me, I was. It was just broken English, and I didn't know that. Yeah. And so it, that I had to learn to, to do that because I'm like, okay, this isn't happening. I am speaking <laughs> English. Why don't you guys understand me? That's not my problem. It was totally my problem. <laughs> and I didn't move back to I didn't move back to Hawaii until I was 16. It was August 1st of 2000. Mm -hmm. And um and then my family here was like, "Why you sound like one howly for?" Because they can understand me. And, and that's where I was living. People, she just spoke a little pigeon. <laughs> but a wahoo pigeon because Kauai pigeon is still thicker than that <laughs> this is true this is true <laughs> and um it it was it was definitely a thing and in in my household living in my my family in the mainland is if we were in the house even mm -hmm. even part of my family here um my immediate family um uh, my extended second third cousins because that's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, they all speak pigeon, but with my first, second, and my grandparents and my and my dad's, like we, pigeons not allowed in the household. Okay, it really isn't. So even my family in the mainland, very much so, pigeons not allowed in the household. Um, that's probably why we have barbecues outside. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was definitely a thing and. Now my pigeon only really comes out when I'm surrounded by a bunch of people and maybe had a couple beers. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a titta, so okay. I'm, I'm very, I'm very calm. <laughs> I don't, I don't so, start so, so I have to ask you, when Lehua came on, would you be able to tell she's from Molokai? No. Born really? And raised. Born and raised. Wow. Yeah. I would have never ever been able to tell. I I tease her all the time. I say, You sound like a valley girl. And she's like, No, I don't. I'm like, Yeah, you do. Yeah. And, you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. But but the thing is I can tell the people who lived on Niho. I've been to Niho before. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I can tell for that one. Those are, if for anybody's listening, Nihau is a forbidden island. It is one of the only islands in the state of Hawaii in which you have to be invited to 
and you cannot be left alone. You have to be escorted because it's one of the last places that indigenous Hawaiian people are allowed. That's theirs. Yeah. So it's urban. You can't even take pictures on the, on the side of their village. <laughs> so you have to be invited to the village. You have to be invited to the island and then you have to get a separate invitation to be invited to the village. I didn't get invited to the village. What is it like there? Like the culture and everything? Nihao? Yeah. Um, they're very laid back people. They're very nice. Incredibly strong. Oh my goodness. Like sometimes they're like, like I, I have some work equipment and stuff out there. So I go over there to do maintenance. And like, they just manhandle some of these things like it's nothing. And I'm like, that's the men and the women. <laughs> but uh, they're in- so incredibly nice and, and laid back and just, they're talking story about a lot of things. They do have electric. They don't have internet. They don't have like typical, necess- like normal stuff that we, we have here. Um, I do know that on Sundays is a is a day of prayer and and they have church, so they don't actually leave their houses on Sundays. Oh, wow. It's all about worshiping at home or going to church, worshiping at home, and spending time with your family. So they don't they don't go out on Sundays. Um, although there was one helicopter trip I was there, and one of them one of them was going Christmas shopping, and they were bringing back their gifts. And they had Louis Vuitton and Coach. And I'm like. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? What do you need that on this island for? Who are you going to show off to? <laughs> um, they do play video games, though. They just don't have online access. There's like one road really and it's not nothing like pave it's not they they don't have they have their homes and that's kind of it as far as establishments but it's the land is so incredibly pure and clean and just amazing unlike all the other aliens that has overdevelopment in cars <laughs> yeah we got i mean every time you turn around there's an apartment being put up or condos yeah yeah but over there, it's it's pretty much how God intended the world to look. And, like, apparently there's these animals called elants, which look like giant goat llama things. I want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, PETA. Sorry, vegetarians. Um... <laughs> Because apparently um, these these animals weigh over 2,000 pounds. So there's people who actually, you know, um, pay to fly over to hunt for them when they're doing their... Um, sometimes they have to do... I forget what it's called. Uh, they have to kill off some of the wild livestock so they don't eat and destroy all of the vegetation. Mm-hmm. I forgot what that's called. There's actual phrasing word for it. So sometimes they'll allow it and they'll go hunting for these elants. And I've never heard of this animal before. I've never had anybody that's like eaten it before, but I really like meat, so I would really like to eat it and see what it's like. <laughs> and so you're I, a meatarian then? Yes. Okay. Of animals that eat vegetables, so it's all you know, circle of life here. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, it, and it's great, and I'm, I'm lucky to be one of the very few people who get invited who get to check out this beautiful island um it's funny because we can take pictures while we're there but we can't share them it's one of the rules and stipulations we can't share them on social media yeah (laughs) but it's it's beautiful and i like it and like it probably is probably one of the very few places in the entire state of hawaii in which it is plentiful in opihi Oh, all right then. Because who else is going to be fighting to be picking the OPs other than them? <laughs> and even if you're boating, even if you're boating around the islands and you come onto the shore, yeah, they're going to super quick kick you off. No, they don't. They don't mess around. <laughs> you mean like 
No. No. Okay, okay. okay They'll okay. just manhandle First. you and throw you into the water and go back to your boats. Oh, okay. They won't say. they won't cheat you, no. Well, they just throw spears. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. So, so 20 minutes ago, you said you had two more topics. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 um, I wanted to ask you about, um, okay, what did I want to ask you about? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, girl streamers, like, I know we, I don't feel like we went too deep into that. So, let's see. I joined. Hmm? We touched on it. We touched on it. Okay, so girl streamers, amazing, amazing group of women. I actually, I think, when I wanted to take streaming just serious a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, I was kind of feeling out with all these different communities, and one was a Facebook one, terrible. I won't say who they were, but they were absolutely terrible, terrible, terrible women. Um, <laughs> they were nasty selfish. girls. <laughs> they were selfish, self-centered, and they were all about just using people for personal gain. I was like, yeah, no. But but there was somebody who like messaged um messaged that particular Facebook group and I was like, I was like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to her and I wanted to talk to her about this stuff and see if you're interested. And this is this is before I realized how terrible this Facebook community was. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, we have this going on, you know, be interested. And she actually brought me into Girl Streamers and when before they like they were really fresh, really new. I think we had at that time probably less than 200 members, maybe if, if even that. Mm -hmm. Um and I and I was like well, asking questions and I saw this community. I'm like, wow, you guys are you guys are really awesome. Mm -hmm. You're really nice. And this is what I wanted. This is like, this is the start of something that what I wanted and what I was looking for. So I quickly dropped them. And while I was trying to recruit somebody else, like they inherently I was recruited. And um, originally um, there was a lot of women that was looking for tech help and setup. And I would take the time. I was like, yeah, I can help you out and do this and do this. And Kariz, who is one uh, one of the admins for this community is like, hey, we want to grow and expand and do these things. You're really awesome at this. We want to be, you know, you want to be a part of our team. I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, yes, I do, obviously. And this was like April 2015 or something like that. 2015, 2016, 2016. And like originally I was doing like game reviews and just more so helping women with their setups and mm. getting with the, getting them to where they need to be. <clears throat> and it just kind of grew from that. And um, I'm one of the admins and we've been around for four years now, have over 1200 members and it, we're all about our, our model is encourage, support, and grow. Mm -hmm. We aren't, and I'm going to be throwing some shade without saying any names. We aren't there to benefit ourselves. <laughs> We're all about shade. This episode is <laughs> shade. <laughs> um, right? We're not there to benefit ourselves. Uh, we're there to help create a safe space for streamers uh, and for gamers because. Even even just gaming, once somebody finds out you're a woman, it's like you get hateful messages all the time. It makes you not want to play. It makes you not want to have chat on. Um, even when I started, uh, my first gamer tag or one of my first gamer tag was Drift Junkie. Ambiguous. You couldn't tell if I was male or female. I didn't talk. Once I did, it was like, oh, it's a girl. That's the way we're losing. Like, no, dude, you're losing because you suck. <laughs> um, but it's like you just get all these harassment messages or people trying to hook up with you or something like that. Some Something really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so that also continues on into streaming. And it can be such a hostile environment. And as much women streamers there, as there are, obviously male streamers and content creators 
so much more mm. um, that you start to feel like you're kind of alone. Mm. Like it's just you. So it's like great to have communities like Girl Streamers where it's like you're not alone. You're not the only ones that's getting these trolly type of people in, in your videos or in your comments or, you know, harassing you. You're not alone. We're here for you. And sometimes if somebody really is streaming and they're just like having just this monster like troll coming into their account, a lot of them can call for help. And we'll like, if we can, we'll jump in and we'll just be there to counterbalance, like, you know, having some positivity in there um to bring people up and sometimes people have really harsh days where they don't even know if like it's worth it for them they don't know if this is something that they want to do and sometimes they'll discover it really isn't for them and sometimes they just need a little encouragement to know like your content is worth it you're worth it yeah. uh, a lot of them is like hey i want to do this i don't know how to make this happen a lot of people who have gone down that path like okay this is what worked for me you know, try this out, see if it works for you. Um, and they just need advice. And if it's not that, then if it's not content creation, sometimes it's just finding that balance of like having it all work with your personal life. It's like a lot of us are have families, or parents, and they need just like, how did you balance, you know, having your kids and being able to fit a, a stream schedule, what worked for you? And it's just, it's great to have that because it's it's something that's not out there. And we're not just for, you know, only females. We also are very LGBTQ um, allies. And I think three of the community manager teams are bisexuals, one's pansexual. And having a place of acceptance, especially for women who are going through a transition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can't do that on their social media yet. They can't do that on, on Facebook to their families yet. But they, they want a space where they can be them true selves. And we don't treat them less than. We don't treat them as like, well, you didn't go through your transition surgery yet. So you're not quite a woman. We don't do that. You're a woman to us. You can be who you are and feel comfortable and feel confident that you are in a safe space to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And we've had several members who came in, like, there is an application process. We have to make sure that you're a female or you align a, and identify as a female um, or gender fluid. And, you know, they, they show on top of their, you know, their channel that they haven't gone through that process yet. But they'll message and they'll, they'll say, like, look, I'm going through this. Um, I'm not ready to come out yet. But I am a woman. And I want to be a part of this community. And a lot of them have gone from that, that transition from the very, very beginning to the end and been in our community and have been able to share their stories and feel comfortable and confident enough to know that they have not only the support of girl streamers to be able to go to their family and know that, you know, if something happens and I'm not accepted by a friend or anything like that, I have the friends I made here. And it's it's amazing. Like you would think that with over twelve hundred members, that we have a lot of bickering, a lot of arguing. It really, isn't we don't have a whole lot of drama. Like sometimes we'll have it a little bit here, but compared to the bigger scheme of everything, not really. It's probably like two, three times in a year. That's pretty good. That's it's really good. not that bad, and it's really quickly. This like is done, and we found over the years we're not for everybody. Mm -hmm. We we like we. We aren't for every type of content creator. Um, we've gotten told that <laughs> numerous times. We don't take it hard. We understand this is just not your cup of tea because it's that we go back to that wanting that instant gratification where people feel, and this isn't just for our community. This is for anybody who joins any type of content creation community is that they feel like, okay, I'm a part of here. I'm here. Pay attention to me. Follow my page. Like me. Come and view me every single time. It doesn't work that way. It's like, it's not like you just go, you have to, it's like a really great way for entry networking mm -hmm. before you go to meeting people in person. Like you have to put in the time and the effort of getting to know your other content creators, support them and to get support back. It's not like you joined, you did an intro and now all of a sudden you're going to have like 20 plus viewers and a hundred follows in the single day just because you joined. And some people really expect that and want that. And it isn't. We're not a follow for follow. Um, if you, you know, you're participating in the community, 
uh, you're active and talking and getting to know your fellow, you know, members and they get to know who you are. It's like, oh, this person's really cool. I'm going to go and follow them and go catch them live because we have the same interest in games or, you know, we have kids that are similar age and we're going through the same thing. You have to put in that, that time and effort and just people just want to be able to join and just instantly get this and get that. That's not the way that we work. And it's purposely that way so that people learn how to network. They learn and get used to the fact that it takes time. It takes effort. It takes work to be able to to get what you want. Mm -hmm. And we we continue to do that. And it's just, I, I think there's just so many other communities where they get that false sense of, you know, uh, support. And what I mean by that is, you know, they're instantly added to the Twitch team page, which we are very exclusive on top of that for a certain reason, is that on Twitch teams, what's the point of having a team that has 500, 600 people on this team and you're on it, but people have to go all the way to like page 10 to find out where your channel is um, to be noticed. It, there is no purpose. So our, our Twitch team is consists of less than 100 members. I think it's even less than that. I think we have like somewhere like 50, I think. Mm -hmm. And these are our members um, who are very active, who in, in, the, in the Discord, in the server, they're very supportive of their fair content creators. Um, and their content and their beliefs kind of align with what we want. We, we want that supportive community. We want to help other people grow and, and positivity. So they are on there. And a lot of people are like, why can't I be on there? I'm like, well, going through and searching, it kind of seems like the last time you talked was December of 2018. So, um, like, if you, like, we don't know who you are. Like, yes, you're in here. We're grateful for you to be in here. But we want to know who you are. What yeah. type of content creator are you? And it's trying to passively teach um, teach uh, them that this is what you need to do and it helps and serves you better in the long run. And it's like uh, we have different programs. We have our own podcasts on there as well too. It's not hosted by me. It's um, fellow member Nifedora. Mm -hmm. She does a podcast every other week in which she interviews and we get a, a deeper insight of um, the members in the community. Um, we also, it's on hiatus right now because we're reformatting it. We also have a new show called the Cosmic Bulletin. So that's also bi-weekly and they talk about the gaming news and what's happening in the community, what to expect, what's the latest on all the different platforms that people should be paying attention to. Um, I do a starting to, I was only going to do it as a one-off thing for St. Jude's charity. It was a fireside chat with our, our lead charity um, manager. Mm -hmm. um, just so people can, a lot of people, a lot of members, it was their first charity and they didn't know what to look forward to. So we're just going to have a fireside chat to discuss this thing. And everybody liked it so much. So um, it's it's just going to be organic conversation. So my next one is going to be with um, our inclusivity and diversity ma um, community manager, Kink Nightmare. And then the one after that is going to be with Therese, who's going to be talking about networking and brand marketing. So it's just to offer that information of, and bringing forth information that isn't really commonly talked about so much or people just don't know how to handle in certain ways. Like, yeah, as a content creator, is your content seen, like, do you want to be seen as an LGBTQ um, ally? Do you want to be known that uh, you're supportive as a POC? Like, is it inclusive? Is it, does it include that diversity, which is a huge thing that's happening with gaming companies now? Yeah. Like, that's a really super huge thing that, like, this year, like, Riot, I think, is just going through, like, their ringers and all of their stuff. So, like, people have to think about those things. And it matters to companies, especially now and going forward, about who they're partnering with. Mm -hmm. If their content, you know, is, I guess, politically correct in some ways, then you're not like a, you know, head grand dragon of the KKK or something. 
So uh, just it's just like with, with content creators, especially new and upcoming ones, Girl Streamers offers that safe place without having things being mansplained to them. Mm. Okay. Because that's a, that's another thing. It's like when if if you're lucky, you have really great male content creators that will take the time to explain stuff to you, and then you have some that just kind of like talk to you like you're dumb. <laughs> just like really, you don't know what this is. Like, no, if I did, I wouldn't be asking you. No, I, I can see that. I can see that being well, fucking annoying. That can be really annoying. <laughs> I. I which, okay, I am guilty of not talking to a couple of female content creators like they're stupid. I am guilty of explaining something 15 times and they still don't get it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm just like, I don't know what you want me to do at this point but i do that i do that to guys too i i actually i think i'm an equal opportunity i'll help you and i'll put on my cape look at my cape and then you're not help you're not helping yourself so i take the cape off <laughs> <laughs> but no I, I i i get your point i get it it is and and, and it's sometimes it's just easier to hear from another woman just like sometimes for men, it's easier to hear from another man. I mean, you're not necessarily going to talk about your junk with a, a woman as it is like, this is, maybe, you know what? Never mind. You take that back. Maybe you won't talk about your junk with another man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you're at with that thing or how comfortable you are. I know my friends don't mind it, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I mean. I'm in open books. So. <laughs> <laughs> but. It it's it's just a really nice, well rounded community and you know, we, we want to expand and do more. We're chill still trying to in a way like even though it's been four years, we're still in our infancy. Um, streaming, content creation, it's changing. The mindset of, of a streamer changes as well too and it, it kind of goes with the trend of what's popular and what's going. And it's it's weird how the mindset of a streamer changes because you have so many different varieties and so learning to adapt like we're, we're not going to please everybody mm. but we want to be uh, able to offer services that are you know supportive of everyone so yeah. we're constantly changing growing and adapting and trying out new things see what works okay this is too much effort and for very little you know return on it mm. so cut that out and try something else that's different uh we have amazing members of demi mods that help you know create this positive community and and help us grow that as well too we are also have since we are open to the world we have um our team members called the babblefish mm -hmm. and that's just um mods that speak in multiple languages so we don't leave anybody out um so we have a wide variety german dutch japanese uh finnish what else is there? Um, even it, even sign language. Oh wow! <laughs> like we we really try to make sure it is as inclusive as possible, and we try to be respectful of every time zone, even though there's so many time zones to keep track of. Um, and you know, have odds and people there for people, uh, no matter what time zone they're in. Mm. So it's I love I love being part of it and being part of the family and and. And just like I, I have an amazing team that I get to work with every day. <laughs> right now, actually, right now they're all in a good like, voice chat. They try calling me earlier because we're doing a calling and cleaning out some of our social media stuff, mm -hmm. and so they're all drinking wine and <laughs> and just cleaning out this stuff. And I see these messages that they're posting. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> just kicking right. back and relaxing. So. And and we also we also try to offer programs and see what kind of sponsorships that we can bring in, and um, we have uh, a special VIP for developers to come in so they can talk about their games or their products and offer opportunities for the girls. And he here's the thing too, and throwing shade to the other communities here, we we don't take anything 
um, from from our members. Um, and what I mean by that, if there's sponsorship opportunities, we will not play middleman and right, take like some percentage. Game. We we are not the middleman. We will tell you these opportunities are available. And again, we're about passively trying to teach women um, to go out and do the work themselves. So we tell them these opportunities are here. But we leave it up to them. It's either you take it mm-hmm. or you don't. That's it. We're not going to do the work for you. We're not going to be like, oh, we have this many members with this. And this is this is who this is. And she does all of this stuff. Like, we're not your spokesperson. We're telling you it's there. You sell yourself in the way that you want to be presented. Because mm-hmm. that's best if it comes from your mouth and not ours. Yeah. And some of them want to do that for work for them. And I'm like, no, no, either you take it or you don't. But what if I don't get this? What if I get denied? Well, you'll then you'll get denied and on to the next one. You're gonna get no's. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. And and sometimes at least you know you have that opportunity to start a conversation with them and talk to them. Yeah. We gave you that. What you do with it. Um, fail or succeed, that's on you. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. So I, I am a big fan of what you're doing in your group. So you want to tell people where they can find that? Oh, yes. So you can follow Girl Streamers on Twitter and Instagram, just Girl Streamers. We have a Twitch channel, it's twitch.tv slash Girl Streamers underscored INC. And then you can also visit our website, which is www.girlstreamers.com. It has um, all of our members that are in there about us, the community managers, and also has our Discord invite link. If you feel like this is a community that may be fit for you, you want to feel us out, that is an invite link there. We do have a process of making sure that you are a woman because it does say girl streamers, even though somebody did tell us, like, we didn't know that you were just for girls. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it wasn't obvious at all. <laughs> uh, right? Not obvious <laughs> at all. But that's where you can find us all over there. And if you want, want no any more information, you don't want to DM that, even though I'm the person that manages the social media for that, along with my, my team, which is awesome. Uh, shout out to Julie V for always picking up my Slack. Um, you can always message me on Twitter, too. I'm always down. Okay. And uh, I'll leave links to all of that in the description of the podcast and the YouTube video in below. So people go. That's the command prime directive. Go and follow support. Um, so I do have other topics, but two more. If you have the time. I like I'm how gonna... you said two more before this one. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be keeping out. It's like, I thought we covered one. No, you got two more. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, when it comes to streaming, because this is something that, I mean, I've been streaming for a couple of years now, but I kind of want more insight on, like, because you, you're, you're, you're not using Mixer, right? No. Okay. I feel like Mixer is a lost cause. I, I've tried it and that didn't work. Um, not saying it's bad. Okay. Microsoft, don't come at, don't at me. Anyway, <laughs> um, when it comes to streaming, I know there are people that use stuff like Restream.io or they'll stream to YouTube and to Twitch or Twitch and to um, Facebook gaming. And it's like, I've seen other people like Ashley Kreis and, and um, uh, Harris Heller and many others say that you should pick a platform and just stream exclusively to it like twitch and use stuff like facebook or youtube or whatever to draw an audience to there and i guess what i want to get your expertise on is what should a person do because i feel like i get more engagement on youtube than on twitch 
but I kind of don't want to stream on YouTube because I just want that to be reviews, podcasts, and then a funnel to my Twitch for other content. But it's like sometimes when I'm streaming, it can be between one and five viewers. I mean, there was a point where I was getting a couple hundred viewers, and then I took like I got sick for three or two weeks, and then now I can't even get that back. See, that's the hard thing. Streaming is so inconsistent. Um, like I said, I'm consistently inconsistent. I I have I have low I have low numbers because uh, well I have my regulars that come there. They're like die, diehards and they're awesome. I love them. Mm-hmm. Um, when I can be consistent, and I have to be consistent for like two months, mm-hmm. then I have really amazing numbers. But that's a problem with streaming: is you get sick, you go on vacation. You go with something happens in your family for whatever reason. Or you go to E3. It's like, yeah. It's like <laughs> you're gone for like a day and suddenly you mean nothing to people. It's like, where's the loyalty? Why did you follow me? Like, don't you understand? I have a life too. And that I, I got these things that happen, but I come back. Mm-hmm. Um, It's hard. Yes, I am very, very much an advocate of you stick with, if you're streaming, stick with one platform don't use restream io don't don't try to spread yourself too thin on on this stuff because you yeah you want to have as much viewers and eyes on you when you're live but you're not you're not you're on all these platforms you're spreading yourself too thin that they should just come into one area that they can find your live content and we uh the show radio we did try for like a year we tried all of the platforms on having our live content and that was recorded and we it was better on twitch in some ways uh youtube was hard don't know why youtube was so hard facebook was pretty decent mixer was the no twitch and mixer was actually the two that were like kind of tied like we ultimately it was between mixer or twitch Mm -hmm. but because i was so much more familiar with twitch we stuck with that because i handle the production and the video and all the streaming stuff for our content on there Mm -hmm. and it's been a really weird interesting transition because we have really great numbers on our downloads on our website but it does not translate into the live format video format Mm -hmm. and i think it's because majority of our audience for the last like eight nine years now it's always just been audio only so to like hey we have the video side it's like almost kind of like having to start over again mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's a little bit hard and it's a bit of a struggle now for for your streaming content are you like talking about like just video games or are you talking about um the casanova podcast or both streaming games but i have been strongly considering putting because i've been told by a lot of people i should also put the cast Nova podcast not only on youtube but also to have it on twitch i'm not sure how to go about doing that but as far as the streaming games like i have a set of games like i flip between jrpgs fighting games retro and action games um and it's just, you know, when I was doing hardcore JRPGs earlier in the year and fighting games, I, I mean, I hit a point where I was like 220 viewers. And I was like, holy shit. And then, like I said, that two weeks I was sick. And then when I came back, then it's like one viewer, two viewers, five viewers, tops six. And it's, I've never been able to hit those numbers again. And it's like, how do I? You know, do I promote it? Do I use restream? What hashtags do I use? And it's like a lot, a lot of these stream doctor, well, not stream doctor, stream coaches, they make it sound so easy. And it's just, it's not, it's not. Yes. It's it goes not. back to what we were saying earlier about it. It, it, it isn't. So there's, ah, oh, man, it, it's hard. There's no set surefire way and formula 
to get those numbers back or to quickly grow those numbers. Um, so something I've been personally considering for myself, just because it offers another form of content, another visual interaction thing to offer there. And even though it's something I want to do for myself, obviously I'm, I, I'm going to tell other people, like it's something for you to consider. So it's kind of like making a game trailer for your channel. Mm -hmm. So you want people to come to your channel and sometimes they're not, they don't want to read about what you you have. They don't want to read it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they like that visual uh, stimulation. So when I say like a game trailer for your channel, if you know what you want to play for July, Mm -hmm. you get a pretty good sense go and find a couple game trailers or whatever like that try to splice up some things here's what to expect on casanova channel and it's just like we're gonna be playing this and this and this and then you like if you're gonna have a podcast you know you're gonna have somebody on the show and special guests this person for the month of july it'd be like a one minute little you know montage. channel montage trailer for your channel of what people can expect Okay. On Twitch, there is a very there's a tool that is very very much underutilized. It's for event making. You can actually create events, and you can make it. You can tie it to when your channel is going to be live. You can say what game you're going to be playing, a little short description, and what that does is that the people that follow you, it actually sends a notification out to them before you even start your streaming. Hey, Casanova is going to be live in like thirty minutes. With, with this and they'll see that notification come up whether they be on their their phone um email or you know if they're already on twitch on the website itself mm -hmm. so it just it's a constant like pinging to them some people might find it annoying but it also has the return of people like all oh, right okay i'm gonna go and check this out i know what they're gonna be playing i know what to expect um or oh this person's new they're gonna be playing this game yeah i want to check this out well, that looks really cool. It's like, oh, they have this special guest that's going to be on there. I'm going to make sure to remember to go back and check it. And you mm -hmm. have that. It's not just to have it just like come out like, oh, you're going to post it on like June 30th for what you're going to do in July. Have that throughout like scheduled throughout the month periodically, at least once or twice a week um, to bring that return because some people just don't want to read a tweet. You can even put that on, you know, you can make it a little bit longer and you can have that as a, a YouTube video of like two, three minutes mm -hmm. about what to expect on top of there. And it's just people will know that you should come back to this channel for the live content. Okay. And then um, highlights or something that happened in your channel while you were live. You can be like, here's what you missed. And you have what happened like during your live stream. And you you can have it on on YouTube, and people just see it's like, damn, that happened. I missed it for the live. Like, yeah, it's great that I got to see it after the fact, but you know, you got to be there, like, to get that full effect. Mm -hmm. So you you generate interest that way, and you always have to kind of really think out of the box. But I am one hundred percent on like, don't don't use restreaming services. Don't spread your attention and your time so thin because you think you're getting this bigger audience because you're on all these multiple platforms first of all if you're twitch affiliate and above we can't do that um yeah. but it just it doesn't it doesn't help you it hurts you more than it does anything else but mm -hmm. it's just having to think outside of the box about those things and those are those are there are ideas that i was thinking for myself and just trying to work in how to spend the time to go and make you know, my channel trailer here about what's coming up and setting those things up. Like, I th I thought I had everything set and then I heard about Soul Seraph coming out. I'm a huge ActRaiser fan. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yep, whatever was in this game slab here, I'm going to be playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change, change this up. But at least, like, I'm not saying that you have to have all your games that you show inside this little video montage that you make, but at least to give a good highlight and taste of what to expect and what people you know, might be interested in and in, in what you can bring to them. You have to kind of sell yourself in a way. Like you're yeah. advertising yourself, your brand, and you have to give people a reason to want to try you out. Yeah. That's why there's so many different types of commercials out there. And you're like, whoa, what is this for? I don't understand. Well, you're not the demographic they're hitting. Yeah. But there is a demographic that they're going after and it's working for them. 
Okay. So like when it comes to marketing your stream, you know, it's, you know, using YouTube as a platform to funnel traffic to your Twitch, um, it, like Twitter, uh, one thing, and I've started stressing this to Lehua and I noticed that she started doing it is taking like downloading some of your streams from Twitch, taking, or even making a highlight on Twitch and then downloading that and sharing that on Twitter with the link to your channel and some sh short description. And I've noticed, cause I, I told her like, I do feel like the videos draw more attention than just, you know, typing. Text. Yeah. Because there's that visual aspect. Um, we live in a, in a time where it's quick gratification and pretty colors. Yeah. Um, and that this this doesn't go for just streaming in general. This is just brand marketing. To pictures and videos will always garner more attention, uh, more ex impressions. I guess for for Twitter in in that sense than just text. Unless you're writing something really super witty, and that's actually really really hard. It's really hard to construct a very witty wordy um, Twitter. Uh, yeah. But yeah, putting your videos and your highlights on Twitter, huge benefits. Even even putting it on top of Instagram. Mm. Instagram's a really good one as well too. Uh, for me, the one thing that I've noticed is uploading your highlight video directly to Twitter rather than using the link. Yeah. So that one has a better return um in the sense of how likely they're going to they're going to watch it. If they have to click uh, the click on a link to be brought somewhere else to look at something, it's like you lost their attention already. That's yeah. 2 seconds too long. And if the video is too long, if it's like Twitter, Twitter, it's like I would say, don't have it longer than a minute. Yeah. Same thing with Instagram. Don't have it longer than a limit, than a limit unless it's something that's really, 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 really good. Because they're on their phone. They don't want to be sitting there on their timeline when they're missing all this other information and they have other stuff that's coming through on their timelines. They want it really quick, simple, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I'm going to like this. I'm going to share this. And then uh, you know what? I'm going to go and follow this person and check out their content on Twitter on Twitch. Mm -hmm. So that's actually that's actually really really smart to go and do that. And you know, it's just use all the social media that you have. The one that I have like a kind of a feeling towards that I'm not sure if I like is when people post selfies of like I'm going live. Like, I'd rather see a video of, like, you, you know, getting ready. It's like, okay, we're going to be live here. It's like, it's more engaging to me to know, like, okay, this is this is your preset of rather than you taking a selfie. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but okay. And it works. Actually, I think it works. I'm, I'm going to be this person. It works better for women than it does men when they take selfies and do that because most of the time they got that mic space angle going on. <laughs> but then you lure people into your channel with these false assumptions of what you are <laughs> just saying okay so i clearly need to learn more about twitch because i've started using highlights but as far as the event thing i haven't utilized that but I do want to get more deeper into streaming because ultimately, um, and I haven't publicly shared this, and this will probably be the first time I'm sharing it. I plan to attempt to go full time as a content creator end of this year. Um, when I was at E3, a lot of bigger content creators, a lot of voice actors, actors, developers were telling me, they're like, man, we really like your podcast. We really like your streams. You have what it takes to do it. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, I would love to. 
the biggest hindrance is time. I work 15, 16 hours, six days a week. You saw my tweet about yeah. like, having time. Yeah. <laughs> and wanting to take off. And see, that's why I wanted to segue into that. That was another topic. So, okay, I guess that's technically four topics. So, <laughs> I wanted to segue into that because it's like, that's the other biggest thing with content creation that I find difficult is time. Because, like, you know, one of the things that you say that I really feel is true is, like, when I was consistently working out, I had a shit ton of energy. And now I've become relying upon that yeah bang yeah and it's because you know i'm sitting at a desk for all these hours or i'm going to different sites and then when i get home i'm exhausted not so much as physically but like mentally mentally yeah and it's like i've got reviews like today when we finish I've got to review Blessing Virtual of the Night. I've got to review Crash uh, Team Racing Nitro. I've got to review Sonic Team Racing because they sent me a review code late. Um, 1980X, which if you love retro games, I'm not sure if you played it. That game is... Mm. Mm. That game is good. Um, and something else I forgot what I need to review. But I, oh, oh yeah, Samurai Shodown. And it's like, mentally, I know I need to do it. It's just like the process of reviewing, writing a script, getting to the camera, making sure whatever I upload on my website is good. And just, it's so taxing. Because I know if I had more time to do it, I'd do it so much better. It's just, yeah. I feel like I need a two-week vacation <laughs> that's how i feel that's exactly how i feel so i uh, i sit there at work because i i do i get paid I lead electronic tech and i manage all these other people and i get my work on done but there's nothing quite as satisfying as content creation something right. that you make from you make yourself yeah and you're passionate about and then people find it and love it with you like, that's so rewarding. It just doesn't pay all of your bills, especially when you live in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. You know? But um, I'm trying to just do that. And it's it's funny because a lot of the responses is like, you know, it's, it's a nice feeling to know that I'm not alone. I'm not the one, only one thinking that. And that I'm not the only one who has taken time off <laughs> to go and do this stuff. But, like, hearing people's response, like, yeah, I've taken out, you know, a couple of days and... I pump out, like, I make my videos and I pump them out and then back to work. I was like, but then you're going to have to take off another couple of days to pump out more content. Like, there's yeah. got to be a faster process. There's got to be something better. And, like, somebody's like, quit your job. I was like, if it could pay my bills, I would. Because I'm not only just doing my own personal stuff for my brand. I, I manage my boyfriend. Um, and it's pretty much almost his full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, as a, as a streamer, I mean, he does have a, a part time job just for the medical benefits because mm -hmm. you don't have medical as a content creator. Um, I have the show radio. I have girl streamers. Um, I do have another community of friends of us uh, that we are, are trying to get something off the ground too. So I have all of these things, and I have my family. I have a fifteen year old son, I, and I have my own household. I have to make sure that is in order. And it's just like, I don't sleep. <laughs> right? There's no time because the moment, because like the moment that you know you have some free time, what are you doing? You're behind your computer. You're like, okay, I can get this done. I can make this. I can edit this video. I, it's like, it doesn't stop. There really isn't truly a break. I mean, yes, you can just take a break. You can just stop, but, and, and have a breather. But how much does that hurt? You know, like you said, you, you were sick for two weeks and some of that really hurt your viewership because you had yeah. to take some time for yourself. Like, what does it do when people are so used to uploading content on top of YouTube? It's just like suddenly, like, where's, you know, where's your videos? Like, what's yeah. up? 
And that's like the dark side of being a content creator, of always having to have something regularly out there. That I feel is just like, you're almost sacrificing your soul for this in a way. It's it's right. weird. Right. It's it's weird because We're it's something that you want to do. It's something you want to do because you love it. You enjoy it. Yeah. But you're selling your soul to it at the same time because you're exhausted all the damn time <laughs> to make it happen. So it's like it's either I stop doing something I love and I go be an adult that pays my bills feeds me all these other things but you're also selling your soul and a part of you because it's not fun yeah. you're you're not enjoying it you're not having that rewarding feeling as you do as content creation but if you're trying to maintain the both of them you're essentially just kind of killing yourself because you know you're you're having to revert to alternative met methods to try to keep up yeah and i think that you know, it's great that you're hearing this, you know, encouraging words of people like you got it. And if you if you take that, if you're going to go and take that leap, I say go for it. Just, I mean, don't don't anybody that's listening to, to this advice right here. I'm not telling you to like if you have no viewership, <laughs> you have a fresh channel to just quit your job and go and to do this thing. That's not going to work for you right now. Make sure you have something established. Not saying that I'm saying for a gal over here that you know, yeah, if if that's what you need to do and you feel like if you had that extra time for yourself, that's what's gonna get you past that little hurdle, then go for it. Yeah. Like if okay. if work okay, if work allows you to take a sabbatical to be a little bit of a um I need a, a bit of a break because I know my work. I don't know if I will ever want to do it, but um, we can take like stress leave. I've had people who take stress leave and are a sabbatical and they like they were gone from work for six months and they came back and their position was still there for them. And they just went back to work right on. If mm -hmm. you have that option at work to give yourself some time to like, you know what, if see what I can do, if I can take off for three months and then like do whatever it is that you can and see where it takes off in those three months. And it's just like a huge positive return for yourself, for your happiness. Then you know what, you know, it's just like, okay, I just quit. And if not, I'm not saying you quit the content creation, but you know, okay, it's not quite where I wanted it to be. It's not ready yet, but have a better flow and process. Cause that's what I want for myself right now is I want a flow and process in which it's easier for me to cut and spice and do all these things. And it's not just for me. It's like, I need all of these templates ready for this stuff so that all I have to do is just insert my content, export, we're good. Yeah. I don't have that right now. It's like, okay, I have time to do this. I can do this really quick. No. It's like once in a blue moon. I have like Let's Play videos that I wanted to play because I can't play them on Twitch because it's prohibited, but it's okay on YouTube. Mm. <laughs> I have all of those pre-recorded, and it's like I haven't been able to edit them in like a year and a half. Wow. Because like all this other stuff that like comes up in my life or in my family, I think that like last, the ending of last year, I was like sick almost every month, like for one week out of the month. We had the flu that was kept cycling through my household. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So like the beginning of the week, it started off with my son. He brought the home this cold. Then I got it. That passed on to my boyfriend. The next time I went back to my son. Six months. It was just this ridiculous cycle. Couldn't I couldn't really do anything. I fell behind on a lot of stuff. But you know, it's it's hard. But I can't really quite quit my job. Yeah. That's see. I'm terrified to do that. And the the reason I'm terrified is because when Lehu and I got married um, three years ago, I, I worked for the same company, but I had a super shitty boss who didn't know anything about IT. 
but he was telling me what to do and didn't know how it works. You know how it is in IT. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I was so stressed out dealing with this guy that one day I just blacked out and I woke up on the ground and my nose is bleeding. Oh, my God. And I thought it was a one-off thing until it started happening. Like every time I dealt with this boss and I would deal with him at work, outside of work. And then it just started happening like over the course of a month, at least three to four times a week, I would black out. And then my, my doctor had me take off three months and she's like, it's your job. Your job is, is taking a real big toll on you. And I took the extended sick leave and then they cut my pay in half for that. And this is put it this way. Lehua doesn't, I make three times what she makes. She works retail. I work IT. That was a huge blow financially Mm -hmm. to us. And especially right after being married, that was not at all easy to deal with. And almost tore us apart, to be honest. Um, So for me, like when I'm hearing people tell me like when I was there that you have what it takes because okay January this year I had like 1200 subs on YouTube from January to March I jumped to 10k and my viewership went from several hundred per video to thousands every upload and it just started growing and growing and growing and growing and then I'm like, okay, I could do something with this. And then as people, like, when I went to E3 and then people were like, you should quit your job. But one of the YouTubers I'm good friends with, he's in the same situation I was in. Same industry, same exact thing. And he just up and quit his job. You know, his fiance was pregnant. They just went through They pulled out a loan. Now he's making more than I'm making per month. And... He's like, you just got to go all in with it. You've got all this stuff lined up. You got, you know, partnerships, sponsorships. You've got the channel. You've got the podcast. You've got this. And I hear it. But it's what if I do this and it doesn't work? Because I know I'm slowly killing myself with 15, 16 hour days. Mm -hmm. I know. I feel it. I, yeah. <laughs> so you always can think about it. There's there's always two sides to that. What if I do this and, you know, I, you know that I'm the primary income? There's also what if you don't? Like, what are you missing out on for yourself? Um, and I'm not a religious person person in that in that sense in a lot of ways i mean but you have to have faith in your content and in and in yourself um if other people see that in you and they're giving you that advice because i don't think anybody would give you lightly the advice of yeah quit your job go ahead and go ahead and do this if they didn't think that you were capable of it and it wasn't going to benefit you and a good way yeah and it's it is it is a very scary scary thing to just go into blind faith into yourself on an unknown and if you're seeing that type of growth you don't want to you don't want to slow that type of growth down you want to be able to continue producing that and and adding on to that and getting people to continuously wanting to come back I think if you can, if you have some uh, like a, a savings that you can fall back on, if you can take an extended leave from work and just give it your all and see where that goes, I say do it. Yeah. 
it's it's scary but it's it is rewarding because i believe i like your content is really great i did i watched your videos i really did i was like i'm like do i want to be on this show with this dude i don't know what <laughs> kind of dude this is who calls himself casanova <laughs> but um there's a story behind that name <laughs> But you do have genuine, real content that is unique. It is different. And people are obviously finding that and they're seeing that and they're following it. And if you want to continue doing it, you're, it's either, yeah, keep your job. And next thing you know, it's like, there's a health factor to that. I mean, we're technically still young, but that amount of stress is a lot of stress on your heart, a lot of stress on your mind. And you have to weigh out the health benefits of what makes you happy. Yeah. My recent uh, trip to my doctor for my yearly checkup. Uh, she, one of the questions she asked me after she looked at my test results, she's like, are you stressed? And I'm like, why? She said, your blood pressure is very high. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, it comes with the job. I'm the primary, I'm the backup, I'm the on-call. Like, I'm never off work. Um, and it it's it, it really is taking a toll on me. <laughs> I, I, I can't pretend. And especially in going to E3 and then coming back. I think going to E3 really opened my eyes to I really don't enjoy my job. I'm good at it, but I don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, <laughs> it's basically you quit your job and you you're gonna take this step. You're not you you just can't. That's the only thing that you can do is half ass it. Yeah, you're giving yourself this time, this opportunity to go into the unknown and see where it takes you. Go all out. Yeah. Everything that you've been, you have on your drawing board of like, oh, I would love to try this out and see how this is or create this type of content to see what it's going to be like. Do it. Yeah. Well, my contract ends in August. My mandatory contract when I took this analyst position. And and there's other see in the IT field. What's great about the IT field, and I don't know how the market is in Oahu, but you can always just be a consultant. You can be an on-call consultant. Yeah. And you make a little bit extra cash, and you're setting your own hours. If you can take it, take it. You can't. Well, you know what? Sorry, you, you can work that in. In which there's still a little bit of, you know, some income that's coming in that's regular. But on top of on top of that about going in, and I think I'm telling you, yeah, go ahead, do this. It's all great. <laughs> um, having a strong support system, because you mentioned how it almost separated it. It also has to do with having a partner that understands what struggles may come coming from that. That yeah. plays a huge factor of like knowing like, hey. So it might be some spam and rice for a little bit. <laughs> we can get the different flavored spams. Right. Maybe some Vienna sausages here and there. <laughs> but, you know, and, and preparing them to know what is to come. Like, hey, we might need to come back on some things. But this is something that I feel will benefit us hugely together. And um, that just... Obviously, that just comes from having, you know, good communication in a relationship. And this advice goes for everything in a relationship is having that communication to let your partner know where you're at mentally and emotionally and what you feel that you can do to improve that. Not just for yourself, but when you're a happier person and you aren't so stressed, you make a better partner. You make a better partnership and you enjoy life with your spouse so much more. Yeah. And to, to have that communication with them. And it, it really, it really is a huge thing because being a content creator is 
significant other, even if you're a content creator yourself, but if there's one that is like, that is their full-time job, that is what they do, it can be incredibly taxing and tolling because you have to be able to find that time. I'm like, okay, so you're always making these videos, always streaming, you're always editing to at least have like one day a week that is just like, it's just us time. No electronics, no game games, it's just us time. And so, see, that, that, that's one of the things too, is like with our work schedule, I'm on call, well, I'm technically working half Saturday and then off quotations on Sunday. She's only off during the weekday. What you saw earlier when she came in, that's the most we typically see of each other throughout a week. It's hard. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it's like, she's the one who's telling me, look, go full time. We'll use savings. We'll get a loan. Just do it. And I'm the one like, I don't know. She's like, grow a pair and do it. <laughs> <laughs> She's on your page and that's a good support system. That's a good way to know that, you know what, I have, you know, my wife's support to do this. She has faith in you. The only one that's missing is your faith in yourself. Yeah. You're you're helping me now. I didn't know because you were we therapist. human being human beings, we have a way and tendency to start overthinking things. Yeah. And it's good to think ahead and think about the pros and cons. But when you're lingering and you sit on it, you start to develop more self-doubt. Like, I don't know, you know, it's like, I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know who's going to watch it. it. It goes back to people who are wanting to get into YouTube. Oh, I have to save enough to have all of this equipment. I don't know if I can do it because it's so expensive to have all of these expensive cameras and video editing software that they psych themselves out to not do it. Yeah. You're psyching yourself out now to not take that just one extra step to go beyond. That's what you're doing to yourself right now. Yeah. Yeah. In, in this moment, I'm doing that. I didn't know you were a therapist. <laughs> yeah, where's the wisdom? I wear many hats. <laughs> <laughs> Many hats. I'm versatile. I can tell. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, I mean, that advice really goes for a lot of people and a lot of things that they want to do. It's like you take if you want to take a promotion, if that if it requires you to move somewhere else or any of those things, it's like we psych ourselves out because we feel not confident enough in ourselves. I don't know where that comes from, but there's some point in in our history as like just a society where we start having some self doubt in ourselves and our capabilities, you yeah. wouldn't be offered that job opportunity if you weren't good enough for it. You wouldn't be able to meet these voice actors or, you know, developers if they didn't think you were worth their time, but obviously you are, you're worth it. They're giving you this advice. This is what they think of your content and they believe in you. That's that's huge. Because I don't think I don't think there's there's some people who are going to give you bad advice, but people in the industry that work hard and they know the struggle of trying to work their way up as voice actors, work their way up as developers so starting from QA. They had to go that extra step to show that what their talent and what they were good at was worth people giving them a chance you need to give yourself a chance you owe it to yourself you have a point <laughs> okay we'll see <laughs> oh, no 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 there's <laughs> not there's no we'll see because that's still some self-doubt we shall Okay, is that better? Yeah. We shall, okay. All right. Um, Don't cry on me now. 
Only only crying I do, I shared shed the tears, okay? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to ask uh, two, uh again, two last questions. <laughs> always two. It's always two. I can't count people. We started <laughs> off this not knowing how to count, okay? So we're just maintaining <laughs> consistency because this man goes three and then he goes, <laughs> No, 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 that's one. Three. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> so this whole like two more topic things here. <laughs> I'm assuming it's just a ten. <laughs> it's gonna be like a four part podcast. <laughs> Um, okay, so what I want to, to ask you one other last two questions. Uh, what is your take on content creators in Hawaii? Like, are there a lot of us out here? Are there a lot of us that are actually working with the industry as far as like tech and gaming? What do you think? What do you see? <clears throat> so, there is a community called Twitch Hawaii. Mm-hmm. All um, Hawaii content creators that I know of so far. Um, are you, are you going small. to the gathering tomorrow? No. Hmm. I'm not. I'm on, a, I'm on Kauai. If I was, I'd be all over there now. I would have been over there. We could be recording this live in person. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, I'm here. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I won't be able to. Um, so they have there as far as well-known and bigger partnered ones. I think there's three. I don't follow them. I think one's called Island Grown, I think. He does a lot of mobile streams. Apparently, mobile streaming is like a, such a huge thing on whatever platform it is. Yeah, but heard, yeah. overall, compared to all the other states and countries, we ha- I think Hawaii has a pretty small pool of content creators, to be honest. Um. Let's put it this way. On Kauai, there are two streamers. Me and my boyfriend. Um, everybody else has given it a try. They didn't like it. And um the and, is they tried. Yeah, they tried. They tried. <laughs> they know it wasn't for them. They like to they like to watch it instead. Um, other than that, there there really isn't. We don't have a gaming scene. We have a more of a tabletop scene. And the people that know about Twitch know me and my boyfriend, even though I don't know them. It's really interesting. Very interesting. Like the guys like we only have one GameStop here. And the owner or not owner, the manager there he knows everything he'll scold his workers like you don't follow them you don't watch their streams like why aren't you kind of thing it's all the gaming <laughs> community itself is relatively small and we kind of all know each other but they don't they really don't stream and the fact that like there is this it's it's really super adorable there is this kid he's wearing his twitch hoodie mm-hmm. this kid does not even know who he is but he wanted he's like you know what Twitch is? Oh my God. And he's like, yeah, I'm a partner. Oh my God. <laughs> Can I take a picture with you? I was like, holy crap. And the kid was like, so incredibly surprised. Like he treated him like he's like this celebrity. And I'm like, have you ever watched a stream? Like, no. But the fact that there is a Twitch partner who lives on island and wanted to eat hot dogs from his parents food truck amazed him and i'm like (laughs) wow and we went to i think it was like several months later Mm. like that we came back and we recognized the kid and everything like that and the boy was so incredibly just starstruck or something like that like he was so nervous to come out because he's helping his parents like like cooking in their kitchen and he's like he came back can I can I bring him the food myself? And like the kid just stopped everything he was doing, disrupted the entire food process flow there, so that he could bring us our food himself. I was like, "Yo, what what is up?" Um, <laughs> my at my son's school, 
my son does not like to bring up my streaming, but his friends find it up because on Instagram, you know, I'll tag my son in our Instagram photos and they'll see that he was tagged in something. They'll go and check out my stuff. And then apparently there is a entire group of weebs, as my son likes to tell them. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with weebs, kid. But all they do is watch my videos. Oh, wow. And they will lurk in my channel. They will never talk, which is so bizarre to me. They just lurk in there. And then they'll tell my son about it. Or they'll watch my VODs. Or they'll, they'll snoop in on my Twitter, whatever it may be, and tell my son about it. And my son's like, it is so weird, mom. Like, it's creepy. And I thought he was kidding. And I started asking his friends. So I'm like, so what about this weave group? I'm like, the ones that watch you? Okay. Apparently my son was telling me the truth. <laughs> They're like, yeah, all they do is just watch you. In class? And the thing is, I'm not streaming during school hours. It's always at night. So I'm like, that is really weird. Can you tell your friends if they got Twitch Prime? <laughs> 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 so it's like, it, it's a thing. And it's like, I asked them, I was like, why are they so surprised? And it's like, because they, they don't have anybody local that's streaming. Yeah. Like, they're, it's, it's a, this bizarre thing to them still. Like, it's not, they're not capable of it or it's just not a thing. So, like, I wish there was a bigger community. I'm so happy to be recording this with you because I was like, tell my boyfriend, it's like, it's another Hawaii content creator. Like, one that actually works hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they, he isn't on some Hawaii time here. He's like, <laughs> kick back and laid back. He's like, he works hard. I was like, I was excited about it because Twitch Hawaii is great, but it's a very laid back thing. And, um, it's like, for me, it's like, I, I like, I like this process. I like being a part of the community and, and seeing what's going on and what's like, what somebody that's like creating that's new and introducing it to, you know, whatever platform they're using. Like, I love watching creators grow and change and adapt and all this other stuff. I, that's amazing to me. And Twitch Hawaii is great, but I just feel like it's always like more of, friends hanging out with friends kind of thing which isn't bad but that's, that's not what i want yeah that's uh and, and not to throw shade at twitch hawaii or at other groups that are out here uh especially our trying to be fgc out here um i just feel like too much of it is like exactly what you said it's friends hanging out and this is why, you know, talking to you and having gone to E3, meeting other creators, big and small, being around people that are hungry for it, just as hungry for it, if not more so than me, inspires me to want to work that much harder. And I love I'm... that feeling. <laughs> you know, it's yes. like... And then when I'm around, like, when I came back to Hawaii and then I'm around people that are just doing the same thing as routine, we go here, we hang out, we have our scene, and it's like, I want more than just here. I want a global audience, and thankfully I have a global audience, and it's like, but I'm not satisfied with that. I want to platform other people. I want to help other people come up. I want to work with this company. I want to pick the brain of this person. I want more like i'm never satisfied and it's just being around i think it's kind of the culture out here or just us as islanders in general is just laid back take it easy and it's like that works here but not in the grander scope of everything in the rest of the world or better yet in the scope of what we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. so and, and there are some rare gems. So the fighting scene you bring up, um, that's run by Video Gamers Hawaii. Keith, he's awesome. Yeah. He is a very thirsty. He's he works really, really hard, and he yeah. he's trying his absolute best. Yeah. And I feel like he's almost like a one man army. Yeah. Um, PC gamers also trying to do something. They they were awesome. And for the both of them, I've I've told the both of them if there's something I can do to help, yeah. let me know. 
you don't have to pay me. I'll, I'll fly up to Oahu on my own dime. So I was there in Kauai Con a couple months ago um, because Kyler over at PC Gamers, he's like, hey, we're looking for hosts. Um, and anybody can help during the tournaments. I was like, yo, sign me up. I'll be there. Yeah. And he's all like, it's not paid. I'm like, give me a badge. That's it. Yeah. He's like, okay, badge it is. And man, I don't, do I want to say this out loud? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> this said filter right there. <laughs> and it was great. It was great. Kyler has an amazing work ethic. Yeah. Like, I love watching him hustle. And it was amazing that some of the people, not all of them, a lot of them were pretty good at the hustle and, and wanting to be there and hosting. And some were, like, too drunk to come in. You promise X amount of time to help out with XYZ. Do it. Yeah. Like, come on. Uh, ooh, these, these, these elements are trying to grow the gaming scene to make it legitimate so that we are put on the map and considered to everything else. I mean, we don't even get to have our own professional football team. We got to have something. <laughs> right? <laughs> anything. We're trying for anything here. Um, and it's just like, oh, okay, that sucks. So, like, I sat there. I, I, I hosted for League. I don't play League. But you know what? I'll, I'll be here. You know what? You need a host because someone couldn't be here and couldn't make it. You know what? I'm going to try my best. And I, like, I, I hunted down a friend of mine. I was like, dude, you play a lot of League. Give me, like, a quick, like, 101 real fast right here. Like, everything <laughs> you could possibly download into me in the next, like, 20 minutes. Um, because I'm I'm that serious about wanting to grow the Hawaii scene, and and whatever capacity that may be, I know that the whole esports arena and stuff that it's trying to grow. UH is trying to have you know their their own esports team. There's a lot of promise, but very little people with the drive to help push it through and continue to advertise it. And I yeah. just like I can't I can't work with a team that or want to be around a community that is either you know they, they just don't like you're saying they're not hungry for it yeah and it sucks that you got to go to other events and meet other people who aren't based out in hawaii to get that yeah and i mean i i still love and appreciate those people um going out into those events because it refuels me it yeah. it regenerates my soul to like yeah okay Go back home, got this, got this great idea, work on this. I got some feedback on stuff of what I should change. Like it feels good. And then you come back, you're doing it, but you don't have the people surrounding you to help regenerate that to continue. It's just, it's just you trying to push yourself to continuously do it. And there is, um, there's one person that's based out on Kauai who's done huge things. Um, but the thing is, is that he had to leave here to do it. Uh, he's he's from Kauai and he started off. He's a lot of more of the marketing side of the industry. Mm -hmm. And I think right now he's working at Blizzard. I think. I think I know who you're talking about. Chad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's from Kauai. Yeah. and you know he's done he's he's growing and he continues and he's like he's he's still in his 20s and you know he had he uh he took a leap on himself on going again leap for himself you there <laughs> 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 to you know change that island mentality what people like think of us as just being laid back and he just pushed for something for himself and he's loving what he's doing yeah so that's just one incredible success story out of how many people live in Hawaii. Yeah. It's like, there, there's gotta be more of us. We don't have anybody as a YouTube realm. So, you know, <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be that person. Oh, <laughs> no pressure or nothing. <laughs> fine. Um, but it's with those he's he's actually encouraged people like he'll always post on top of his instagram you know from a small island boy 
to, you know, live in this big city, but he's still humble and true. And he has that message of like, just because, you know, you grow up in this small island who it's not, technology really isn't our thing. Doesn't mean you can't go on to do bigger things. Yeah. And he always comes back home. He always checks on his mom. He still has that island mentality, but he also has a big drive. To do what he loves. And I think that's a great message. For Hawaii content creators. We need more of that. And it's like. You know in my job. There's a. There's a call center. uh, Lady who has a son. Who she says. She's like all he does is play video games. I'm like is he good at it? She's like yeah you know he plays. Uh. I think she said he plays like Apex Legend and he she said he's always killing everyone. He always wins. And I'm like, why didn't he go into like streaming like as a side hobby? She's saying, I keep telling him he'll never get anywhere with that with that gaming thing. And a lot of the women and men that work at the hospital have kids that are into gaming and you know, I hear that often that they they're trying to tell them that there's nothing in it. And I tell them, I'm like, I'm in the gaming industry. I see what it's like. It's booming. If your kid can do that and do it for fun, there is something that they could potentially carve out for themselves. That's not saying, like, ignore school and all this, but you could always, you know, something on the side. And I, it's just something I've noticed, especially out here, there's the push against that. And I... I don't understand it. Or, or I don't know if you get this, because I get this all the time. Um, I've got people telling me that uh, I don't cater to the Hawaii audience. And that I use Hawaii or being in Hawaii to gain attention on myself. So I understand that narrative. I have certain feelings about it. I don't, I'll say from Hawaii, mm-hmm. but kind of like you, I don't kind of use it as an advantage. Like, to me, yeah. it feels weird. Like I don't, for me, I'm like, I'm not going to be like, pay attention to me because I'm from Hawaii. I've never been that person. Yeah. And the first time that ever happened to me, not content related, is when I moved, when I moved from Hawaii to California. Um, Everybody's like, oh, you're from Hawaii. Do you do this? Do you do that? Do you speak Hawaiian? Do you do the hula? An aggressive? Nah. <laughs> no. Like, I don't. But I, I, I didn't want to. Like, I was like, no, it's like this. Another girl. Mm-hmm. Another girl from Hawaii. Edrisa Lopez. I called that one out. Ooh. She, uh, she used that as like a full advantage. And I knew she was lying. She's like, yeah, I do the hula. And we like, I like to climb the coconut trees and get my own coconuts to drink because the stuff at the store isn't very good. I, look, I remember looking at her. I was like. <laughs> no, you're lying. No. Like, I knew she was straight up like, she like, she, but she took it. It was like, she used it for her popularity because she was, I don't know the word for it. I know there is a word for it, but she was kind of just using Hawaii as this way of like, please pay attention to me and Mm -hmm. all these great things because it's Hawaii and I can do it. And our fish's name is and I can say it. I'm like, can you spell it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like i'm not the type of person like i'll say it but i i don't i don't want i don't i don't feel like i advertise it of like yeah pay attention to me it's of all all this other stuff but i know how you say like hawaii's number one podcast we don't have a lot of podcasters you know and when it, to me it's like a really good way to challenge people no it's actually a really good way to challenge people to increase that like there's some people's like oh you think you got the hawaii's number one podcast you know what 
I'm going to make one or I'm going to improve this and I'm going to be Hawaii's number one podcast. It encourages people to want to make content, to put their stuff out there, to take it up another level. Yeah. And I, I that's that's what it is, is like, it's, it's not like you're dangling and it's not like you're recording your podcast and you just like, I don't know, doing the haka before like is a showing. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the intro to your videos, you know? <laughs> it's not like you, you're stopping, you know, the fire dancers along Waikiki as they're lighting the torches, um, you know, to do a fire dance for you as an intro. You're not abusing what Hawaii's culture is for your personal gain. <clears throat> and... I, I really have such a distaste for people who who do that, who just abuse the culture of Hawaii for that reason. Yeah. Like them Hallies that go back home and like we did this. We had an authentic luau. Right? <laughs> I had I had Hawaiian barbecue. From where? From L and L. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We are the shadiest people. Right now. It's like, oh, I had, I had an authentic luau. Where? From Zippies. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Speaking of authentic, like, like, is is that is that whole thing? Like, I, 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 I just, I don't, I don't do that. I just, I don't, I don't abuse that privilege. I respect the culture that I was raised in. Yeah. To not take advantage of it, I don't. It's private. If I, if I, <laughs> I don't even know how to properly say that. I know, I do know, I do know somebody, a content creator, and he purposely did it. He told me, I respect it. He was open about it with me that um, he used the advantage of what Hawaii is to draw people in, but not in a so much a disrespectful way, you know, in a sense. But he really did like has the whole aloha thing going on and i'm like that is so not you he's like yeah but people eat that shit up <laughs> I was like, all right i respect that <laughs> oh my god yeah i mean it, that's that's really the extent that i you know i sorry call myself hawaii's number one podcaster and then like you said we don't really have a lot out here and then most of the ones out here are not known outside of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and too, like, I, I've had some people challenge me, they're like, oh, how, how, how can you call yourself that? I'm like, when you have people in multiple industries, from the gaming industry, the acting industry, voice acting, political, and more, on my channel, spreading like they'll come on or they'll go out and they start spreading the word around and then i go to other states or other countries and people know who i am they know about my show that kind of says something <laughs> you know it's like at that point i'm not really doing anything more than just seeing it at the beginning of my podcast or the beginning of my youtube saying hey this is my podcast but other people are seeing it it's speak it into existence yep pretty much so. okay um the last question oh this time Topic. is an actual one it's an actual right. one there's, not there's a, a two one. it's a one <laughs> <laughs> oh um so let's talk about podcasting let's talk about the show radio podcast how you and andrew alliance teamed up how that came to be the show itself the things you guys have done and your go xlr which i am being for <laughs> I, I i want one Things okay it is but it's we'll get we'll get to that so um the show radio which has been around since 2009 um okay. andrew used to do it a lot solo by himself and he would have guests and he's had some amazing guests i think the one that i like the most rest in peace monty Owen. um oh, what yeah really 
Oh, yeah. Man. Rest in peace. And he's had he's had some amazing guests um, offline. I think the last one, my last late favorite one, is that he had Professor Broman. And wow. um, and, and and he used to do that. I was a guest on on his show. I think before he hit a, episode 100, I think I was a guest. I don't remember my exact episode number, but I've always admired him from afar. Hmm. Um, there's only two podcasts I ever really really listened to. Um, way back when, and that would be Gamer Tag Radio and the show radio. But I always supported what they were doing. And I think, like, I, I, I don't know. I maybe I should ask him what the process of, of where he decided that he needed to have a co-host. Mm -hmm. But I remember he like he messaged me. He messaged me on Discord one day, super random, and he's like, "Hey, you got time to talk?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure. What's up? Um, I'm on my way home. You want to call me on Discord?" Yeah, so I was like talking to him on Discord. He was like, I had um, our friend, our mutual friend, Simply Andrea in the call and we we're all just chatting and hanging out. And he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm learning how to use Discord and organize it. And, you know, I'm thinking about changing up the show. I'm like, oh, yeah, really? That sounds that sounds great. I mean, you've been doing it this way for so long. You know, it's, you know, what's up? He's like, I, I just feel like there needs to be a change. I'm like, oh, OK, cool. So what do you think? He's like, I think I'm going to add a co-host. I'm like, oh, that wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, I'm just like driving and he was like talking and then he's like, I really want you to be my co-host. I'm like, me? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. And before that, there was, I was like a guest. I was one of like 10 or 11, the worst podcast I've ever been on. Never again, never, ever again. Um, And I was like, I almost sworn it off because... Like, I've been a guest on a couple others. Some really interesting ones, too, that I always thought were fun and quirky. And weren't necessarily gaming-related, mm -hmm. but it was still fun. It was just a guest. <clears throat> and um, so for him to come on, I was like, yeah, you know, if, you know, we'll, we'll try out a couple. And we'll see what, you know, your audience thinks. Because they spent the last, like, seven years or eight years already with just you. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know how they're going to feel, like, when you have somebody that's regularly on with my own opinions and we're, we're kind of have different opinions on things too and he was like it'll be fine i'm like we'll just we'll just feel it out we won't make it anything official i was like very certain of like we're not gonna make i'm just gonna be the special guest for a couple mm -hmm. and just to feel it out and we tried different things too um in that process and i think i was like two months in it was just before e3 uh, he's like i was like so what are you thinking i'm like i like doing it, it was, it's fun it's different and th this is before we ha even had videos just all audio and it's pre-recorded <clears throat> nobody ever heard us really live and um i was like okay we can do this and we had a very very structured news thing where it's like bullet points we're going down and and talking about opinions um very very slightly and it started to change where it was more topics in which we were passionate about on certain things that came out in gaming and it was a very opinion back and forth. Let's have a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. And our structure for it is okay. His structure for me on it is um, I never get to see the topics. I can add stuff to it, but I don't get to see what we're talking about until maybe 30 minutes before we go live. Oh, wow. So, it, it like it'll be things that he thinks will be great things, and I I can always add on into it like on the fly if there's something throughout the the week or whatever that I thought was great and I want to talk to him about, I'll just add it to it. But really, it's just like our feelings and thoughts in those moments, mm -hmm. and that's what it has turned into <clears throat> now. And it's just having those conversations and those thoughts and and just like thinking about it in real time. Without having to like, here, this is like, it's Wednesday. Here's what we're going to talk about. And you're already formulating what you're going to see, say. And it's kind of almost pre-scripted already. Mm -hmm. Which takes away from that authenticity of, you know, having these conversations. Yeah. So, I think I jumped in at a episode uh, 340, I think. And I think we're at 501, I think. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. And we got a lot of compliments um, about, you know, how our chemistry is on being able to talk and that there's people that have tried to try to 
make that happen as well too and it just doesn't work out yeah um for me i think it's just it's based off of personality i well my personality i can pretty much talk to anybody Mm. like i don't i don't have a problem like i get nervous sometimes um i still get nervous on having to do interviews live and I think one of my interviews, my first interview for E3 this year. Um, Keanu not, Reeves. <laughs> what? Keanu Reeves. Oh, no, no. I wish I could have been interviewed Keanu Reeves. I probably, it probably wouldn't be an interview. It's like, hey, can we talk? He'd say yes. And I'll just sit there staring at him for like 30 minutes. And the, the interview and the conversation would probably be in my head. <laughs> we're just being honest here. <laughs> no, oh, uh, I did. I did an interview. I did a. I didn't do a video one, but I did an audio one, and it was with Friend Times. It was for their uh, mobile game Yokai Kitchen, and mm. I could tell that the person I was going to be talking with, he was he was nervous because mm-hmm. English is not his first language, and it was barely his second language. <laughs> so he was trying his best. And I could tell he was nervous, which made me nervous. And mm-hmm. then we were both having this nervous laugh. And I was like, right in the middle of the recording, he's like, no, he's like, I- I'm so nervous. I was like, you're nervous. I'm more nervous. So think of it the other way. I'm nervous to talk to you. And he's like, you are? Yes. And like, he was perfectly fine after that. And I was nervous. I was. And I have, I have a way of being able to, and I pride my, I really do pride myself on it. Um, I think it's one of, my strong points in person in my personality is that i i am capable of being open with people and having people drop their guards down long enough for them to know that the conversation we're having isn't anything for you to be scared or nervous about it's not anything for you to be close about and i am friendly i like i am pretty good at matching vibes with other people to understand their body language to understand their mindset to have these conversations and I, I think that can like plays a part into other people wanting to have a co-host. It, it is really hard. It's either you, either you find somebody that you've known for a long time and you've already established that relationship, or you find somebody that is capable of being able to adapt to the situation and the people, which is what I do. I, I adapt to the people that I'm around. I'm not, not changing who I am. But I can instantly tell, like, okay, so this person doesn't like these types of personalities. I'll make sure not to make comments or act and react or my body language displays that because it's going to make them uncomfortable mm-hmm. or um, insecure. And I don't want people to feel like that. I want them to feel secure that they're okay around me. And um, it's very easy to do that with Andrew. We have a very open conversation and even even offline, like, we'll, we'll message and check on each other and our families and see what's going on. and. The only thing that we have a hard time is that he's on the East Coast. So there's a six hour difference. Yeah. And, and that that's like that that's the hardest thing. And he's been an incredible mentor for me because podcasting, he's been doing it for so long and I've had bad experiences in podcasting. So for him, he does a lot of the hard work on things. And you know, straight off the bat, he told me like from day one, he's like, Whatever contacts I have, my contacts are your contacts, and we're we're gonna do this. Mm-hmm. And he's he's introduced me to some of the most amazing people. I I still think to this day, even though I don't think I'm I'm quite quite on his radar, um, Michael Proctor. I got to meet him, and um, it was at his networking party the first year I went to E3, and I was like, that's, that's Michael Proctor, and like next thing I know, I was like, this is his party. Oh. <laughs> And um, I, I, I was there and I, I sat and I shook his hand. I got to tell him and, you know, I was appreciative of the work that he's done and that, you know, all the, um, the advice and the analyzing that he does, I listened to. And I was just like, that man is the gaming stock market right there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I hope that one day I'm going to be that name then that he like remembers because he kind of remembers the face, but not really the name. So I'm still working my, my way up there. Um, but at that party, I, I got it. I meet other people that I admire, um, like Rod Ferguson and Cliff Bozinski. And I was just like, 
uh, to be able, like, I didn't get to interview them, but to be able to tell somebody as a fan and as a professional, it's like your your game, Gears, has done a lot for me, and what like it's offered and and the release has provided me during hard times of my life, and to just just talk to them about like just things and and just where their mindset is and what's going on in their lives. That's that means huge to me. It's like wow. But even even with those like. Uh, Andrew has introduced me to Gamertag Radio. I got to meet them in person. And Danny Pena, uh, Paris Lilly, and Peter Toledo, when it comes to podcasting and what I think is successful, I think of Gamertag Radio. Like, I love, I love my show, the, the show Radio. Mm-hmm. But I found them first, and <clears throat> I've loved everything that they've done. And the thing is, is with Danny Pena, and uh, he was the very first person when I was coming in. Oh, and Malik Forte. They were the first two people who ever asked me really super early on. It's like, you should really, really look into doing this stuff. You should really look into content creation. And this is also partially why I'm telling you that you should listen to that advice and people reaching out to you. Because from a personal experience, I've had these two incredibly men. And, and this Malik Forte wasn't, he didn't even, he wasn't even the host for anything for the Overwatch stuff or anything like that. I, for, I completely forget the magazine he was writing for. And he asked, yeah, he reached out to me um, during that time because he wanted to have me listed as one of the 10 up and coming women content creators. I didn't get put into that article. Because I didn't feel like I deserved it. He, him and Danny Pena were the only two people that offline and online that believed in anything I did. And I had more people who had negative thoughts on it. Like the person that I was interested in at that time. He like I told him I was like oh okay so there's this article and I'm gonna be you know he's considering he would he wanted to ask me if I would be on this list in this article of up and coming email content creators and like their their first response to me is what number are you gonna be I'm like I I don't know I don't care it's in the it's ten who cares and it, they got into my head as like unless you're number one there's no point what. And it's like, you know, it's like, maybe they have a point, like, like, what have I done to, to deserve this? And like, um, cause at that time, the only thing I was really doing is I was doing, um, the extra life and mm-hmm. I was uh, streaming for uh, the stuff. I was writing game reviews for a website called gaming angels. Mm-hmm. And that's the only thing that I was, I was kind of really doing. And I was making like YouTube contents on how to use for, um kind of streaming actually during that time and i was like i just had nobody who had faith in me so i didn't have faith in myself because i was like oh you know what you're kind of right i started to believe those things that people were telling me Mm -hmm. and it sucked and i think it still sucks to this day because i don't think malik dislikes me Mm -hmm. but it is definitely disappointing you know have somebody that just kind of like you know i reached out to you i want to do this and you didn't want to you like you like i kind of like i didn't know how to respond to him Mm -hmm. so i i kind of just said no thank you and that was it that was there was no reasoning there was no follow-up nothing and I feel like it was that moment that I kind of ruined our friendship that we had at that time. And this is nothing on him. I understand it. I fully do. I got to meet him and see him for the first time um, last year. Um, I saw him the first year I was at E3. And I didn't know how to formulate the words. Like, it just, like, he saw me. And I, like I wanted to go up and say something. I'm like, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> like, there is a six-year gap in between that what happened then, the last time you actually talked to me, and then. Oh, 
And like, I saw him last year. I saw him. We took a picture and I was like, dude. And he's like, his, his response to me was like, well, it took you long enough. What? It, it, like, wow. no, no, don't take it as, as, no, 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 it as no. a bad thing. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. I get it. It was, it was pretty much like you finally see, like, you could have been at this point six, seven years ago when I was trying to ask you and help you kind of thing. And it's just like, that hit me. And I was like, yeah. He's like, don't make it go this long ever again. It was like a really quick conversation. It was like that, that was heavy. That hit me. That was like, damn. Yeah, because like I feel like right now, like in those mistakes, and when I'm giving out those advice of like don't don't screw over those early relationships that you're building as you're on, because you're having to dig yourself out. For me, I'm still trying to dig myself out of certain things because of choices, because of the lack of faith in myself and the support that I didn't have around me then. And so when I got to meet Danny Pena, um, I was like, to be honest, I wanted to talk to him about this so bad. I had to have a drink in myself before I did it because I was so nervous because he was a lone person. He would, he would, you know, message me on DM, check up on me. And he would, he'd, you know, he'd ask me about, you know, what did you, you didn't do this. He, you know, what, what do you want to do? And I never had this answer for him because I just felt like I wasn't worth it. And I was just like, yeah, I'm fine. It's great. You know, it's just like whatever answer. So he eventually stopped doing that. He eventually stopped messaging me. It's not like he, he blocked me. We still follow each other, but it, it's, it's more of like he stopped wasting his time on somebody who wasn't investing themselves, which was me. Mm -hmm. And at my practice party, we're sitting down on the couch. And I was like, I had my vodka crown. I had one vodka crown in me. I was like, okay, I got this. I can have this conversation. And I sat, I sat with him. I was like, you know, you have always been this role model of somebody that I look, I look up to online. You've done amazing things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's this one point where I knew you had faith in me and that felt good, but I didn't have faith in myself. I didn't believe in myself and you did. And I felt like I ruined that friendship or that French, that relationship with you by letting you down and not, doing what I could and not putting my best foot forward and it's just like he like he sat and he listened to the whole thing he's like you really felt like that I was like yeah because it's like it means a whole lot to me the fact that you know me who's not doing much is trying to figure it out learning it and just like wanting to get into this to have somebody like you who's well established who the industry knows you by name and like it's just like you can't go anywhere without anybody knowing who you are you were the first podcaster to start attending e3 you were the first podcaster who brought gaming content from the showroom floor to people's ears that very same day you are that person that's huge to me and then to have you going and believing and asking me these things and following up and me to not kind of follow through and then you stop, like, I got that message loud and clear. And now I'm like, I'm sitting here. This is my first E3. I got I to gotta do this stuff. Like, it means a lot. And, you know, he's, he's still this great mentor, the person that I still look up to. And he's done so much more since then. Um, and he's always encouraging it and it's like he'll he'll never tell you that you're not capable of something yeah and i i hope that one day that i can be somebody that's even like half of him to be able to have like that kind of impact on somebody's life like he had on mine yeah. and it, it's not just him like I look up to Paris. I look up to Peter. They're, they are amazing men. And I think there's very few and far between in the industry or any industry, really, where you have men that don't treat you less than. 
They treat you as your equal, even though their show and everything they do is so, so far beyond. Um, and they've done so much and accomplished so much. Um, they don't, they don't treat you like your, their show is, you know, far superior than yours. Like, you, you know what? They'll, they'll be like, Hey, you got time to record? Let's go record, you know? Mm. And I think they're just, they're just amazing for that for just not people who are coming into it, but like just younger generation. Uh, Danny Pena has a, a podcast documentary um that shows the you know the founding and the the growing of the show radio and just where he's been and what he's done um i think for minorities and the the poc that is such a great message to offer for younger generations of like look this dude had just his recorder and a mic and he went in and he just started doing this stuff because he believed and this is what he wanted to do and he was happy and that that is his job that is what he does so it's just like like being able to be on the show radio and to see messages from people like oh i love your content i, I love what you guys did i love this you know i love the chemistry and like this is awesome or even from our um cyberpunk video interview to hear the positivity of of like you know, we don't see cyberpunk uh, as this racist game um, that this outlet is trying to make it out to be or what people feel it is. Um, his Twitter, like he re we recorded a video immediately after we got out from cyberpunk. I look like I hated it because I was in pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Internally, I loved it. Just outwardly, I was in pain. So I looked like I was like a full hater and I just like, like, bleh. but um. You know, it was a huge thing that you have like these Haitians, which Andrew is Haitian. That is his first language and Creole. And he understood. He was like so excited that his people had representation in this game. And that was a genuine, real reaction. 100%. Mm -hmm. And, you know, CD Cyberpunk just like retweeted that. And people loved it because they're seeing, they're hearing this narrative from this other outlet that it was racist, that it was poor representation, all this other stuff in this narrative. But then you have an actual Haitian, actual black male, not just one, not just two, but three of them in this video that loved what was presented to them. They loved that the representation was there and they felt it was real and it was genuine. And that had an impact on so many people just watching that to know it's like, okay, I'm hyped now. I'm excited. And you have that type of influence to, to give to people. I love that about being on top of the podcast. Even if it's not my voice, it's the voice of what our show is and what it stands for. And I think that's, it's great for me to be a part of that. And I'm always so lucky that, um, you know, Andrew invited me on cause I call him my mentor too. And he hates it. He makes him feel weird. Like he's some like ancient, I don't know, being over here because I call him my mentor because he guides me in these things and he's helped me find my own voice. Mm -hmm. He's helped me get me out of my shell and feel more confident in the words and my thoughts about what I feel in certain things. So it's just, it's been a great experience. And I love the people that I've gotten to meet and, and I don't, I don't want it to stop. Anyway. We haven't recorded in the last couple of weeks. We had some things happen. Like we took a little bit of break after E3 because you kind of need, you kind of need a break from E3. <laughs> you need like some time to decompress. I have not recovered. I'm still jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, exhausting. It is. It is. So I think I think we're recording tomorrow, okay. and I don't even know what we're going to be covering or talking about. I'm sure there's a lot. There's like two weeks of stuff, and we didn't even do like a rehash of our our stuff. I think he's still like editing some E3 content as well too. <laughs> um, but that that's how it came to be, and that's how we continue to grow. And it's nice because we we also challenge each other, um, creatively, mentally, emotionally to to get ourselves like kind of out of the out of the comfort zone so we can continue to grow don't play it safe all the time and 
I like that. I like being challenged. Yeah. Because if, you, if you're not challenged and you just fall into that comfort zone, you're never going to grow. You're never going to adapt. You're never going to try to get, you know, improve as a full-time content creator on YouTube, right? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. I'm, pre- I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at this circling yes. back around, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm really good at that. <laughs> god. Yes. Yes, people. Yes. Oh. Well, um at least you know now why it is that I'm circling back around that because I made that mistake. Which means I need you to talk to Lehua because she's kind of in the same position you were in. And I think coming from me, maybe it's too harsh the way I put it. I think she needs to hear it from someone else. Like, go in and do this or critiquing with content. Because I'm just a blunt person to any and everyone. And I realize that my delivery is not always the best. So. Oh, mine isn't either sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm glad you shared that. And I, that really was inspiring for me. So I thank you for that. Now, as far as the other part of talking about podcasting, I'm jealous about your Go XLR because I want one. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to know what advice would you give to fans in the audience that are interested in starting their own podcast or getting into the gaming and tech industry? Like, what should they use for, like, a hosting site? Uh, how should they market it? What should they do if they want to work with the industry? You know? Oh, man, you're giving me the hard questions here because Andrew does a lot of those back background stuff for me. <laughs> I'm appreciative of that. Okay, so you want to know about the setup and everything. That I think for anybody, like I said at the beginning, about leveraging, about what you have. Okay. So um, my first mic, and one, especially when I started podcasting, um, it was a Yeti. And um, Yeti is a good mic, but if you live in a noisy area and you can't soundproof your room... Um, really use free programs like voice meter banana mm-hmm. it helps with you know cleaning out filtering it doesn't get rid of everything but it's a free program that helps improve your audio quality it's pretty much a free mixer yeah and um it's funny because my first my first mic came from andrew for for streaming and it was a blue snowball that's what he was using for his podcast and then he upgraded and he gave that to me for streaming and um other than using my webcam mic i got the hint my audio was bad (laughs) but uh i am very much about affordable like sure mics are great mics Mm -hmm. but they're really super expensive i think they're seven i think it's a seven b i think it's like a four hundred dollar mic sounds amazing if you're listening to this you're watching this my mic is a Behringer XM8500, and it's $20. So, um, don't know about the difference. On audio. Like, you have to be super audiophile, absolute super audiophile to start noticing really key differences. Um, I, I did change from using a USB mic only simply because I wanted to add more options for myself. Um, I got, I felt like I got to the point where like, okay, if I want to improve something now, well, it needs to be my mic. I spent seven years with a USB mic and it's done me solid. I've never had anybody complain about my audio, never had anybody complain about not being able to hear me or static or anything like that of the sort. Except that I wanted, I wanted to try some uh, some different things out, and I spent a year actually, yeah. um, really looking and <clears throat> researching. And I looked at all the XLR mics and the cables, the prices, the filters, the phantom power block things, everything, and the giant mixers with all of the cables, like 
looking at stuff is so intimidating. Like, I don't even know what you do with all these things. Why are there so many plug points? Why are there so many turn dials? <laughs> like, it's it's crazy. And then trying to figure out, like, am I going to utilize those features? Am I going to remember what all these turn dials do? Mm-hmm. And and I but I was pricing it because I wanted to improve that. And I held off on it because I just felt for me, it was like kind of ridiculous. Like this, what I have now is great and it's fine. And we're recording the podcast and nobody's complaining. Um, It's clean. I don't have any like really annoying background noises. The only thing that was annoying was when my landlord would decide to start mowing randomly. (laughs) And even then, like the background noise of that was minimal mm-hmm. it wasn't really bad and i almost just didn't do, decide to do it because i had everything i needed and i was okay with it that if i was gonna upgrade it was gonna be more of a selfish thing mm-hmm. of like i want to gift myself this cool thing <laughs> um <laughs> So as a podcaster, I mean, I feel like you're pretty good with pretty much a lot of standard um, mics. If you're going to get the USB, the Yeti mic is still really good. Um, it, especially since it has a different um, patterns uh, that you can change in between. As long as you're in a pretty relatively quiet area. I don't think you have to like soundproof it. I think that's a good starting point. Um but upgrading that, I mean, if you're an audiophile, go the whole nine yards with the crazy Yamaha mixers and <laughs> all of the expensive mics. But for me, I did get the Go XLR. I was pretty much after TwitchCon 2017. I was pretty set on it. I didn't even know anything about this company. I didn't know anything. It was inside our, our affiliate bags when we checked in and got our badges. They just mm-hmm. had a card in there. It was just a picture of their their thing. I'm like, what is this thing? And I started looking it up. I was like, this is cool. This is a game changer. Because this is everything I'm looking for in one simple board that is user-friendly. And I don't have to worry about anything else. It was also that day where I was very quick to slide up in their DMs. I'm like, hey. I'm at TwitchCon. You got time for an interview? And and they were like, yeah, sure. It's great. Just come on by the booth. And I was I was the first person at TwitchCon that was non-press. Because I think they only had really a couple interviews. But there was non-press related. Because I had a, just a regular affiliate badge that wanted to do an interview. And they were they were amazed. And the thing is, like, streamers were amazed. Like, you can do interviews. You can ask for these things. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's amazing what people don't know that they can do. <laughs> yes, you can. The YouTubers are no better. They do the same thing. Yeah. Anyway. And I, and I did. So <laughs> uh, we, we talked about it. I got a better understanding. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in for it. I'm, I'm all about it. And four hundred dollars, four hundred dollars does is is a lot. Yeah. But when you're upgrading and you want to have all those bells and whistles, like I think there's you're you're spending close to that amount if you go the other route for your more traditional Yamaha or Behringer mixers and and all of the the cloud filters that you're going to be getting, um, the XR cables. You're essentially kind of spending the same amount. Mm-hmm. But with more of a headache on setup, more cable management, more knowing like, okay, what all of these things are going and where is it going? Where this is just all in one and I don't have to worry about it and I can choose different profiles for whatever it is that I'm doing. So I have one that's set up for my podcast. I have I have a profile set up if I'm streaming console games or if I'm streaming PC games or if I'm doing a mobile game. Or if all I want to do is just listen to music and I'm not interfering with anything else, I have a profile for that. <clears throat> it also has a built-in sampler. So I can do on on the spot, record uh, live snippets or, and clips 
and it's just saved and I can have that for replays. If I want to integrate that into my live stream, I have, of course, voice sound effects. Um, I can create those sound effects. I can adjust them on the fly. I can do all these things all in there, which makes role playing or if you do visual novels, a lot of fun if you like to act out all of the voices. Most of the times I do the voices on my own, but this like when my voice gets really tired, this makes it really, really easy. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it's fun. And. And plus, it's the RGB. It's really pretty. <laughs> 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 but it's, it's nice when you can just like push a button and then you can change your voice to this or you can change it to that. Or you can sound like you're in a drive through like, all in the push of a button. Like, there's... So much you can do, and I can turn into a man. Wow. <laughs> and it's just a push of a button. Wow. And it, it's nice, and it's fun, and people's like, oh, but it's $400. I'm like, no one's telling you you have to buy it. This is more of like if you really want to upgrade, if you are considering going the XLR route for your microphones. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a $20 microphone. It's not a $400 one. It's not an Audio Technica's whatever, AT2020. I don't know which ones their brands are. <laughs> or, or the Sure yeah. SM7B. You know, well, Sure does have some nice mics, but it sounds amazing. It gets the job done. And this is also what I take on my mobile podcast setup. So I get, I get double uses out of it. And when you're comparing those things and you see the equipment you're going to be buying and the cables and the mic, like it's nice to consider. And the thing is, with the Go XLR, you don't have to have an XLR uh, mic. You can also use an, a USB mic. So it gives that versatility to help clean up um, your USB mic and make it better noise reduction. Because my favorite thing about it is the fact that I can be a and it's great. Whoa. And I'm only like six inches away that I move and you can't hear anything that I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> so it's, it's nice and utilizing that. And it's just a clean, simple setup. And it doesn't take up a whole lot of space on my desk. Where's my credit card? You got an Amazon <laughs> affiliate link. <laughs> and also, if you ever do Twitch things, it makes it so easy because it has auto tunes if you really want it. <laughs> you can totally sell like T Pain if you want to. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and oh, oh, my favorite part is the fact that you can and it's okay. <laughs> wow okay you gotta because it. we can we can talk all the shade and start <laughs> and you know what they don't hear you because that's all <laughs> 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 oh so they, they thought about everything on it do you have an amazon <laughs> affiliate link i can use to buy this <laughs> 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 but it, it is it's fun it's kind of like how people like these tools that are available they are quality of life improvements you can get by without them there are free options but how what the works that you have to do to get them to make it work to do all these things is such a pain so it is a quality of life thing it's pretty much how people's like why do i need to own a stream deck i'm like you don't have to own a stream deck but it's nice to have things at a push of a button. It really is. It really is. So uh, there's that, and you're like the the whole setup. Like, um, man, I can't even remember when I was telling you about my mobile podcast setup. Were we recording already, or was that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't... Know I don't remember. <laughs> But uh, the the mobile podcast stuff um, uh, about leveraging what you have, I I do. I have very affordable stuff. I use a Ceramonic, which is an auxiliary cable um, that changes and adapts for an XLR mm -hmm. um, input or cable, and it goes to my phone. I have a free 
free app that I use for audio recording is on top of there. My two six foot XLR cables are, I think, eleven or twelve dollars. My my splitter, so I can use two mics, that's like eight dollars. And then I have two Behringer XM eighty five hundreds for twenty bucks. So it's like that's super cheap. That's super affordable. I can't afford to be carrying or owning all these things. I think the most expensive thing, and this is just because I wanted to spoil myself, is probably my gimbal. Mm-hmm. And that's just because I wanted to record, you know, video without the shake. And I use that just for my phone. So I don't have like a GoPro. I don't have a DSLR or the, what is the common special one? Uh, the Sony Alpha 6000. <laughs> it's just... It's just using what I have and trying to be super affordable. I mean, we live in Hawaii. Stuff is expensive. I can only buy so many expensive things. <laughs> trying true. to be super affordable about about it. And there's um there's another mic setup I'm going to be trying. I won't I won't list it because I don't know how reliable or how good it is yet. But mm-hmm. it's for um two wireless mics that um has an adapter um that I can attach to my phone. I don't know what quality is like. Um they're not Bluetooth. I I wanted to avoid Bluetooth. Um and this is all RF frequency. The reason behind that purpose is that there's so much Bluetooth enabled devices, especially when you're going to a con, all that does is just interrupts. So yeah. what having the RF does is that there's not a whole lot of cons that use those frequencies. Mm-hmm. And I think the one I'm looking at has 20 different channel frequencies, so you can change too. So it, it kind of acts like a, a hand radio, but with cleaner audio. Mm-hmm. And see how that goes. And it's not like when I'm recording interviews that I'm standing like 200 feet away from the camera. It's, it's usually like five feet away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where it is. Now, the background stuff about getting it all set up. So our podcast is um we use libsyn that is number one and then we also have it available on spotify um google podcast apple itunes and there is one more but i don't think we officially announced it yet i think we just got approval for it so i can't i don't think i can say that one yet um i think at one point we were trying to push for reviews and then we kind of just stopped because Reviews are great. If you want to review us, go for it. Um, But I think majority of our feedback that we live off of is those live comments. Mm -hmm. Of all like, yeah, I love that you guys this. And when people take the time out to, uh, more often than not, it's easier for them to say something and give feedback on Twitter than it is on anything else. It's like, is it so hard? You're listening to it on Apple iTunes already. Why can't you just leave your review there? (laughs) Whatever, it's fine. We appreciate it. Um, and Andrew, Andrew actually really does handle a lot of that stuff. I, I do post up some articles. Most of them I write it. And when he uploads it, it actually creates the, the post on our website on its own with the cool. uh, RSS feed to go there. I think it's one of the, the WordPress widgets I think he uses for plugins. Mm-hmm. So it automatically does it, and all he has to do is populate whatever is actually written into it. Um, he's really the person to really be asking about those things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the easy job of like show up and talk. I tell him that he's like, that's not just the easy job. You do all the video production stuff. I'm like, yeah, well, you do the business side of the stuff, which is <laughs> like, that's all you. <laughs> that's all you. Um. But if you have a podcast, whatever whatever platform you use to upload it and wherever you're available, I really do think it's very beneficial to have a website. 100%. It really is because people still like... Wow, I just, I'm making myself sound older. It's really nice to have like a traditional method of having content available, which is having a website. Mm-hmm. And um, people get a, to see, you know, you're going to be linking this stuff. And you're going to, whatever I, I, I said and talked about today, you're going to be linking it. And people are going to either go down to their, um, down to the info pads below the video, or they're going to go to your website and be able to click it. It's a nice to have that there, but it's also a really nice visual place to see all of the content that you worked on and how you have it organized, whether it's video, whether it's audio, whether it's like written, 
um, whoever you have as a guest freelance writer, it it's very beneficial to be on that. I think for the show radio, we do use WordPress. Mm-hmm. Um, Squarespace is another really great um, website that's very intuitive. On if you're not you're not really strong at coding, um, they they're simple. Like Squarespace is really simple, drag and drop on on their templates. Or, or Wix, if you're just a, a wizard. <laughs> but it, I, I really, really, really say getting into it, even if it's a free one, on Blog Drive. It's better than having nothing. You're starting from somewhere. Blog Drive, you most chances because they've been around for so long. It's mm-hmm. very easy to find other platforms in which you'll just import your content onto your their page and you can just edit from there. Uh, and, then, and on top of that, still... Uh, events will request to see your website. They will mm-hmm. request to see what your analytics are. You can't just say, I have a podcast, this is our numbers. Like, no. Like, they want to see how many hits and how much interest they, they're going to look at your SEOs. So, have that there. In whatever capacity. Okay. Because I know with... um. I was initially with my the podcast I have now. Uh, I was using Shout Engine uh, as my hosting site, and the reason I went with that, I mean, I think I told you before. Like, I had a podcast. I I was a co-host on a podcast before with a former friend uh, Cameron, and we the show we had was called Tech Etc. Podcast. So we talked about basically whatever he wanted to talk about. I, I really had no input, and when we when that dissolved i was like okay i'll just do my own podcast and so i did one episode and initially before i settled on the cast level podcast it was cast speaks and that first episode people were like man you need to do a series and it's just like a pilot i'm like oh, okay well fine and so i just went with shout engine and I just started using that, and then I started to notice that man, Shout Engine doesn't really push you. It doesn't really do anything other than just you know redistribute. And so I started looking at other outlets like Spreaker and whatnot, and I wasn't sure what to use. And then Podcast One actually DM me. They're like, "Hey, we got this new um, platform called Launchpad DM." You know, it's invite only. We want to know if you'd be interested in using it. Um, it's super easy to use. And then I think one of the caveats is mandatory. You had to put like a commercial on your podcast, which my audience may not be used to that because I, usually my episodes are uh, commercial free. But so I, I migrated my podcast over, which was a pain because. Uh, Shout Engine has horrible customer service. So I migrated over to Launchpad DM, and it's been stupidly easy to use. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm over here like, man, I was struggling trying to put metadata and stuff in my podcast for uh, poc- well, for, not for a Shout Engine, but like on Launchpad DM... Everything has its own category. I can even put co-hosts in. You know, I can put co-hosts, I can put guests, I can put artwork for it. Like when you go to the the page, it shows you everything. I'm like, this is really intuitive. I don't I don't mind the commercials. I think my audience might be annoyed with that. But yeah, like that's um podcasting has so many intricacies in it, but I love it. I, I, I love podcasting. <laughs> it's fun it's fun being able to talk <laughs> like i think we've been talking for five and a half hours almost i'm looking at the uh the timer <laughs> over here but hey that was the last question that was the last <laughs> question actually no i lied i got one more question we're working it way down we started we started here we started here to here, to now here. <laughs> okay. 
Last question is, did you have fun? Yes. <laughs> if I didn't have fun, we would have ended like three hours ago, four <laughs> hours ago. <laughs> that's a silly question. The, I yeah, asked it, that's, that's, I asked this at the end of every episode. So I had to ask it. I, 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 I screwed that up. I really screwed that up. I should have just been like, no. And I would have been like, well, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give me back my four hours. You should have like, poker face it and just be like, no. I don't know what I just did for the last five hours, but that was absolutely terrible. I'm in, I'm glad that you enjoyed my fake laughs. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> oh, I, I ruined that. That was a missed opportunity. And I'm just was. like, will shatter his dreams now <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay so again danny tell people where they can find you tell them about the show and everything and projects that you're working on coming up oh coming up man that's okay that's craziness um projects that i'm coming up well i'm always doing the show radio majority of the time we try to record every sunday that's since there is a time difference, Sunday, that's actually 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we record that on twitch.tv for slash social radio live. We always post it when we're live. Um, you can find me on my personal stuff on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram. It's Miss DJM, M I S S D J M. Um, I'm also, if you're a female content creator, you can also find me as one of the admins for girl streamers. You can find out more information about them at www.girlstreamers.com and all my projects. Jeez. Um, I am doing a fireside chat where we're talking about, you know, a lot of topics. My next one's going to be di diversity and inclusivity. The one after that is going to be about networking and branding. And then after that, I'm just going to be at TwitchCon. <laughs> so Did if you, you have any did you get an invite for TwitchCon? Yeah. There's an invite. Is there? I don't know. I'm one because I'm learning this whole system about like conventions. I don't know who to talk to or how you oh, get invited. TwitchCon is like the other conventions. You just buy a badge. Oh. Although I should have applied as press. <laughs> so I'm doing that late now. I already paid for it, but you know, I'm just I'm just gonna try it out anyways. Um. Oh. But yeah, you there is unless you're like super cool. I'm sorry, I can't be always well, number one podcaster, Mikel Casanova, to be invited to stuff. One day, one day, you know, I got I got to enjoy this in this conversation because next year in a year, his growth has been so big. He's gonna blow up. He's gonna be, he's gonna be the next better version of Shaw Dawson. Oh, with God. all his gaming, the gaming scene here, and you know, I'm just gonna be a peon. So I gotta enjoy this this moment that he 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 is here conversing with me. <laughs> You're like I can't handle this girl no more. Um, oh but yeah, if you're gonna be there. Let me know. We go and hang out. I'm gonna be there for like five days. Um, but that's, that's some of the biggest things that we're going to be for the show radio. You can find us um, www.theshowradio.info. Um, I'm always open to being a guest. So thank you so much for being, you know, being opening and welcoming <laughs> to, be, to be here. It's been a lot of fun. I was actually nervous. I didn't know. I was like, I was like what am I going to talk about? Like, is it going to be enough? The show seemed kind of long. I don't know. I don't seem that interesting. <laughs> well, <laughs> four hours later. Um, know, I, I always get that. Every episode, like people thinking, oh, man, I thought this was going to be like, a typical interview and i'm like no no it's it's, it's not <laughs> now we know about each other's life right <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you can find what was i saying you can find all those things um you can always email me i'm always open to being guests and you ever coming back or for anybody else i'm always here um yeah that's that's it i don't know I have no flow <laughs> process. This is just as bad. I have like 160 episodes and Andrew always asks me, okay, you close out. I'm like, 160 episodes? I still don't know how to close out very well. I'm like, so thank you for watching. That was great of you to be here. 
I know oh. there's stuff here. <laughs> it's still. <laughs> and yeah. Bye. <laughs> oh man. So we definitely need to have you back on the podcast again. Uh, this has been phenomenal. I really enjoyed this conversation. Like it's kind of funny when you're looking at every time I look at the clock, I'm like, damn, an hour went by. Half an hour went by. Oh shit, that's two hours now. You know, <laughs> but it was fun. It was I I I came away from this episode learning a lot from you. So I, I really greatly appreciate, you know, you speaking on your experiences and, you know, your journey, things that you're working on, you know, kicking, putting your foot up my ass to do certain things. Like, yeah, you kind of do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you had that roundabout way. Every single work. time. But the thing is, it's always because that, that drive and that encouragement to you always comes from something that I experienced. So I know how to turn that back around. I'm like, yeah. I'm listen to this man's head of like, don't be me and screw up. <laughs> you, got this. you got to have faith in yourself. I have faith in you. Those people have faith in you. You need to have it in yourself. And those are all real words. I'm not, I'm not just blowing wind. I, oh, it's just, they're, ge- oh, they're genuine. It's not just my fan. <laughs> 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 my bed, what are you talking about? My bed's like right here. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> oh. And we come right back around to this thing that we started off with. <laughs> we, we really do. All right, people. I'll leave links to Danny's social media, the podcast, the show, radio podcast, and everything else down in the description below the podcast and of the YouTube video. And I still suck at closing out, but we're going to try this. All right. So if you want to find more of the Cast Noble podcast in my fake YouTuber voice, <laughs> you will be able to find this on YouTube.com slash Mikhail Casanova, as well as on iTunes. Well, actually not iTunes. Apple Podcast correction, slash that. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, I have to count because I keep forgetting. Uh, Launchpad DM, aka Podcast One, iHeartRadio. We are coming soon to something else I can't remember, and Sirius XM Radio. Very soon. I think I hit all the notes. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh wait, you don't know. gonna be here. I think that's everything. I think. Yes, that's everything. Yes, that's everything. Yeah. Where is that YouTuber voice? Hey, guys, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. Hey, if you like the video and you want to see more, make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, and ding the notification bell. (laughs) (laughs) I can't. You got to work on that. I need to be able to feel your fakeness. <laughs> Hi, guys. This is Austin. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. I can't. I can't. You know what? I tried that before for, like, two videos, and people were like, nah. Nah. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Unsubscribe. Come back when you're real. <laughs> I actually have people that actually unsubscribe, and they're like, Nah, Chief, this ain't it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. Okay. But yes, that's where you can find it. Uh, you'll be able to see. We're at, I think this is going to be episode 85. And um, yeah, more content. We'll have you back on. And uh, yeah, until next time, people. This is... Danny and Mikkel, we are signing out. Not in our fake YouTuber inflated helium voices. We're signing out. (laughs) Have a good one. Peace. Did you enjoy this episode of the Casanova Podcast? Well, I hope you did. And if you did, please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what we can improve upon, what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that good stuff. And just make sure you always have a good time. That being said, this is your boy Mikhail Casanova, my wife's favorite YouTuber. I am signing out, and I'll catch you on the next episode.